tell you a job I don't like. What? I wouldn't want to be doing. The, the woman, there's a little woman who sits in the little <laughs> snack stall on Finchley Road. Station. Yeah. And I don't know how to describe it, really. She is surrounded by snacks. She can't move for snacks. It's like... It like American it, Beauty, it, but with, with, uh, different... Not dissimilar to that. Yeah. It's a little hut on the station. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, if you go to the seaside, you can put your head through one of those cardboard cutouts and it looks like you're a big fat person or whatever and you yeah. have your photo taken. It's like an equivalent of that, but it's just snacks everywhere. She's got bananas up to her chin. <laughs> She's got chocolate coming down to her eyes, crisps either side of her. She can't move. She can't do 360 degrees. She's like packed in there. I don't think, I don't know how she gets in there. I think morning. they put her in her first and they put, okay, pour in the bananas. Yeah. They go, and then they go, go pour in the nuts. She has and two hours of makeup before they exactly, open Exactly, yeah. Dressing her in there. Because I'll ask for something from the fridge and she cannot turn her head to see. She, she has just... to go by feel alone, just to feel the fridge, <laughs> and get stuff out and pass it. And often I'll say, that's not what I wanted, but she can, you gotta let her off. It's oh, extraordinary. Dear. But there's no music playing, Does she there's have nothing. to sell her way out of it? <laughs> if, 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 if it's a slow day, she's stuck yeah. there till the next day. Yeah, it's like a world-breaking attempt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Carl, what job wouldn't you want to do? Well, any job, you're a lazy f- you're joking, aren't you? Uh, I've done loads of stuff. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy now, doing what I'm doing. Yeah? You but, look uh, happy. I think you I sound happy. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, calm down. You on drugs? <laughs> I'm all right. I Are you I'm on happy E? I'm for England have won and that. I'm what? happy for them. Yeah, go on. I'm happy for them. I'm happy for that. Yeah. What do you mean happy for them? We are England. Happy yeah. for us. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we didn't play. I did very little towards it. No. It was mainly Johnny Wilkinson. Yeah, I barely that. contributed. Switching on the TV was about as much as I did. <laughs> exactly. And shouting, come on! Yeah. <laughs> Talking about jobs and that, though, I was reading the other day about, um, like, you know, rubbish jobs that people have had and stuff. I haven't got time when I work, man. <laughs> just, I just get on with it. I'm not squiddly diddly. <laughs> Fingers in pies, different jobs. Go on. Uh, do you know Ivor the Terrible? Ivan. He, uh... It's, yeah, his Russian... Yeah, that was the Welsh fella. Who yeah. was, who was bloody awful, <laughs> but not as bad as his Russian cousin. Ivan, yeah. go on. He, uh, he had a fella doing some work for him, right? Yeah. This fella built his house. Uh, after it was done, right, yeah. uh, the terrible fella was like, uh, <laughs> fella Ivan. He, he yeah. was going, oh, it's brilliant, you've, you've done a good job there. Yeah. I don't want you to build another one like that. Took his eyes out. Just what? stopped him making an house like that. Yeah. Blimey. That's why bad, he, isn't it? Why didn't he take away his trowel? Then he could have <laughs> seen, yeah. but he couldn't have built a house without, without a trowel. He can't build a house without a trowel. Yeah. I, we, I, suppose he, I, I suppose he probably later thought that, once he'd been nicknamed Ivan the Terrible. Yeah, yeah. He but thought, why? Why? Because you gouged people's eyes out. Yeah, but I don't want to build another house. I know, but... Take his trowel away. What would I have been then? Well, well, <laughs> Ivan the Crafty, at most. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, uh, Ivan the Jealous, you know, Ivan yeah. the Spoiled Brat, but... Yeah. Ivan, uh, Ivan gouge someone's eyes out. That is bloody terrible. I'm surprised you're not called Ivan the... C- Do you know what I yeah. mean? You're going to get on a history like with Vlad the Impaler. Yeah. He's mainly remembered for impaling people. Yeah. He did a lot of other stuff. He did a load of great charity but work he did. It, it, the impaling remembered. is the thing that's really yeah. gone down in history. <laughs> when were you reading about Ivan the Terrible? No, it's just Or the Ivan the Terrible <laughs> is the, the, the thing you remembered from this uh, informative article? No, it was, it was just little bits like that. Talking about him, there was a thing about, uh, someone who worked for that, that fellow who painted the ceiling. Sistine Chapel. Yeah. Th- okay. There was a thing, the, the, a woman who worked for him in his house and, um... I love how you assimilate information when it's just bordering on the academic or just, or just the interesting and true. It's wonderful. Ivor the Terrible gouged someone's eyes out because built him an house. The f- that fella who painted that ceiling <laughs> had a woman work for him. Imagine if you wrote that down in an essay. <laughs> Imagine if you wrote that in a school essay. Well, you probably end up with not not getting a grade, or yeah, or, or thinking you turned yeah. up to more than you had. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, the go woman on. who lived with yeah, the woman who lived in the shoe. Go on. Yeah, yeah. there was this woman who uh, who lived with him, and yeah. uh, she used to like you know go out and do all this shopping and that. Yeah. Uh, but because she couldn't read or write, he used to have to draw everything that he wanted. Why couldn't he just tell her? I don't know. No, Why but no, 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 no. Wait, that's an excellent point. <laughs> Could she talk? Yeah, but if it's a big list and that, loads of different coloured paints. But why and couldn't stuff. she draw, draw on a piece of paper? Why did he have to do? it? Because he's a better drawer, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. That's it. That is. We were just looking for the logic of the story. You found it. You done it. Play a record. He's a better drawer. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best off show on XFM one hundred four point nine. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Stephen Merchant. Yes.
I hope you're enjoying the best of. I'm amazed that these are the highlights and that we've strung it out this long, Rick. But the good thing about this is, we're not here, we recorded this a couple of weeks ago, just the links, right? This has taken us about ten minutes for the whole show. We get paid the same. Why don't we do this every week? <laughs> That's a great idea. High five. High five. Listen to this clip, it's brilliant. Um, I think that my new TV is too big, Rick. I said that. I know, I what I was thinking. But I, I, I can't believe it. He talked about this buying it. He's got a bit of cash now, of course. And, uh, what is it? 42 inches? Mm. 42 inch plasma screen. What did it cost you? Three grand or something? Oh, don't tell me. That's, that's, that's Wow, gosh. it's ridiculous. Three and a half grand. Three and a half grand. <laughs> big spender. Uh, of course it's too big. Well, I can't get far enough back in my room, in my living room for it. You know, you know, it, for, you're meant to be, I think, four times the screen size away from it. Really? To get out from the air. So that's four times 42 inches you're meant to be sitting away from it, which is impossible. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I'll have to just get friendly with the neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch it through a hat. <laughs> yeah. if, if that's the case, though, aren't you better off just getting a portable? What? I don't understand that rule. Well, what, to get... what are you saying? Well, you're meant to be four times the screen size away from the TV. But that's then what's the, the point in having a big telly if you've got to keep moving further back? Get a portable <laughs> and sit and right sit next to it. <laughs> do see your point. Why do people go to the cinema then? Did you see films that are out yet? <laughs> Fair enough, he's got you there. Don. I tell you this though, <laughs> I had it delivered and um, I, are you supposed to tip delivery men? Of course you I are. I don't know. You said well, I'd, well, if I, I've never had anything delivered before. I've never well, spent no, that not, much if money. It, not if it's a courier with an envelope, but if it's a bloke who's struggled up the stairs, I two, the door two open fat blokes with a fridge, then give him a fiver for a drink. But, but the problem was, I didn't realise, and I was thinking to myself, I wonder if I've got to tip him. And the guy was leaving, and my mobile phone went off in my pocket, yeah. and I reached in to get it. He put his hand out, thinking it was a tip. I went, oh, it's just my phone. Oh. And I felt terrible after he left. I didn't know. I, I, what was I going to do? Run down the street and now for him a fiver? No. No, of course not. No. I'm not made no. money. I just spent it all on <laughs> TV. <laughs> yeah, I've got no money, mate. Yeah. I just spent it all on yeah. this. I had to clean out my jar, exactly. everything, the drawers. Uh, yeah, it takes my, um, yeah, bottles back. What, what, you, I, what the problem was it took me forever to wire it in. I thought I'm not going to pay for someone to wire it up, you know. So it took me about three hours to wire it in and it was huge and I got it switched on and the first program that was on when I got it wired in was Bargain Hunt. I'll tell you this, David Dickinson's tan almost took me eyeballs out. <laughs> <laughs> it was incredible. It was just, oh, it was like, it was like x-rays. It was so the close. You know, a very huge plasma screen with this orange thing yeah. coming out. And he keeps, and he keeps turning to the camera, <laughs> course, doesn't he? Just grin. to get you. Yeah, he turns away, you get a bit close. They go, what's he doing? He just turns <laughs> exactly, around, yeah. takes the cornea off. What do you think, Bargain Hunters, Bargain Hunters, Bargain Hunters? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, well, that's why I'd buy a plasma screen to watch, um, to watch Bargain, Bargain Hunt. Hunt. I mean, it's ludicrous. This is the problem, is because, you, yeah, what do you I watch? I mean, have you watched anything that's been worth having. The I only mean, thing I've watched really worth watching. 24. Well, on, yeah, on 24 works great. But right. also films, obviously, that's the main reason mm. I bought it, because films just look amazing on the Yeah, DVD on, on yeah. the plasma yeah, screen. So if you're into films and that, yeah. it's just that I only, you know, I've just got the, got the five channels and flicking about, and I'm, I'm not impressed. <laughs> I mean, I can understand why more people listen to radio and stuff. Yeah. Cause, well, not this one, but go on. Well, <laughs> I, when was it? When was, uh, the last time I sort of sat down and had time, because I'm always busy doing stuff on that. Sure. Um... Moaning takes up about three hours a day. Mm. When did... When did Wimbledon, uh, finish? A couple of weeks ago. Right. Found myself sat there, right, I'm not having a go. I know we stopped Cheeky Freak of the Week and all that, right? So Christ. I'm not, I'm not gonna be having a go. Christ. I sat right. there. I'm scared. No, I'm not having a go, you've always got to remember that. Go I'm on, just, just, just get on with it, get on with it, I'll apologise after. I'm just saying, watching Wimbledon, it wasn't, uh, you know, one of the major games, it was, uh... Right. Little fellas in a in a wheelchair having a having a game. Little fellas in a wheelchair. Right. But for me, I mean, you know, great. They're doing a the sport and everything. But don't put it on the telly. <laughs> what was up with it? It wasn't there wasn't like, a rally going on. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what I mean? Do you know oh, normally Christ. like with the with the with your, well, not two endmen, but with some of the other <laughs> With, with some of the other players and that, they're playing for ages, aren't they? It's like, yeah. oh, who's gonna win this and that? Yeah. None of that. It was just like, hit it, net. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ! Oh, God! I don't know what to do! What, 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 and people, people would like, sat there watching it as well, when they've got other games going on in there. That's what I couldn't understand. If you've paid your money to oh, get God. in... Yeah. I mean, like I say, good on them if they... Do you know what I mean? But it would have been... I and they know, all start I, first in the marathon. I just thought it would have... You know, give him a game of swing ball or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? No, yeah, 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 I understand. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, yeah. God. There's never anything XFM on. XFM in the community. <laughs> Let's play a tune with Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Ricky Dot Gervais. XFM. Don't put my name <laughs> to this last link. <laughs> Don't put my name to this last link. Ricky Dot Gervais, XFM.co.uk. Oh. Magic, Virgin, if you're listening, we are available probably sooner than we thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, now time for one of our regular features. Monkey News. Do the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. <laughs> what what we're doing here is, right, is uh just giving you a bit of bit of monkey news that's that's gone on, right? Where a monkey's been involved in it. Good little story in that. Yeah. Uh are you familiar with the one that went into space? The first uh, the first sort of thing they ever sent up there. Before man did it and all that. You see, this is what annoys me with it really. Armstrong gets all the all the glory, but do you know who went up there before, before him? A monkey. Yeah. And what happened is they taught it um, what buttons to hit at the time it like, needed to hit them, and, and the way they did this was, like, give it bananas. It was like, hit the red button, and it hit the red button, they'd give it a banana. Right. And they go, right, reverse is the green one, hit the green one. And then they do that and go, there's a banana. And then they go, right, hit reverse, and it go, and get a banana. Right. Hit the red, so it was taking commands on, like, headphones. Right, but how are they giving it the banana? Is that how you learn to do radio? <laughs> how are they giving it the banana? What do you mean? No, well, this is before it went. You, do, you wouldn't right. just go and put a monkey in it and go, there you go, get on with it. They'd sort of put him in one of them capsules that you get. Yeah. And they were on headphones. I, I don't believe this happened. Well, I'm telling you the story now, so the monkey. I don't sat... think they trained it to do anything. I think they sent it up there and he put electrodes coming out of it to no, see what... what it uh, wasn't it's... any of that. They did a thing like they do. Like, right. Like they can with animals. If you give something, uh, you know, like a treat, you can teach it how to do it. It's just like a dog, isn't it? When it's you... called Pavlovian conditioning. However, that was to see if it would salivate or go over to no, a particular it... corner, yeah. not if it could control a spacecraft. <laughs> next one up. It's the next one up. It, as far as the, the monkey's not sat there going, oh, I'm a bit under pressure here, it's a rocket. All that's knowing is, I'm getting a banana if I hit that button. That's all the monkey's thinking about. Right? <laughs> they wouldn't, but billions well, of space but dollars. But how can they be sure that it's going to press the button at the right moment? Because it's got headphones on. <laughs> it's not like willy-nilly. It's not just like pop it in there and see who's that. What's to stop it from just hitting it any old time? Because it's a monkey and it's, it's not a human. Because he's trained now. But oh, anyway, he's trained, so he's listen, fully trained, yeah, go So on. what happened is, anyway... Oh, this is absolute rubbish. They pop the monkey in there, Yeah. it's got his headphones on, they're going, right, hit the green one, and uh, I think there's something there that a little banana comes out to keep the same... <laughs> no, you're making this up. I'm not, it's the same... There's no way that they made uh, a, a right, spacecraft so, so can, that had a <laughs> banana dispenser. Right, like, there's so, no way in this world that they made a spacecraft that could go into mm, outer space, right? So what, so manned so by a monkey mm, with a banana dispenser. So you're saying that it's easy to send something up to space but you don't believe there's a little banana machine? <laughs> right, OK, okay so, so... it comes to the launch day, Monkeys, monkeys sat in there, uh, everyone's ready, bananas are stocked up and all the rest of it. They go, right, hit the green button. Right, and the rocket goes off and what have you. No, they would not make the monkey launch the rocket. Carl, so, you, are, you are living in a, so, a cartoon world. So the rocket goes off, right? <laughs> this is absolute bollocks! It's all going well. You are, you, I mean, I don't know it's what you're going to... It's, it's not going well. It's going There's well. no way a monkey launched it's a going. rocket. There is no way a monkey launched a rocket, so you idiot. It's all going on, so they're going, hit the left button, and, it's, and it goes a little bit left. left button? Right, oh, so. well-known spacecraft command. This is Houston. Hit the left button. <laughs> oh, brilliant. This is what happened in Apollo 13. Hit the left button. So it, you it, are, oh, it you goes are. left. Yeah, it goes left. So it goes left, and it's, it's going away. Left! It's, it goes no. left! Yeah. No, the moon! So You're going goes, right! It goes, it goes for the moon, Everything, everything's going well. Right. Uh, they get up there, it does whatever it does. It reverse, it comes back. <laughs> right? So then... You are, so, honestly, you are brain dead. So it's you long, are one of the most stupid people. That I would rather have um, the monkey drive right, listen, me home than you. So the thing is, so it lands back, yeah. it does a good job and everything, it gets out. Um, and this it's is this is, bananas. this is where this is where it turns a bit sad because after it done that mission, yeah. right? Because it happened and it, and it was all safe and everything, the next one would have been to send man, right? So the monkey enjoyed it and it was like, well, I want to do it again, right? But they were like, so how did they know that? How did they know? Just, it just the way it looked and what have you. It was like, <laughs> fuck off! <laughs> just the way it looked. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, you are a maniac. So the thing is, though, right, so after it had done that, it was on such a high, right, <laughs> yeah. it, could, it could never get that high again. There was nothing. Drugs. There was nothing that it could do. Went on tour, did it? It, did, it, it sort of ended up killing itself. <laughs> because it could never, never get that buzz that it right, got. Right, that was absolute bollocks. None of that is true, except <laughs> they sent a monkey into space. And I'll, and I'll, mm. I'll check that. Absolute drivel. So, it, in your mind, it committed suicide. It, had a, it went on a crazy bender of drinking drugs and women. And like then, it, does, it does happen, you know. it. was found it. in a motel room. <laughs> I met uh, Derek Akora the other week. Oh, yeah. Right. And now, who's he? Which one's he? He's a... Is he, is he a medium? He can contact the dead, is that right? He just chats to him and that, sure. passes messages on. Nice of him. So I said, oh, tell us something a bit weird and that. So he mm. said, what do you want to know? I said, just, just something weird. So he goes, all right, then. He said, uh, here's one for you, right? And he said, uh, there's this pub out in the country. And uh, he said, there's this mug. Do you know those old mugs that they have where they used to... They used to like leave their own cup knocking like about. A didn't they? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The tankard thing. Yeah. So, uh, so there was there was one of them mugs in there, right? And everybody. Tankard. Like, Let's use a tankard if we've right, established that. Tankard, yeah. Because yeah. you're the only mug in this story. Right. Nice. Believing it all. High five. <laughs> Great. So this tankard's knocking about, right? And everyone who's running the pub keeps going, "Oh, I wish they'd stop leaving this tankard about," right? Mm -hmm. And they pick it up. <laughs> it must be a pain. <laughs> Having a, a tiny, small tankard in a pub, that must be a real grind. So, so every time they sort of picked it up and went, we'll have to wash that, and they popped it on a different mm. sideboard. Next thing you know, that person who's touched it died, right? Sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> they must have been getting through bar staff. So they got, so they kept getting a new staff and that, and they went, like, oh, what's the connection here? Right? <laughs> <laughs> what's the connection here? Oh, God. So they get a vicar in. Of course they do. And they go, look, um, there's a lot of weird stuff going on here. This this tankard. Every time someone touches it, they die. So he said, "Leave it with me." He gets his um, special water out and what have you. He comes round, does a little prayer, sprinkles it. He goes, "Right, not a problem. Don't worry about it." He picks it up, chucks it in the bin. Guess what? What? Dies in a crash on the way. Because he picked it up. Well, but 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 Carl, you're telling me this like it's fact, and I meant to go. That's amazing. Dalita Cora. He told me. <laughs> It's Carl, I have, I have, I have, I have no opinion of that story, other than I'm pretty sure there was absolutely no connection between touching the tankard and him dying. That's all I'm sure it's of. It's not just him, though, is it? I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm not going to even um, uh, contest the, the chain of events. All I'm saying is there is no connection. There is no connection possible because I believe in logic and the laws of the universe. Yeah, but what I mean, you never pick up a vibe of. Like, I, I, I've got a mate, right? Who uh, is is living in this big stately home, right? And he's living in there now. He pays hundred pound a month. There's about eighty rooms, Gee. and uh, it's this big stately house, might be. And I went, I went down there. He said, "Oh, come down, and have a look, right?" And from outside, you go, oh, "This is brilliant. It's like something out of, you know, like the Manor Born or something." You go, "This is this is impressive," but then when you get in, it's like it's a wreck, and and we go in. And all the floors are like a wreck and rotten and stuff. And I looked at the wall and there was like a little piece of paper stuck on the wall, Ooh. right? And I said, what's this here? So I wandered over, right? Got right up close to it and somebody had wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> somebody had wrote it? No. Oh. Some... Somebody had wrote it. Right. Like, I love someone... this. You can do it. Right, go on. Yeah, go on. So, Sorry. So there's, for... there's a little sign there, right? And I go up to it and it says, flies, right, with an arrow, flies, like, flies this way. Yep. Right? I think that's that's a bit weird. So I follow the arrow, right? Which goes to this corner where there's a shelf about three thousand dead flies on it. Oh my god. Condom stuck on the top. <laughs> That's, right. that's weird, isn't that it? That is weird. That is that weird, is weird. Right? So I'm looking at that and there's there's loads of stuff on the floor and that bits of paper. Picked up this bit of paper, right? And it had uh, like in biro and that. It looked really old, like it'd been there years. And it had uh, uh, something like need nappies, dummy, right? Uh, blankets, blah, blah, all this, like all stuff for like. And I turned it over, right? And it said, none of this now needed, baby dead. <laughs> right. <laughs> now that's weird, isn't it? Now that's what I'm talking about when you get a bad vibe. You go, that's, that's who's been in here. 
it's bad vibe is just based on the fact that your mates in charge. <laughs> yeah, that's terrifying. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so it's like saying, are we scared of the dark? Yes, it's, I understand why people are scared of the dark. I'm a little bit scared of the dark. You're walking along. Because you, you don't know what's in it. Yeah, you don't yeah. know what's in the darkness. That's why people get nervous. It doesn't mean you have to make the leap then that you've got some paranormal sense. Oh, my God, I'm Carl Pilkington. And hang on, just like Derek Akora, I have sensed something strange and evil in this room. Wait a minute, there's some flies in a condom. <laughs> I was right all along. That is weird. Flies and a Johnny equals badness. <laughs> the, the flies and a condom was weird. It's now. weird. I don't know. But, it's but, but the note. The note. Yeah. I just think of his face when he saw that. Reading it by torchlight. He must have been terrified. It's a bit. It's a bit odd, isn't it? Yeah. Right, yeah, it is quiz time. Three. This is this is the moment we've all been looking forward to. Uh, do you want to do you want to, do you want to, uh, te do you want to tease them with the prizes? No. <laughs> not really, because they no. might not bother phoning in. Or, it, or it's not a phone, or is it? It's an email. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me, a quick reminder. Then we've got to the office. I don't want people to think that we'll just keep plugging the office DVD. <laughs> we've got nothing else to give away. No, no one gives anything away. No, no that's just why. hanging around in Carl's little room. Did you get a guy from HMV just to? Did you get a guy just nick these from HMV? The, 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 the beard and the ponytail. Was that yeah. the story? Right. So we got the Office uh, DVD, obviously. Uh, we got uh, the remix, uh, XFM's remix album, uh, Volume 2. That's uh, sort of remixes of various tunes. Quite a good little compilation album here. One of those kind of the best Coldplay, Travis, Oasis, blah, 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 albums in the world Excellent. ever. And, Let's uh, take some of them, because yeah. there's nothing in the library. <laughs> exactly, have a look on there. Four Alanis Morissette, nine Catatonia. <laughs> I just counted in that. But thing. uh, the big one, the big star prize that you're all playing for is, of course, the DVD <laughs> widescreen version of Children of the Corn, <laughs> Stephen King's horror film, lest we forget it's got Peter Horton. <laughs> as the star, <laughs> so so look forward to that. Um, are we g we're going to uh, give Shadow away separately? Are we? We're going to uh, do that separately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll give away the, sh the DJ Shadow tickets at a separate. Right. So we're playing for those DVDs and CDs. And what and we're it's an email do, competition. Don't bother e email. Again. Yeah, the phone lines are lighting up a bit. So put the phone down. Get the computer started up, yep. and it's ricky.gervais at xfn.co.uk if you know the answers to these, right? And the way it works, we did it last week, but if you didn't hear it, I give you some initials and like a bit of a cryptic clue. So, and, uh, you work out who the band is or the artist, okay. right? It's always, it's always a band or an artist. It's not any TV programmes and that. Uh -huh. So, uh, say, like, last week we had, um, uh, we had S, didn't we? And it was, uh, better than the average homeless person. And that was Super Tramp, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not always XFM music, it can be anything. And there's three of them. Um, They've got to get all three of them. You've got to get all three Think and email in. I don't know how long this intro so far has taken. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but, but, but here we go then, right? right. First initials, L-R. L-R. L-R, okay. right? Yeah. And the cryptic clue is, uh... I'll you should have thought it through. You should have thought it out before you came in. Yeah, yeah, cryptic clue. You've got it. Yeah. Um, I'll take that book to the toilet with me. I'll take that book to the toilet with me. Yeah, yeah. L-R. L R. I'll take that book to the toilet with me. And don't shout out if you know the answer, cause no, nope. no idea, Carl. No idea. Right. Okay. So there's one. Right. The second one. F L. F L. This one's actually been emailed in as a suggestion. Okay. Uh, that person who's done that, don't email in, cause you're disqualified <laughs> from the comp. Uh, so <laughs> I'd love him to be a teacher. So it'd be great, wouldn't it, just to see him one day. Can't we do that? Can't we get you a placement somewhere to for you to teach history to sort of like you know fourteen year olds? Or I think like. science, Rick. Science would be good. Yeah, right. I'll, uh, I'll tell you what. Go uh, you got a lot of, um, t just quickly for me, Carl. Explain, say, um, what can we get him to explain that everyone learns the kid science? Uh, Photosynthesis. <laughs> 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 right. So F L, right? F L are the letters and the cryptic clue. Blow the candles out before you eat the cake. Blow the candles out before you eat the cake. Yeah. Blow okay. the candles out before you eat the cake. The letters there. F L. All right. right. We got L R. We got F L. Yeah. And finally, the third one. N S. Hold on. How many have they got to get? Three. Three. Don't worry. There's no more after this, Rick. right? N S. How can I wash up in something shaped like that? <laughs> <laughs> right, that's one of mine. <laughs> so, so very quickly recap, just in case we missed any. Oh. LR is the first one. LR. I'll take that book to the toilet with me. Cryptic clue. N. Uh, we had FL. Blow the candles out before you eat the cake. And the final one, NS. How can I wash up in something shaped like that? If you think you know the bands, you just email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. You win the DVDs, the CDs, and, uh, that's it.
for the day. <laughs> it's, it, it's great, isn't it? I could just, I could sit here and watch him all day <laughs> do this. Well, um, so ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Uh, and we'll give the answers out just before, you know, we finish, cos okay. then we'll keep them locked. Competition answer time, is it, Carl? Yeah, we did, uh, we did this, like, uh, about an hour ago. Rockbusters. Yeah. Rockbusters. With Carl Bilkington. Yeah, uh, I gave you some initials. The initials sort of, uh, made up a band. We had LR, we had, uh, NS. Yeah, we had FL. Well, give us the clues, give us the clues and the answers. what? Right, so, LR, the clue was, I'll take that book to the toilet with me, the answer. Lou Reed. Lou Reed. Good. That's very good. That's very good, Carl, wasn't it? Right, okay, next one. FL, blow the candles out before you eat the cake. Yeah. yeah, we just played them. Flaming right. lips. There we are. Very okay, good. and the final one was <laughs> NS. How can I wash up in something shaped like this? Yeah, that was N Sync. All right. Carl, okay. well, just briefly, this is uh, module four uh, A, uh, natural history. Yeah? yeah, just just briefly explain um, uh, evolution. Since you no know, natural selection, origin of the species, Darwin. Just briefly describe. That's the monkey thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Oh, well done. Yeah, go Play on. Tune, Carl. What, we don't you have fancy playing? Um, Rick, <laughs> I know you're always keen to rejuvenate the reputations of certain artists when you think maybe they've been kind of unfairly treated in yeah. the, uh, history of rock and roll. Yeah. I'll tell you a band I've always thought has been treated badly. Yeah. The Lemonheads. Go on. You with me? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Lemonheads, if I could talk, I'd tell you. Yeah. He wrote some good little tunes, Evan yeah, Dando, yeah. before he went to the potty. What would you rather have, right, hey, Carl? Would you rather have a lemon for a head, <laughs> a radio for a head? Um, what other band is there with something head? Radiohead. Oh, you've done that. Yeah. <laughs> or a talking head. <laughs> <laughs> right. Third one. No, but you don't know what. It, it, no, because you've got you, and then you've got uh, someone else's head on top, and it, it doesn't shut up. It's my head. <laughs> it's my talking head coming out of your head. Yeah, so a radio head, just a radio head and you can tune in, right? You know you said there, Carl, that <laughs> wasps were one of the most irritating <laughs> things on the planet. Can I offer another suggestion? <laughs> yeah. You with me on that? Uh, I, I am. I am. No, go on then. Okay. Educating Ricky, we've got, we got, we got two left, haven't we? I'm looking we've forward to these. We've still got two more. We've still got, uh, if only it was raining. <laughs> and, uh, what's tomato with you? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I wish the <laughs> listeners could see how happy he was when we started getting emails coming in. Oh yeah, people, they're flooding in actually. Yeah, and he's oh, so happy, he started pretty... dancing along going, well, that proves it's a good competition, he said! Look, look at that, look at that! Oh, look at that, mate. What? There's look loads of people that. emailing there. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what it is, Carl, it's not the competition, it's this, Children of the, the Corn! corn. Widescreen DVD! <laughs> Next week, some staples and pencils! <laughs> I'll tell you what. A piece of carpet! <laughs> I'll tell you what, right? What? Well, now we've got them and they're staying, something we, we've still got to do yeah. is, uh... He is running the show now, he's doing well, isn't he? Because I've done nothing, I've done nothing towards this. I'm coming at me hangover a little bit if you're worried. Remember, remember, <laughs> so, go remember, on. Remember last week we yeah. started a new feature called, yeah. uh, That Song's Got a Good Story in it. And, Brilliant, and I love your catchy titles, they're excellent! Right, and the idea was it was a story in yeah. a song which meant that if it was played on the radio you couldn't just like fade it out because you've got to have the full story. Yeah. Right, well last week we started the feature with Stevie Wonder, uh, Living for the City. Yeah. Right. But you yeah. played the version where it fades out. Yeah, I didn't know there was more to it, so Steve told me what album it was on. Yeah. I've gone and got it, we've got the second half to that story. Yeah. This week. Yeah. So, you've got half the story, what was it, what had happened is like, <laughs> the lad's living in Mississippi, there's not much going on there. Mississippi? <laughs> that, that's that someone off Rainbow's mum? Yeah. Um, living, what, Mississippi? Yeah. He, his dad's, was his, his mum was a cleaner. Yeah. Trying to get by, they didn't have a great life, but they still looked after the kids and yes. stuff. There's more to it than that. Have you got it ready? <laughs> There's more to it than okay. that! I, I should hope so! We'll probably do it at about half past three. So look okay. forward to that, the second it's half of that. Stevie Wonder's Living for the City, <laughs> a week later. <laughs> <laughs> I love a show that's carefully planned. <laughs> so, so listen, that, I, I'm, I watched got, the tomato This isn't thing. a show, this isn't a show. This isn't a radio show. <laughs> this is, I don't know what this is. No, I don't know what it is. <laughs> we, we might as well start banging tambourines and uh, it's ridiculous. <laughs> this is rubbish, right? But why? <laughs> some people emailed in. <laughs> Put him in a wheelie bin. Went to Blackpool, right? Um, some people emailed in the stories, songs with stories in it. One of them was Babushka. And he went, what's that? 
And I went and asked Katie Bush, I went, what is it? I said, oh, it's about a woman who dresses up as another woman to and seduces her husband. He went, they wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Just dismissed it like that. Why do you think they would work? Because you'd, you'd know. I mean, say like, say like, um, right, Suzanne, right, who yeah. I go out with, yeah. right? She can see me from, say, if I'm coming down the high street. Yeah. She knows it's me by the way I walk. <laughs> right. So, just the fact that this woman went and put a wig on, there is no... <laughs> you haven't even heard the song! I know, but you're saying that she put a disguise on and he's yeah. like, oh, I fancy her, and he texts her out, and he, he doesn't know it's his missus. It's just... <laughs> You're not, you're not buying it. I mean, I'm, I'm controlling this. Where is the flea? Where is the flea with your brain going to Glasgow? Perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Babushka, rubbish. Carl, can we have the tomato story after the next tune? Yeah. Bit of cold play? Yeah, love it. Yeah. Hi, it's there on XFM 104.9. Right, we've got a competition question. Steve's come up with it at the last minute. This is just to check if you are a regular listener of the show. Yeah, okay. we would like to reward loyalty. Exactly, absolutely. So, um, last week on the show, Ricky described a story that happened to him uh, back in the 80s when he was making his TV appearance on Razzmatazz with his band. And he tried to, he had to fly out, was it to Newcastle? Yeah. And um, he tried to get on a plane, and a pop act of the 80s tried to help Ricky sneak aboard an aeroplane. But failed. But they failed to do it. At the height of their powers. And they were at the height of their powers. What was the name of that outfit? Should we put them on the line? Absolutely, let's hear well, it. There's, there's the people there already. This is to win Incubus tickets. Please do not be mental. Don't be mental or swear or say anything libelous or nasty. Yeah. Just be nice. You won't, you won't win if you're not. Go on. Hello? Hello? Hi, who's that? Oh, I've got my headphones on, haven't I? Put your headphones on, Rick. I'll just oh. keep her talking. Oh, no. Nice. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Okay, hello. Hi. hello there. What's your name? Lindsay. Lindsay, where are you calling from? Um, Clapham Junction. And do you know the answer? I do. Okay. Is it Bucks Fizz? It was indeed Bucks Fizz. It was the Fizz. <laughs> yeah. It was indeed the Fizz. Well, do then. you like Incubus? Um, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, you see, if I was interrogating you, <laughs> I, I, I'd go, you hesitated. Yes. There's so many people phoning up who are desperate for these Incubus tickets. Please don't make they this are right to you. No, no, to be fair, they're rightfully yours. Right, you... I'll tell you what, why, I'll have a t-shirt if you give them the tickets. Okay, is that just any old t-shirt or... No, no. Can we, uh, can we send her a t-shirt? Carl's nodding. Right, you think you're... we can send you a t-shirt? Right, um, we'll get you a t-shirt. How, how, how are you going to do that then, Carl? Because you've got to take her name and everything now. Yeah. <laughs> this is pathetic. <laughs> this this is wouldn't amazing, happen with Dr. Foxy. Foxy wouldn't do yeah. this. Can I, can I say as well, there's a bank, um, there's a train station with one vowel. Yeah, but there's loads, aren't there? He hasn't thought it through. No. Bo as well, there's many. Listen, no. Carl, take yeah. a of a number. It can't have been that. I can't remember it. What was it? I remember I tried it the last time I tried this it. This is a shambles. And I couldn't work out. Then there was, there was wrong answers. I remember Aldwych came up. Maybe right. it's Aldwych. What's, what? What's oh. Carl doing now? What? Who's he talking to? I don't know, he's talking to her, but what? This, look, quick, let's think of something. Come uh, on. Tell her, are you still on this line? No, she's, he's picked up the phone now. So what am no, I doing? Sh we're giving away. We're, look, we're letting people behind the curtain. Let's keep up this veneer of professionalism. This is so rubbish, Come on, no, 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 no don't, okay. don't draw attention to it. Okay, all right. Uh, but let's just talk and make... So, uh, Steve, what, hey. what, what are you doing tonight? Looking forward to pop stars? <gasps> looking forward to a lot. Who, Who do you want to win? I'm glad you've asked, Rick. Um, I'd love to see Darius have a bit of success, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I think uh, it's probably going to be the stutterer. I think it is going to be um, Gareth. He has a name there, Steve. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be Gareth, yeah, apparently sure, in the sure. polls in the week he's getting twice a bit. We're back, don't we? Okay. Alright, Carl, um, so, right, okay, so she's getting a t-shirt, is she? Lovely. Right, as we, who's, who's that on the line? Next contestant. Hello? <phone rings> this is amazing. <laughs> An error? I, I mean, we couldn't do this worse. <laughs> Go on. Exactly. Hello? Hello. Hello, who's that? It's Dan. Dan, hello, Dan. Danny. All so, right, do you want to go to Incubus? I'd love to, man. Okay. Hold on, this is pointless, because he's just heard the last, uh, he's heard the answer. Yeah, it's definitely Bucks Fizz. This is mad, we didn't think this through! <laughs> no, but let's be honest, it, he wouldn't have been on the line if he didn't know the answer. Are you cheating? No. Dan. Dan, he said he's not cheating. For, uh, this is failsafe. <laughs> That's failsafe. This <laughs> is our rigorous, I can't <laughs> believe this. Uh, Dan, you're going to Incubus. Oh, cheers, uh, man. Well That's done. Well done. Oh. Nice one. Thanks Cheers. For listening. Cheers. Oh. Carl, what do we have to do? Do we just hang up, or what happens? No, you play a song and... Play a song then. You've got oh. his details. Yeah. Oh, play God. it. Beaver, yesterday. That reminds me of this Christmas where my 51 year old brother wouldn't let anyone near the PlayStation 2 because he was playing Gran Turismo. And he has to build his car up and buy it. He just played it from about 6 o'clock till sort of 3 in the morning. Was really? it bought for him? Or about 3. Uh, I, d I don't know, but, but we, we had to watch him. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> Why that song particularly? Uh, Why it's on. It's on it. Oh, it's it's the, it's I think. I think feed a feature all over it, don't they? On the right, on the, right, on the right. soundtrack. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> Yeah. I was on the tube the other day, Rick, so oh. I was just coming into Finsbury, uh, Finchley Road, yeah. and uh, I was on the train, I, 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 mean, I know you don't travel on the tube anymore, because no. you're too famous, but- um, I, I never did. No, no, fair it's, it's not that I don't know you recognise, it's just that it's beneath me. <laughs> fair enough. And um, <clears throat> and they're on, on the tube, in the, each carriage, on these newer ones, there are kind of these uh, flaps that are normally locked closed, and there was one of them that's swinging open, and inside there were various buttons like on, off, you know, self-destruct, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. But seriously, like doors operating. Train so. quicker. Exactly. And you were thinking, like, you don't want some, you know, kind of oik sort no. of fiddling around pressing buttons and stuff. It could be quite dangerous. Yeah. So I got off a feature and I thought, I'll, I'll be a good commuter. I'll mention this to the staff, and and they'll probably, you know, they'll, they'll they'll thank me for it. And if it's an attractive young staff member, you know, I mean, they never are on the tube. Have you ever seen an attractive member of staff at a tube station? Oh come on, steady. They on. are such freaks. I no, mean, I know that's the pot kettle they're all, black. Thing, they're all from Devon, apparently. They're grotesque people, really. All right, steady on. And uh, so anyway, I went up to this guy. I thought the I'd uniforms don't out though, do they? They don't. It's pretty grim. And so yeah. I went up to this guy. I said to him, "Excuse me, I was just on the train there, and um, there was a flap open. I could see all these buttons." and things. He went, right. I was like, yeah, well, I just think, you know, it might be, you know, you know wandering hands, a small child or something. He went, right. A small yeah. child? He went, he went, what carriage was it? I said, well, I don't really know what carriage it was. I just, maybe the next stop, someone should come and check. He went, well, how are they going to check if they don't know what carriage it's in? <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, I just thought, I just wanted to smack him in the face. I just thought, you know, I'm in a hurry. I've got no reason. There's no gain for me about telling this. It's not going to help me out in any way, not financially, nothing. I'm I just going to help you out, and that's your attitude. And I was absolutely I know. Livid. I'm getting so intolerant in my I old age. I won't. I can't uh, uh, stand bad, it. Bad service, bad attitude, just, uh, oh, it drives me mad. It makes my blood boil, and I, oh. Livid. I was one time, right, I was down in the centre of town. This was after some of the big explosions, the IRA had you know, various things. And everyone was on kind of bomb alert, very nervous, very scared. And uh, there was a, a, a sort of a bag in the street, you know, this was the centre of London or whatever, and, and my friends and I were a bit edgy, but a bit nervous. And we're outside this pub and we saw the bag and we thought maybe we should sort of tell, we'll tell the landlord and that. So we told the landlord, right, and he, he came out and he looked at it and he thought, oh, you're right, lad, it does look a bit shifty. Um, and this is what he did, this was his security measure, right, <laughs> he was going to call the police, but in the meantime, he picked up one of those sandwich boards that <laughs> advertises what food's being served in the pub, just placed it over the top of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a fail. So that is what the bomb disposal unit use <laughs> exactly. very often. That like, you see them uh, up and down Oxford Street. They're they're not people, sell, um, you know, selling stuff. Sure, that's just that's they a bomb will leave shield. on a bomb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I love the idea because what we did was we moved about a hundred yards down the road because we thought if the bomb goes off, we want to see it. That'll be dramatic. Yeah, we don't want to get <laughs> yeah. you know, injured. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I love the idea of like a, s a sandwich board flying off into the air, <laughs> just embedding itself in someone's head. Yeah, what? Well, no yeah. one would have been Who do I sue? That sandwich board. Well, that was that was Ron, the landlord. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. My God, is that is that is that a Cumberland pie for five ninety five? I can't believe my luck. <laughs> John, I think there's something more serious. There's a anyway, um, <laughs> paramedics going. I can't believe ninety nine p a pie. <laughs> it's brilliant. I'm going to come back here. <laughs> so anyway, so listen. He calls the police, right? And so after a while, about you know, it's like forty minutes later, and I think the police do a good job. I'm not trying to break down on the police. I think it's a, it's a good job, and I I respect the police. But, um, this, this police van turns up after about 40 minutes of waiting, right? And this, this guy leaps out of the van and he goes, what, you're the guys who reported this, are you? And we went, yeah. He went, right. And he looked at the bag and he picked it up, he unzipped it, and there was just some rubbish in there. And he just, and he just looked, he just threw it at us, he went, there's your bomb for you, and threw it at us to teach us a lesson, and then got in the van and drove off. And it was like, uh, oh, what, what lesson are you teaching us about what did being you do? Did you, you presumably reported him, did you? Well, of course we're not, what's going to happen, you know, it's not. Do you know what I think? I think he thought it was a bomb. Right. And he was trying to blow you up to yeah. teach you a lesson. Well, possibly. That's I bad. Just, that is just, really bad. It just winds me right up, stuff like Once, that. Once, right? Uh, <laughs> me and Bill, we had sort of, it was like 1983, and we had like extensions and um, cut off t shirts and jeans and. Uh, Sexy. Uh, yeah, you know, like makeup, all oh, new about it. And we were just eating chips on a corner, right? And this, it was a Saturday, so I assume it was like. Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> Football patrol, about twelve police in the car, and they sort of slowed down, looked at us, and he wound the window down, and the bloke driving shouted, "You look like a couple of prats." <laughs> Bill turned to me and went, "Is that an offence?" <laughs> and I remember <laughs> wanting to laugh at the joke, but thinking, "That's annoying." Yeah, of <laughs> that is. They were right. Well, yeah, no, they were right. But it's not really a police issue, I don't yeah. think. Someone called into a uh, HQ that morning. Guys, you can <laughs> see anyone looks a bit, uh, you know, the fashion <laughs> police. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, looks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. A, we've heard a bit. There's a bit of a, uh, a to do. Apparently, a couple of prats are walking round. 
Yeah. Uh, oh. We need someone to go on fashion police <laughs> patrol. <laughs> Send in Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But you know, we we respect the police. Yeah, we're not. No, really I'm not having a go. It's just those few that give them a bad no. name, really. Yeah, exactly. Hey, hey, if I'm fine, I think the boys in blue do a good job. <laughs> they do. They do. And do the firemen. Yeah, especially well. firemen. I remember once. This is really embarrassing. This is the arrogance of youth, right? In a, in a hall of residence, every time someone did toast. The fire alarms went off. I remember once it was like two in the morning, and we were at the go outside, and it was just toast set off thing. But it it was linked, and about eight fire engines turned up, and I, I they were all coming in right, and I said, "Oh, this is so embarrassing. Why am I telling this?" Go on. I just went. There's enough of you. God. And the fireman quite well said he just went shut your mouth, mate. Yeah. And I thought. Oh God, he's right. He's one of those you remember ten years later. Yeah, goes, that's a horrible thing. What a tw I know, but I, I when you're eighteen, I want to publicly apologise oh, to the I'm fire so brigade. Sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Because I never did oh. stuff like that. Oh, that is twice. I was too busy saying, "Can I try on your helmet?" <laughs> 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 oh dear. Oh, we better play another yeah, song, aren't we? Oh, this is uh, um, a great track. This is uh, Groove Armada. It's from uh, the album Goodbye Country. Hello Nightclub. It's the opening track. It's all called uh, Sun Toucher. I think you'll like this, Steve. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Groove Armada there and Sun Toucher. Did you like that? I didn't mind it, actually. I didn't realise you were a uh, Groove Armada dance music fan. Well, no, Jane played that music today. I knew that before, but I loved it immediately. Yeah. That, that, oh, it's great. It's like yes. a soundtrack mixed with a little bit of sure, sure. hip-hop and... Oh, it's all it's all like a big... All a big like mix, a big isn't melting it? pot. Yeah. Yeah. I just wish that's what the world was, really. So where we could so just, so you know, everyone yeah. could live in harmony. I wish it was an onion. Oh, if only the world were a great big onion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, well, maybe one day. Well, this is nearly the end of the show. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's been uh, Ricky Gervais on XFM 104.9 with Carl. And, uh, <laughs> it's been a great show and, uh, you know, I've just, uh, there's been some laughter, there's been some tears, there's, there's been, been some jokes, jokes. there's been some political satire. <laughs> I'd like to think so. But, above all, there's been some chat with friends. <laughs> and there's been some bloody great music, let's some, not forget that. I don't think we need to swear at this <laughs> time. It's <laughs> play juncture. Yeah, um, because you make yourself look a cock, <laughs> and me look a twat, <laughs> and true. Carl, Look like a complete <laughs> song for ladies. Um, rarely do you get a chance to play on a radio station Nearly seven minutes wanker. <laughs> seven minutes worth of Led Zeppelin. But screw it, I thought that hey. you know, it's the end of the show. We don't give a damn. It's Be an amazing song. Be careful with the language. <laughs> screw damn and bloody. Do not a sermon make. <laughs> Rick, yeah, it's a beautiful yeah, song. Yeah. If you're not a Zeppelin fan, stick with it's it. it. It's not roaring rock as you'd expect. The rain song from Houses of the Holy. Oh. See you next time. See you later. <laughs> it doesn't doesn't happen. That's what I'm saying. I've never heard anyone saying it like I've never overheard someone saying, you don't know where the Russian shop is, do you? <laughs> and this is in London where the rates are high. There was this thing, right, Steve? Uh them old drawings on like It was like a panel from a church that someone had uh, that okay, painted. Right, yeah. And I think it was like, you know, from sort of like fifteen ninety or something. Yeah. And it was this uh, a, a picture of this uh this mm. saint, wasn't it? So fifteen ninety. It could be from any time really. So there's this one there, right, leaning up against the wall and uh <laughs> most of them in there was that Stalin bloke, right? Mm. But there was this little Right, can I just start with there? Lenin. Right, okay. all right then. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he was on all these bits of wood and stuff, but I saw this other little face, right, little fellow with a beard, right? <laughs> so uh, I said, who's this bloke here? He said, oh, uh, the story there, right? He said, uh, it's this little fella, and he got mugged back in Russia. <laughs> This is right, isn't it? This is what he was yeah. saying. So he got this is that, that term that I love that that term in the, in a 16th century Russian wood. Oh no, I'm being mugged. So so he, he got mugged. He got happy slapped. And uh, <laughs> and and he said, I've had enough of this. Right? Yeah. And he went to live in the woods. Right. Made like a little shed. Stayed there. People went to visit him. And and like if you got a problem, you're not going to go and you go. Oh, I'm sick of it. And he'll sort of say, Yeah, I know what you mean. I've, I've moved out of the city and what have you. And he'd make him feel better. And then they go again. Now, why has that man got a plaque? <laughs> if he was around now, there's no way he'd have a bit of wood with his face on it, is what I'm saying. If someone had got fed up with living in London or New York or whatever, and they go, I'm going to go and live in the woods, people wouldn't visit him, and he wouldn't get a piece of wood with his face on, is what I'm saying. <laughs> but this man is selling it for about, I think it was about 750 quid for, for this bloke's head. But the chances are that this is... 
either a well-known Russian folktale or it may even be a piece of classic Russian He's literature. He's a saint. He was a saint. Or, oh, okay. He was canonised. Well, yeah. yeah. everybody, everybody was a saint years ago. That seems to be, like, thrown about, doesn't it? Who's a saint now? Name him one now. Yeah, this fellow lived in a woods in a hut. Oh, yeah, that's Saint John or whatever. <sighs> he's not a saint. He's done nothing. If anything, he's sort of said, I can't be bothered with living in a city with everyone else. Everyone else has got to put up with it, but I can't put up with it. I'm going to live in the woods. Well, if you can't put up with it, you're not good enough, are you? You've got no stamina. <laughs> and yet he gets a plaque, is what I'm saying. It's annoying. Who would, you like to see, who would you like to see get a plaque in the modern world? Who deserves a plaque, in your opinion? Probably, like, nurses and that, who, who do a lot of bad things that I think I couldn't do that. Carrying lungs about and all that. <laughs> but... <laughs> no, but I, I couldn't do, do you know what I mean? That's that's one job that... Oh. I, my mum wanted me to be a doctor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow! What was she wow. thinking? Oh, what's oh, her expectations this like apple now? apple didn't fall far from the tree. Oh, when did she start giving up that dream? At what age did she start going... Carl, you don't need to study your books anymore. Go, go and play with the worms in the garden. When did she sort of, like, let you off that dream? Is it the day that she caught you with a spoon up your nose? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, talking of emails and that, right, uh, Nick, who's emailed from Australia, right, Melbourne, he's, uh, he's, he's been going on about dolphins and that, problems with dolphins. What problems? Um, he's just saying when, when that, that wind happened... <laughs> Um, it was like a bad wind thing going on. Hold on, wait a minute, what, what bad wind? Um, in, in America, they had that... Hurricane Katrina? Yeah. Right. And there was like a little bay with dolphins in it, and right. that, with all guns on them and stuff. What? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. It's, they use dolphins, don't they? They say they're intelligent animal and stuff. Yeah. Um, and they've got them all like, you know, they've all had the training, they're all like ready for, for battle and stuff. Right. Got like rifles on them. What do you mean rifles? They've got, how can they, they hold weapons? the rifle? They've got, how can they got, hold a rifle? No, it's sort of on a strap and that. It's, what do you I mean it's on a strap? I don't know what they cut them out with, but they're just ready for war. <laughs> what are you off. talking about? Listen, though, that isn't the point. Don't worry about it. Oh, we leave but that one, do we? Is, That's not the point. So let's leave it. So they're swimming about. Right? Yeah, and with, with rifles and berets. Whatever they've got on. Yeah, like, ready for, for battle and stuff. Yeah, ready for uh, battle. Yeah. The wind comes in. The wind comes in. Makes makes a wave and that. They get out of the little bay. Yeah. Still all kitted out. With all the, you know, weapons. You're talking and that. bollocks. Steve, do you want to look at the. Well, there, there's no way there's loads of dolphins now swimming round, kitted out with problems. guns and that, with a strap. How, how can a dolphin hold a. Whoa. Again, Nothing. you've been watching Planet of the Apes. Oh, he's trying to talk to us. What's he saying? He's saying, go ahead, punk, make my day. Look, You're just, talking shit. It's just news to say if, if there's dolphins, you know, if you see a dolphin in that, don't go, oh, it's friendly. Because there's some wee weapons now. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just I'm just reading it out on email, that's, that, that'll cover it in that, so. Bollocks. Carl, can we have some monkey news before I die? All right. Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news, yeah. <laughs> this monkey that was knocking about called Ollie, it was in this zoo, um, and, and it was the only monkey in there, right? And uh, it was getting a bit lonely, because, like, it was sharing its sort of time with, say, an elephant and a giraffe. And no, that. it doesn't happen. And they, w they didn't really. No, 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 get whoa, whoa, on whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. They do no, not. Let me put, just tell you. They do not put chimpanzees yeah, in. Let me with, tell you. No, well, it's not true. Why do you share his time with an elephant and a giraffe? Gervais, it was it was some kind of flat share. They put they put an advert in the student union. Yeah, you know, we've got two rooms to let. African mammal wanted, not specific. A mammoth and a. What I'm saying is, there was other elephants for elephants to knock about with, and that the monkey, it was the only one there. So what happened is the zookeeper right. felt a bit sorry for him. He he started to sort of get pally with him. So at lunchtime, when the zookeeper was sat on the wall having his like hand butties or whatever, mm. he'd sort of go, "You're right." Yeah. And and it used to come over closer and closer. Right? Yeah. Anyway, within a month, he was sat on the wall having his lunch with him. Right. That but anyway, so he sat he sat there, and as time goes on, you yeah. know, he's, he's sort of sat with him most of the day. Monkeys yeah. walking around with him helping feed the other animals and that. No. But then what happened is the, the, the zookeeper, at the end of the night, when he's, like, locking up and stuff, yeah. he'd feel bad because he'd be leaving the zoo and, like, Ollie's sat there and he's like, I'll see you tomorrow, and the monkey's like, yeah, I'll right, see you later. <laughs> Looking all fed up because he's got home to go to and he's still stuck in his... where he's basically working every day. Right, so he's never... <laughs> He's never going home, right? Now he's sleeping at work, the so, monkey. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, the, yeah. the zookeeper goes home and says to his wife, look, Ollie's uh, having a bit of a time at the moment. So she said, oh yeah, what's going on? He said, well, uh, <laughs> she's looking a bit fed up, you know, he's, 
She's sick of it. So, she said, bring him home. It didn't happen! <laughs> so this anyway, is in your head! So, so, she said, yeah, bring it home tonight. So anyway, he's, he's looking forward to going into work and night. He sees Ollie. He doesn't tell him straight away. <laughs> Later. It gets to the end of the day. Yeah. Anyway, he's like, get your coat. He's like, what? Coat? Like, what do you mean, get no, your no, coat? But, <laughs> whatever the equivalent is, right? Whatever you say to a monkey, it was kind of like, you know, you come in with me, sort of thing. Yeah. Right. So he's going, oh, brilliant. Anyway, no, he's not. So what he do you mean he's going brilliant? He takes Look, it out. So he gets right? his hat and coat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and he I can't believe he's lost, right? Yeah. He, goes, he goes back to the zookeeper's house. Everything's going well for about a week and a half. Right. right? Treating him really well. He sat there. You know, he's having a brandy at night before he goes to bed. <laughs> so he said to his wife, look, you're at home all day, right? Oh, I'm going to work, I'll leave it with you, right? Yeah. So while he stays at home... Yeah. Anyway, uh, as time oh. goes on, a yep. little bit of trouble. Whilst the fella's busy at work, while he starts getting a little bit cheeky, tries it on with the missus. Whoa! Right. Well, this, how this, does a monkey off. try it on with the missus? Are you so talking this, this shit? This is classic monkey news. And how does it try it on with so the missus? So he's a bit drunk, <laughs> he's, he's, he stinks of smoke, he tries it on with the missus. How does he try it on with it? I, I don't know all the detail on You don't know any bit. of the details. I don't know the detail on that bit. But you don't know any of the details. No, I don't know the details on that bit. You don't know any of the details. So what happened? So while the zookeeper's away, the monkey did play, <laughs> did the zookeeper's wife reciprocate these affections? She probably went along with that first. You know, she's cooking at home, getting the tea ready, that's walking past <laughs> pinching her arse or whatever. <laughs> And it's, do you know what I mean? It's, it, it starts off just like it does, you know, with humans. Starts off as a bit of fun, before you know it, you know, split up in the end. Anyway, the zookeeper wouldn't know what's it. I think the monkey stayed, stayed with the with the woman. <laughs> so, it's all there. It's Honestly, all there, you, it, it def your imagination. Well, you should write stories. You get should people, write. You get know. people to look it up. It's look, just put in monkey, chimp, Ollie, and it's it's all there. Well, it's like those people who. Um, you're, you're those cab drivers that you'll meet at sort of three in the morning who've just got a car yeah. and just went out with a car. Yeah. And just, I'll, I'll, I'll pick people up and charge them. Yeah. I got in one once, I said to him, uh, the guy just pulled up, I said, uh, he said, I was in like uh, East London, I'm going back to uh, North London. I said, uh, yeah, going to uh, Swiss Cottage. He went, sure, hop in. <laughs> we set off. He went, do you know the way? <laughs> I said, well, not really, no. I, th I thought you'd know the way. You're in a cabbie, aren't you? He went, no, I don't really know the way there. I, don't. I, said, I said, have you got an A to Z? He went, no. I thought, well, if you're going to go out just on the, you know, just winging it as a cab driver, yeah. two things, take a map and a torch. He didn't have yeah. either. He said, uh, well, I'll probably get to Camden. I said, right, I'll direct you from there. Drove on for about five minutes, making conversation. About five minutes later, he went, do you know the way to Camden? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you knew the way to Canada. I don't really know the way. I thought you did. <laughs> oh, it was I mean, let I mean, me out. You know, Four yeah, quid. Exactly. <laughs> and that's I, I can't. I don't know who's got that sort of time on their hands that they just think it's three in the morning. I'm, I'm at a loose end. Mm. I think I'll go out doing a bit of cabbing. Well. Wow. Yeah. Because your dad was a cabbie, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, yeah. Couldn't stand it, but it's, it's good money. He was a prof- he wasn't like a chancer, though. Black what cow. was- Black what cow. was he- what was he doing when he put that little Forrest Gump in a- in a weedy bin? That was, uh, that was part of the cab company thing. They had to do, like, a charity event once a year, and he did it one year. Never asked him again. Tell the story again, I said, I know, no, I'd rather not, cause Why? we got- cause we got a few, sort of, uh, complaints about it. Why? Why'd you get complaints about it? Because- it's because he put a kid in a bin, and it's not the thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> so. But we could use it as a sort of sobering lesson for people. <laughs> yeah, tell it like a, tell it like a, you know, don't, yeah. you shouldn't do it. No, it's, it's I, yeah, but that's how I did it last time, but people still didn't like it. All the stuff I tell you, I don't, you know, we don't take the mickey out of people on purpose. No. We, it's real life, innit? And mm. that goes on in life. Yeah. My dad was saying that in hospital, though. Do you know how he was in hospital? Yeah. You know, he did some jokes about old people and that, and he said, at the end of the day, if something makes you laugh, it's funny. Mm. And if it makes you laugh, you can't help laughing, can you? Do you know True what I mean? Enough. So, what are you meant to do? <laughs> and yeah. laughing's good for you. Yeah. So, even But being laughed at isn't as good for you, is it? No, but there's probably more people laughing at one person, so if you balance it out, <laughs> there's only one person who's upset and there's a bunch of people laughing. <laughs> So it's, it's <laughs> genius. Give me an example of that. Give me an example. Well, for instance, Carl Pilkington as he talks and the people listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, give me an example of like so. Uh, uh, you know, I can't, well, I can't because again, that's what I'm saying. I can't tell you the story because yeah. there might be someone out there who this person might even be listening and think I forgot about that and you brought it all back to me. <laughs> Yeah. So, so I'd, I'd prefer to leave it, but I think people know- Why did he put him in the bin in the first place? Because he was getting out of hand. What was he doing, though? You see, I can't explain- You I'm can't! Gonna... Don't be silly! I'd prefer to- to leave it, honestly. What, what, what was he doing? Was he annoying him? 
he was annoying me dad and the other people in the cab. Right. And he thought, how can I deal with this mm -hmm. before it gets too out of hand? Yeah. He pulled over and put the lad in a wheelie bin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna bet. So we'll we'll leave that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh God. Yeah, yeah. Right. How old was the kid? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure, but I mean, it was a trip to sort of Blackpool. So <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> Do you think it was one of the rides? Seventeen. This is rubbish. Right. Seventeen. Yeah. Oh, he's quite an old lad then. So no, a big lad. Yeah. <laughs> but let's let's. Uh, did he pick him up? He picks him up and put him in a wheelie bin. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the way back, he got him back again. He said, "Right, you won't do that again." On mate. the way back, yeah, he left him there for a bit. He left him there. What? They went to Blackpool yeah. and he left the kid in the wheelie bin. Yeah. Did but, he? Yeah. What was the kid in the wheelie bin when he drove back? Yeah. Did he not get out? No, because how do you get out? It's tricky, isn't it? And <laughs> he wasn't a normal kid, was he? Let's let's leave it. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't a normal kid. Right, right then. So uh... is your father in prison? <laughs> Oh, I think he should be. Can I put oh. a song on? Yeah, go on then. Feeder, come back around, XFM, 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkerton. I asked Carl in the week, right, what animal would he never trust? <laughs> Even if he, he got to know it and it was a pet and everything, what animal would he never trust? What was it? Was this, uh, a wasp? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Why wouldn't you trust a wasp, Carl? I just think that, um, They're shifty? All, all other animals, if you get them at an early age, <laughs> you can sort of <laughs> make them like you. You can train them, don't you? A wasp. Nothing. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you- do you think there's anything you could do that would kind of, uh, win the favour and win the trust of a wasp? What would you have to do, do you think? Well, if you had it from a little grub? Yeah. And you fed it- you had its favourite marmalade. It doesn't affect it though, does it? A bee <laughs> dies, doesn't it, if it does it, so it's not gonna like use it willy nilly. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy for you to say. But a wasp. Like, <laughs> I, I, I Do you what well, they you think they sting arbitrarily? They just sting for the fun of it. They're like, like sort of like delinquent insects. Or delinquent I think so, because last yeah. night, right, I mean this is part of educating Ricky in a way, but something I learnt last night mm. was that tarantulas only bite you if you annoy it. <laughs> Right. They don't, they don't, mm -hmm. do you know how people say, oh, if you're in a sleeping bag living in a jungle, a spider will get in there and it'll bite you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently not, you've got to really annoy it. The thing that it really hates is having its leg sort of twisted. <laughs> <laughs> it hates having its leg twisted. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. But, but that's more for- Is that what they said in a documentary? <laughs> No, no, I actually said- Almost also, certainly not, Steve. <laughs> Almost certainly not. Were you watching not. the documentary? No, 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 I was reading it. Oh, you were reading it. And, um, it was this guy- Was it scrawled on the wall screen <laughs> like a public toilet? No, I'll tell <laughs> no, you, no. I'll, I'll tell you more about that later. Oh, it's right, part of the, the uh, thing. Okay. So, part if you don't trust the, the evil wasp, what uh, animal do you trust? What's your favourite Well, I animal? also, uh, I said to him, right, supposing your, your mind, right, was put- your mind was got put into any animal, right, and you've got to get from where you are now, right, to Glasgow, right, as an animal, right, but the authorities will be looking out for it. <laughs> okay. And it's shooting you, right? And, uh, w w you went through loads, didn't you? I was thinking about it for- th it must have took me about an hour. So your yeah. mind- sorry, your mind has been put into an animal. An animal yeah, so it's you and in you, this animal thinking right, yeah. you've got to get to somewhere. But, the, but the maybe, maybe you're, you're in the animal? Yeah, maybe your body is in Glasgow or something and you've got to get this animal to get to you so it can transfer its mind back into your body. But yeah. the but government knows that I'm- Oh, famous. we've all had that conversation. <laughs> So the government, the government's going, Carl can't have your own brain back. <laughs> I only have it with Carl, don't yeah, I, these conversations, yeah. go on, yeah. So yeah, so you're, you're on the way. So think about it, you, you think about it just for a second, so, let's recap. <laughs> your, your body's in Scotland. Right. He's the only one that takes my question seriously. Your, your brain is in London. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. And there's like loads of security and stuff looking out in the sky for animals or looking on, on the field, seeing what's trying- looking a bit suspicious. <laughs> yeah. Trying- trying to get to your body- And they're shooting the brain, And they're shooting everything and killing all the animals. What thing would you pick to get your brain to Scotland that wouldn't get caught? And I reckon I- I've, I've got the answer. A wasp? No, cause think about it, a lot of people get irritated. If it sort of wanted to get a lift <laughs> in a car going down the motorway, if someone's driving it's a, it's a wasp yeah. in the car, it's a yeah. nightmare. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. <laughs> cause a right accident. Yeah. So think of something that people wouldn't, you know. And the clock's ticking as well. You You're know, taking you've... this really very seriously, yeah. aren't you, Carl? You've only got a couple you have of thought, You've given this a lot of thought, haven't you? You have. Yeah. Um, so, uh, something with speed. 
Yeah, it's something got that a... can travel quite speedily. Well, well, that's, yeah. well, and something that's also inconspicuous. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. that the sort of thing you're-, you're well, that's what you're going yeah. to do? Yeah. Um, and is it a- is it a creature that's, uh, that's native to this country? Yeah. Right. Yeah, it is. I've got no idea, Carl. What are you thinking? Tell him. A flea. A flea? Think Tell him why. It. Think about it. Um, right, this flea, it's got my brain. Mm. It's dead small, the flea. Thanks <laughs> <laughs> right. for clearing that up. Yeah. And it's- it, so it goes, right, I've got to go to Scotland. So it jumps on someone who's going to Euston Station. Right. They- they don't know it's there. No. The government can't see it. Mm. <laughs> the government can't see it! Steve! <laughs> think about the site then! Think if you just tuned in! Yeah. Now, uh, People get on the train, goes to Glasgow or Edinburgh, wherever in Scotland mm. it is. It jumps off, it goes right. Uh, jumps on someone else who's going the way it needs to go, gets there, still no one's seen it, jumps on me, I get my brain back, yeah. the government are like, Phew. But- and you feel confident that your brain would fit in that of a fleas? Well, you said there was no problem with the size of it, you said you could- That certainly wouldn't be. So, no. <laughs> no. You, I, I pretty much genius. you could download everything you know into a flea. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, that's genius. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, What would you thinking. rather have, right? Um, roller skate feet, and there's little wheels, right? Uh, Chopstick hands, yeah? Mm. Instead of hands, chopsticks instead of hands, wheels instead of feet. Yeah. Right? Or acne? Uh, how big are the wheels? <laughs> <laughs> Can I take you guys back to the old school? Do you mind if we take, take it back to the old school? Well, yeah, what are you gonna do? What are you uh, gonna lay on me? No, I just, maybe a bit of a Del Sol. Yeah, 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 Is that yeah. wrong? Is it wrong yeah. going back to the old school? No, 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 We don't need to go if you don't want As long as it's vinyl shit. <laughs> it is indeed. <laughs> Slam it on. I never went. There we go. Two pack, California Love. Yeah. And that's the big tune that uh, Ricky will be coming out to when he has his celebrity boxing yeah. match. We're yeah. all looking forward to that yeah. week. Yeah. 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 Competition time, Carl? Oh, Carl's looking forward to this. He's just getting all stressed about his half hour. Like it, like Pete. Oh, go on. Go no, on, it's sorry. just, uh, we should have done this a lot earlier. Cause Why? I just keep him, it keeps him locked in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Uh, if you haven't heard the game before, I'll give you some initials, bit of a cryptic clue. And those initials and the cryptic clue makes up some band. Not, might not be an XFM band, but it's a band or a pop group or an artist or something. Yeah. Uh, it's on What's email. the feature called though? What's the feature called? Rockbusters. Rockbusters. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you want to, uh, will we do this on email? I think we ought to because you don't like taking calls from the public, do you? Well, he can't work the machine. No, <laughs> that's absolutely yeah. right. It's yeah. not that, it's just that then ev it's pretty fair for everyone. Anyone who's like got a computer, you mean? So it's open to anyone who's got, you know, a computer or a laptop at their disposal at this precise <laughs> moment. Anyway, um, there's some oh. cracking prizes, Rick, you'll be pleased to know, that oh, see, once again, uh, Carl has, uh, managed to collect together an arbitrary assortment of, uh, looking giveaway around, stuff. looking around the office. I, I mean, where did you get these from? Did you just n did you- w I mean, seriously, where did you get them from? Because it's right, such what, an arbitrary what, collection. What have we got there? I don't know what kind of a person would want these items. Right. <laughs> <Go> <laughs> it's on. such an arbitrary selection, I don't know what kind of a person you'd be. Read them out, what have we got? Well, uh, there's a, a another, uh, XFM compilation, which obviously you've obviously nicked from somewhere in the office. Yeah, it's Fair a good, enough. good compilation, remix uh, to the album. an album here, which is a promo album with two pigs on the front, I think it's the Smashing Punk Friends Live. Yeah. <laughs> I can't be yeah, certain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is the album, didn't we give this one away last week? This well, is yeah. just a, an arbitrary compilation album, again, one of those kind of, Is uh, that the actual one you didn't send, Carl? No, no. Oh, I've got, got, got a couple I've of got them. I've got a job them. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, Honest. surprise, The Office oh. on DVD, right. um, which is ludicrous. <laughs> oh, I've then, seen it from here. What film? If it, like, listen, listen, uh, dear, dear XFM listener, it's half two. You know, it's just, uh, a bit windy out. You're probably gonna stay in this evening. Maybe go a bit of shopping. You, you got, and then uh, in a stands evening. Oh, what film would you really want? To, no, no, I mean, seriously, think if you could see one film, right? What would you want to DVD, see? DVD, one DVD, DVD, releases. One of, yeah, yeah, it's great. It's, put them out of their misery. See, they'll be watching this tonight if they're a lucky winner. It's the movie Stigmata. <laughs> Stigmata with <laughs> Patricia Arquette and Gabriel Byrne. <laughs> um, oh, so look forward to that. That's great. That's the big one. That is brilliant. Oh, for. look at Carl's face. He's actually offended because he puts. He's the only one that puts any work into this show, and he's got s competitions. He's got educating Ricky, Rockbuster. He's got, got the song with a story. He's got a song with a story to come that he's like <sighs> trapping. Oh, gone through him. I it's know. unbelievable. Oh. Yeah. yeah, so you're playing for, uh, that for collection of arbitrary goodies, plus the big prize this week, Stigmata, featuring Gabriel Byrne. 
Oh, oh dear. Uh, that Got woman who I think, okay. um, starts bleeding from the hands. It's a horror okay. film, I think. You'll have to be, uh, 18 or over I'll to see, take part. I've seen it. It's not, it's not terrible. Sure. It's all, all right, but Is it better than, uh, Children of the Corn? <laughs> which was a big giveaway <laughs> last week. I haven't seen Children of the Corn. Go on, yeah. then. Right, so, uh, so Next week, Teen Wolf 2. <laughs> Go on. Here's, Go on. Here's the, uh, And Tony Banks's own <laughs> solo <laughs> <Yeah>. album, Bank <laughs> Statement. <laughs> Tony Banks, remember, is the, uh, uh musician uh, from the Much Love Genesis. But we've got that album to give away. All right, then. So, uh, right. To so win those exclusive prizes. Yeah, yeah, Go on. Yeah, you've got to email in ricky.gvase at xfm.co.uk. I saw a sellotape dispenser out in the, uh, uh, There's a pair of gloves. That I don't know who's out, but they're out there and they've been there for a week, so. A pair of well. gloves, a sellotape dispenser, uh, and Tony Banks' solo <laughs> album, <laughs> Bank <laughs> Statement. Yep. Okay, go on. Right, first one. Yeah. Initials JT. Initials right. JT? What's the Inis cryptic clue? Cryptic clue. At the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Hold on. Yeah? JT, and what's the clue again? At the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Full of logs? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, who could it be? JT, at the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Yeah, go on, right, next second one. one. There's three of them you gotta get. Letter is W. Yeah. Uh, the clue, that lad's got bad asthma. That lad has got I've bad asthma. I've got that asthma. one already. I've got that yeah. one already. W. Yeah. yeah. And okay. finally, the last one mm. is the letter C. Yeah. And, uh, the cryptic clue is um, Carl is one of these. <laughs> um, Mousetrap is that musical, isn't it? This isn't the clue, by the way. It is called Mousetrap, isn't it? There's not the, a musical. It's not a musical, but it's a, it's a, a right, whodunit right, sort of yeah, thing, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Um, <laughs> right, here's a clue. <laughs> I saw that, uh, <laughs> Imagine yeah. that. Imagine that on the real block. <laughs> yeah, mate. Bob Owen is going, oh, can we stop a minute? Oi, um, you with the nine teddy bears there. <laughs> Mouse up, that's a show, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> I think so, Bob, yeah. Right, okay, here we go. Right. Yeah, carry so, on. So, so the camera's back on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the letter is C, and yeah. the cryptic clue. Uh, I saw that mouse trap the other night, uh, but the heating in the, in the theatre was what? knackered. What? The heating, the heating in the theatre was knackered, right? Ruined it. Well, we've got that one already as well. Yeah. I mean, these are, th th are the first ones are hard, but the so, first two so are So, just a quick reminder, JT was the first one. At the moment, I'm in a river full, uh, full of logs. Full of logs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, second one, W, that lad's got bad asthma. Uh-huh. Yeah. And the last one, l uh, C, I saw that mouse trap the other night, but the, uh, the heating in the theatre was knackered. Sure. And, uh, ruined the whole thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, uh, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk is the email address. You can win- I'm confused. Uh, various treats, logs, including I'm in a stigmata. I'm in a Gabriel river Burton. full of logs. Yeah. I'm in a river full of logs. Well, we'll do it in about 20 minutes. Yeah, you've got to stay tuned right. for the answers. It's not, it's not the quickest, so don't go rushing and sort of messing it up. Think about it. And it's random email anyway, so uh -huh. there's no rush, all right? And uh, if you want to email, um, you're welcome to say, please do not send me the prizes even if I win. <laughs> welcome to put that on there if you don't want that junk in your house. Right. The reason we're, you know, we usually sort of play a record out of an ad break, don't we? Yeah. Carl is so concerned with his little competition, he hasn't got a record ready. Sure. Got one, got one, got one, got one. Okay. Sorry, Yeah. Do you want to do a quick reclap, a re quick recap? Yeah, oh, yeah, I can't yeah, bother yeah. even to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't, I'm not interested. I'm just not interested. Yeah, go on, Recap, quick. Still send your emails in. Uh, JT, it's some initials of a band, just in case you didn't hear it last week. If I said AK and an exploding pet, that would be Atomic Kitten. Yeah. Right? They so, know what a clue is. So, JT, at the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Yeah. W, that lad's got bad asthma. And C, uh, I saw that mouse trap the other night. The heating wasn't working, it ruined the night. And, uh, yeah. yeah that's it. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Yeah. Some stuff. Stigmata. <laughs> <laughs> With Gabriel Bird. <laughs> Richard Ashcroft. Check the meaning. Oh, I love that. That's brilliant. On XFM 104.9. And Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkerton, who's uh, our producer. A, a proper producer now. Producer. No, but he's getting. It, but it's, it's more like it now, isn't it? Before he was someone who pressed the buttons. Then he was someone who pressed the buttons who we just made talk like mm. a. Uh, performing monkey. I hear and he's going to be lured away by the Today program on uh, Radio Four because <laughs> <laughs> they've, um, they, they've lost their news editor. I think. Educating <laughs> Ricky, quite topical. Absolutely, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Is well, it? so when you say topical, you this topical? this is uh, wh topical. Well, this happened ages ago. <laughs> yeah. Y your words, not mine. Have they got a, a Ricky who works there? We can look into that. Um, so, so this Carl's is a big set of competition. They've got to be given away. They've got to be given away. This um, is Rockbuster. We've uh, got, uh, obviously the big prize, Stigmata, this week. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna give the prize to, uh, 
to Ira, I think it's Ira or Ira, but she, she or he, uh, emailed in, uh, the right answers and then said, if you could enclose the receipt for Stigmata, that would be much appreciated. <laughs> 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 uh, but I'm amazed by the number of responses we've had. And someone wants a copy of Tony Banks' uh, yeah, solo yeah. album, which I was mucking around, so we'd be better buy that in the week to give it away, because I think that'd be an amazing prize to give away. If you well, just give the clues Do again. the clues and then just give the answer. Come on. What the answers are. Right, well, the one that everyone was struggling with was the first one. So yeah. I'll save that, so we'll go to the second one. W. Yeah. That lad's got bad asthma. Yeah, we know that. What that was it? Weezer. Yeah. yeah. Good work, well done. Uh, the last one, uh, C, the clue was, uh, I saw that mouse trap the other day, uh, the heating was knackered in the restaurant. Yeah. In the restaurant? In the, the theatre. Yeah. And uh, it ruined the night. Yeah. yeah. So it was a cold play, wasn't it? Yeah, that's a cold yeah. play. Yeah. And, uh, JT, uh, at the moment, I mean- No, I can't river. think of this one. At the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Well, I have to say there were some wrong answers. I, what was it again? It was Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake. Uh, we had some wrong answers that included Jethro Tull and James Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that relates to it. I'm annoyed at Lake yeah. when he clearly said river. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's the first thing that cropped up. Not I'm in some water full of logs. At the moment, uh, yeah, I'm in some water full of logs. But he actually had to say river, <laughs> so not Lake. That annoys me. I mean, I didn't get it, fair enough. I should have worked it out. I should have tried to think like you. A lot of people obviously think like you, which is, right. which I'm, you know, worried about. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> James Taylor is great. <laughs> JT, just someone, James Taylor. Just yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah, James so, Taylor works. Have we got a winner? Stevie's I, just gonna I, randomly I did, pick I, one. I did have a winner. I've just, um, I've just lost them. Oh. Needless to say, that lucky person. Won't be watching Stigmata tonight. Uh, just randomly get it's, it's just a random. draw, by the way. It's not the it's first one. Okay, I'll just, I'll I, just. I said to Carl in the break, I said, is the first one in? He went, no. I don't want a competition that relies on speed because I don't want to be rushed. <laughs> okay, uh. So randomly click on just, someone. I'm just going to randomly click on one. Go on. Uh. They've not, they've not put an address. Well, what oh. we can do, we can email back and say, send us your address. Well, of course you can. I think if they haven't put an address. Well, no, that's okay, weird. Hang on. All right, all right. Yeah. Chris Beaumont. Yeah, uh, lucky Chris Beaumont as Chris one. Beaumont will be watching Stigmata tonight <laughs> with a club of Hagen dar if I'm not too much mistaken. <laughs> so, so <laughs> he'll be loving it. Well done to Chris. Need his yeah. address. Right, right then. That's the end of that competition. Right. Can we play a record or something? Well, Carl's been on holiday again, hasn't he? Oh yeah, that's right, yeah, cos Carl, you, you don't do anything. And you have weekends off, you take at least five or six weeks holiday a year, even though you haven't got a job now, you're meant to be doing this, and yet you still so go on holiday. So your whole life's a holiday, basically. Yeah, why do you need a holiday to, you, you, you potter around, you, it, you, it, your, big, your big day last week was going to the cobblers, so why do you need a break so much this oh, week? It's, it's just that. Uh, you know, it's it's good for your brain and that, isn't it? It's, it's it opens well, it up a bit. You are not evidence for that. Where did you go? Grand Canary. For a week? Yeah. Just sitting around? Um, well, there isn't much else to do at Grand Canary. I mean, I don't want to go slagging a place off because every time I seem to talk about somewhere, get into trouble for it. Right. But it's just a, like a big rock. It's Brilliant. just vol volcanic, isn't it? It's and just you must have looked like a, a little barnacle on that. Have you been there before? Um, been, been near it before to another rock, which was just, well, it was what, the same sort of thing. Well, why did you go back? Because you think, well, they can't have loads of these islands that are the same, like, just a big rock with hotels on, they can't get away with it. So you <laughs> think, they well, the next they are one... Away with it. But why, why do you keep going to these places that are rocks? Why don't you investigate first? Ask your travel agent, is this a giant rock? Because, because that's what you do, innit? You go and find out yourself. I mean, <laughs> when, when Armstrong went to the moon, what was he expecting up there? That's a fact, that it's a big rock, and he still went all that way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't so, know what so, that point was. No, so what, so what I'm saying is, though... What do you make of this place? you enjoy it, Grand Canary? It was I just a big rock, but did you... you I bet you... the moon was better. Really? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? It was just, uh, well, um, it was big hotel, like, big, massive places where there's loads of people, and, you know, you go for your dinner. That describes a hotel. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Me. You've nailed that. But I've the... been to a few, that sounds like it. No, but... <laughs> <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean, though? There's the sort, there's the nice small ones where mm. it's just enough people, but this is like mental, and and it was all, it was it was full of old people, really. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's probably why it's called Grand Canaria, right? Because it's just Grand old people. Everywhere. Yeah, right. But what I thought I'd start doing is uh, start a diary. Okay, why? Just because I, I sort of had a bit of time on my hands and that. Just thought. Write it down, write, write stuff down. And like. do you hope that this one day will become one of the great literary documents like Samuel Pepys' diary? Um, I haven't heard of that, is it any good? 
You've never heard of Samuel Pepys' diary? No, the, the, the most the, famous diary, uh, other than probably Anne Frank's. I've heard of Anne Frank's and that, and I thought if she's sat in a, you know, a loft, knocking stuff up, not much going on in her life at that point. Yet sure. she was still writing it down. Yeah. Whereas she's been to an area. Yeah. I thought so. There is stuff going on that I can chat about. Start a diary. Sure. You started a diary. Yeah. And what are you going to do? You did you did you keep it up every day? Yeah, just. Uh, oh, can I read it, please? Well, a diary is meant to be sort can, of... Uh, please, can I read some out on this podcast? I... Carl! Some of it, though, is only relevant to me. It's sort of oh, going... this is... Please, give me it. Oh, my God. I mean, this isn't... I haven't just... Look how big it is! <laughs> <laughs> it's oh one of those desk diaries. It's huge. It's about a foot long. And it's... Ma oh, that is amazing. Imagine if Anne Franks had been like that. As she got out... <laughs> Right. Uh, everyone would have heard it clank down on the desk. Yeah, but my writing's quite big, isn't it? Oh, look! Give us oh, that. Do you, know, that. do you know about Join That Writing? Have you this heard about that? There's no point. Amazing. Sometimes you can't read it, can you? So it's right, best okay. to... Right, okay. Oh, look at oh, look. The, oh, my God. It starts on the first day. This is, this is wonderful. Going on holiday to Gran Canaria today, woke up to the news that Tony Banks had died. There was a piece of, on the news about how everyone was shocked. Got me thinking about an invention that would be good. Right, a, a watch that counted down your life. If it says you've got three days left, <laughs> go to the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> Told Susanna about invention. She said she wouldn't buy one, but she said that about the iPod. How uh, and how would this device work? This watch. I mean, how would you uh, how would you know when you were about to die? Have you, is that a concern? Again, not for you to worry about, presumably the boffins and stuff. No, all I was thinking is that Tony Banks fella, you know, he died and everyone was shocked about it. But if you had like a little watch on. But how did it, you can't just say, wouldn't it be good? How, how would this work? Yeah, um, I imagine you in the patent office going, got an idea. They go, oh, certainly, yeah, Mr. Bogdan, what's your idea? Watch the counting down your life. Oh, how does that work? What? Just, just wear well, it, just pop it on your wrist. No, 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 what do you mean, just pop it on your wrist? How does it work? Just pop it on your wrist. Brilliant. You're an idiot. Well, it's interesting that he goes on. The flight to Gran Canaria was a bit bumpy. I thought about the clock that counts down your life again, and I wondered if it would know if you were going to die in a disaster. <laughs> no, <laughs> he's querying his own, his own design. He's wondering yeah. if it would know. He's invented this. He's and invented, <laughs> now he's not even sure. Uh, a fella on the plane was reading Koi Mag. It was a fishing magazine. I glanced over and noticed he was reading the Pond of the Month article. Don't think they could make it into a weekly magazine. Well, to be fair to you, I because re I remember seeing a guy on the train once reading Carp Monthly, yeah. a magazine do dedicated entirely to carp, and it had it had Carp of the Month, and I just thought, you know, once you're like three months in, the editor must be stressing. Have we got any more carp? We got a carp that's actually done anything? That's I reckon if they used the same one twice, there wouldn't be many complaints. No one would be noticing. No, that, well, that's the carp they used two years ago. There was a really fat bloke on the plane. He yeah. was playing on his PSP while I waited to go to the toilet. I looked at what game he was playing. It was darts. He's that fat and lazy, you can't even face playing a more active game on a games console. <laughs> Me and Suzanne got off the coach along with a couple of old people. One of them was in a wheelchair. I don't think it was wise of them to come to a volcanic island with a wheelchair. <laughs> Everywhere is pretty rough, paving and slopey. Guess I'll keep an eye on it as the weeks go on. <laughs> day two in Gran Canaria. Brilliant, we're only at day two. The hotel's a bit odd. I've never seen as many cross-eyed people in one location. <laughs> that's, oh, enough, isn't it? that's amazing. Well, you may right. well let me read on a bit more. But this is amazing. Well, look, come back. This to is a brilliant now. diary. This might be the best diary ever written. Oh. While sat listening to the Kinks on my iPod, I wondered if everybody thinks in their accent. I know I do. What's what's this? What are you talking about? Just just that. Uh. You know, when, I, when I've been sat there lying on the lounger, right, and I was thinking about stuff... <laughs> How do you it? know you think in your accent? Tell me a typical thought. Because, because what I mean is, say, say if I was like, if I saw something, right, do you know how I say, like, oh, that's a bit weird, isn't it? That, <laughs> no, but that was I don't have said. to... But in, I, when you think, I don't think the sentence is like I'm saying it. It's just a thought, the thought appears, it's conceptual and it's already there. It's not like, um, I go, Rick, mm. Just uh, looking at that fellow over there, were you? Yeah, I was. Yeah, um, I was thinking it looks a bit weird. Oh, so was I. I don't. I don't think out whole sentences. Whereas you have Carl. Carl. Li Carl. Stop listening to the kinks for a minute. Look over there. More. More cross-eyed people. <laughs> no, well that's yeah. That's Is that how your of, mind works? In a way, yeah. 
And Brilliant. that's when, because, because I thought... <laughs> it explains a lot. <laughs> it's great that he has to think about the whole sentences. Because I thought, that's weird, isn't it? Right, I didn't think, that's weird, isn't it? And I thought, <laughs> I actually think in my accent. And then I thought, does Stephen Hawking, does he, when he's doing his maths and that, hmm. is he, I don't know where he's from, so I don't know what his accent would be like. I think he's from uh, Kent or Cambridge or Oxford. Right. Or so, so you think he might think in his in, in his, his voice in that yeah. in that voice in his computerized voice. Just wondered. Had lunch inside today due to shite weather. Sat next to an old fella. Old men's ears and noses carry on growing as they get older. Suzanne noticed his fingers were fat too. Maybe they continue to grow. Suzanne didn't laugh when I said her arse had the same problem. <laughs> Day three, cloudy start to the day. Had pie and chips in a cafe. Had a bit of an argument with Suzanne because I thought it was daft that we were paying for food when we were on an all-inclusive holiday. Changed my mind when I saw the... They sold pie, though. <laughs> <laughs> the cafe was called Tattoos. The fellow who owned it didn't have any tattoos. But we never saw his wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Had a drink in a bar. Everyone sat and watched one of the local cats lick its bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's the greatest holiday in the world! I <laughs> uh, entertainment in that town. Went back to the hotel and had a sleep before tea. I love the fact you're like, you're moaning about old people, but you're just as bad. <laughs> He's done nothing so far. <laughs> He's done nothing. He's got a big hip. <laughs> Woke up to news about ducks being badly treated. There was a really ugly one with bent legs. I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! Why does he write this down? Oh, God. Oh. There is a fat bloke from Bolton who is in the pool as I write this. He's got a big tattoo on his back, but I can't work out what it is. Dot, dot, dot. He just got out of the pool and burped. He just felt like you had to keep us abreast of that. Everything's in the diary. I just seen it get to the point where you're going, breathed in, <laughs> yeah, breathed out again. There was a big fat fella in the sea who kept his t-shirt on. If you're big and fat, is there more chance of you getting burnt because there's more of you on show? I asked Suzanne and she said she didn't know in that sort of not listening kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to hang about to see if the fat bloke was going to get in the kayak, <laughs> but Suzanne, <laughs> Suzanne said we had a head back. <laughs> Slowing way in to see if he's gonna <laughs> capsize. <laughs> we go home today, so we got up early to get the last bit of cloud. <laughs> no, it's, it's just that it wasn't. Uh, it, it's, it's not that sunny all the time. I mean, I, I was sat in in weather that if it was like that air, there's no way I'd be sat in the garden. <laughs> yeah. But because you're on holiday, it's like, well, we got to sit in it. Put your coat on. So, are you going to continue to write this diary? Every yeah, single day. It's amazing. Keep this diary up. It's no, amazing. I, I, no, I will. I will keep it up because what I find as well is, I think earlier on before I went away, I think I did learn something, and because I wrote it down, I, I remembered it a bit um, better. So what was that? I just was thinking then. I forgot it now, but <laughs> <laughs> but I remembered looking back at it and not having to read it all because I remembered the end of it before I read it. If you know what I mean. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh. When you're a kid, like, any American you ever meet is the coolest thing. It yeah. doesn't matter if he's a huge, fat bloke yeah. wearing Bermuda shorts and a camera on his neck, it's cool, because they yeah. speak with American accent. Well, that is cool. And, that's, and they say... Being a huge, fat bloke in Bermuda shorts is cool. Sure. Yeah. 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 That's you're... what you keep telling yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm growing into that look, says Rick. <laughs> yeah. The Canadian tourist look. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but no, so anything, you know, sidewalk. Yeah. I mean, if I could say, like, when I was sort of 14, if I could have said sidewalk, fender, you know, yeah. I always wanted to go into a sandwich shop and just order something on rye. I want to be one, I want to be one of those 80-year-old, um, sort of Yiddish blokes, those old, you know, sort of like old vaudeville Jewish guys, um, that, you know, they sit in diners and talk, you know, like, like, like Walter Matow talks. Right, yeah, 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 I want to, I want to grow into that, a long coat, and I'll go, ish. Yeah. Or you they. Yeah, maybe I'll start. Yeah. Well, Convert to Judaism initially. Yeah. Be your first port call, and then just tour the vaudevillian, you know, circuit. Yeah. In the cat skills. Or the mic, some kind of schmuck. Yeah. Something like that. What do you, uh, Carl, are you, would you like to be American? No, not at all. Really? Got me nerves. When I was in, um. <laughs> Got me nerves! When the American. whole nation there reduced. <laughs> when I was in Barbados <laughs> at Christmas. Oh, and then go. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, there's loads of them there, because that, that's... Was that when you were doing a bit of extra sort of waiting? <laughs> that, you, would, you, would, you were sort of clean, your girlfriend was cleaning rooms, wasn't went she? There, went there for Christmas, and um, um, there's loads of them there, because that, that's like really close to America. That's like <laughs> uh, Blackpool is to Manchester type. It's thing, exactly so. like that. Yeah. So it's, it's I think that, that's the analogy a lot of Americans use. So, but I think they call it the tropical Blackpool. <laughs> <laughs> but, they were, yeah. but they were going on. That's only all the brochures, I'm sure. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And serious now, but yeah, we're going serious. on about the uh, September 11th thing. Yeah. But they call it the, um, of course, uh, this is American. Of course, um, <laughs> brilliant. The uh, the 9/11. The 9/11. That's what they call really? it. Really? Oh, that's awful. That is so. It's like people who say 24/7. Yeah. Well, I'm Americans working my say ass that. Off 24/7. Well, Americans that say yeah. that. Well, they're allowed though. Oh, Americans are. It's, yeah. It's, I'm talking about an English person who might say it. Yeah. <laughs> Fool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's terrible. Yeah. Do that yeah. American accent again? Yeah, of course. Uh, the uh, <laughs> the nine eleven. Where, yeah. where are you from? <laughs> what? What? Uh, can we find from America? Is that? <laughs> that's, that's how they sounded in Barbados. Sure, 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 mm -hmm. sure. But <laughs> Carl, do any other impression? But Carl doesn't. I, I very much doubt that Carl likes newfangled countries like America. Yeah. He doesn't like London. No, true. So he's he's not going <laughs> to like to America. Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Went to Florida. No, they got me again. Got any news? Um, yeah. <laughs> went went for some food. Yeah. Um, and it was the last few days. I didn't take much money with me, and we were in Florida, and we were hungry, and we <laughs> went for some steak, <laughs> and we had our dinner and that, and it's I think it's their equivalent to the Angus Steakhouse. Yeah. Right. And um, sat down, had, had the steak, and that's huge, big portions. But anyway, we didn't have much money left, and we had like another two days left, so we didn't leave. We didn't have much money for a tip, do you know over there they expect it? Yeah, a big tip, yeah. So, um, we left what we could, and I don't know what it was, it might have only been the equivalent to 60 pence. Yeah. But, he didn't have to do that much, we didn't have loads of courses because we didn't have much money, so he brought us like the main course, and I don't know, a sure, couple, sure, couple sure, of sure, Diet sure. Cokes. And, um, anyway, left them the, the, the 60p. Yeah. On the way out, and it comes running over, excuse me sir, you can have this back. Because it wasn't enough. I mean... Yeah. It's outrageous. What did you say? I said, alright then. <laughs> yeah, I thought, well, I needed it. I mean, I, I thought yeah. it was nice to leave them something, but obviously it wasn't enough, so it got us a couple of more. Is it good coats. fun with you on holiday? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you enjoy yourself? Yeah. Do people go with you on holiday? I get bored after about four days. You surprise me. <laughs> what, what do you expect out of a holiday, Carl? What do you, what do you, what do you go sort for? Of soak up some of the culture. Yeah. <laughs> you liar. <laughs> what, what did you learn about Barbados <laughs> while you were there? A um, lot of crabs on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I just imagined him sitting there with his knotted oh, hanky really on his head. I like that. Not bad. Bit of Gary Newman there. That's uh, Richard X and Sugar Babes. Our Freaks Electric. Is that one of those um, things where they've taken one song and they've laid it over the top of the other? Yeah. Brilliant. It's good, no? No, it's good. Like it's good. good. Yeah, it's good. Uh, yeah, well, we're, we're nearly done, aren't we? We are almost finished. Uh, which is a couple shame. of, um, great tracks. With a few laughs. Maybe we've had a few laughs, haven't yeah, we? Exactly. I've perked up. Yeah, you have, you have. Yeah, you've no, lost it a bit, though. You feel a bit, it sounds, it sounds like you're a bit down again. Well, it's, uh, that's just two hours work okay. in one long sure. stretch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I reckon we could do a three hour show now. No, 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 no. No? No, 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 no. no, no, no. Skin of the teeth, sort of just. Yeah, we yeah. barely got away with this. Really? This is beginning to fall apart now. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. But yeah, we've had a good time. We've had a few laughs, as I say. Um, I just think a car on the beach. He said he started winding the crabs up because he got bored. Mm. He started throwing sand at them. It's like a child's experiment. When you were in California, you weren't aggravi aggravating butterflies, were you? Because, <laughs> oh, that's a misdemeanor. Scary, though. The weather's really freaky. Where? In, uh, California. Is it? Yeah. In the day, it's dead nice. Come six o'clock, it goes black. And then right. the rain comes down. It's freaky. Uh, is that every single day, Carl, or was that just the week you were there? Uh, every day, I was there for about a week, it happened every day. Uh, so as far as you're concerned, that happens all, all year <laughs> yeah, round? Yeah, good thing. So what you're saying is if people are booking a holiday, they should be conscious of this, <laughs> yeah. it will always happen. <laughs> California tour. Oh, that's well, a fact. I think it does, I think it does. But, but, okay. but why did you start throwing sand at crabs, by the way? Just because, um, you get bored on the beach, you sat there, you, you look around, yeah. um, and then I saw these crabs, and I was watching the way they move around. And yeah, what they funny, do, isn't it? Sort of to that annoy you the way they moved. No, I mean <laughs> it works for them. <laughs> <laughs> Good of you. But uh, 
<laughs> it was just uh, what I was weighing up is they're yeah. quite close to the sea, so sure. I was watching the sea come. They up. like it close to the sea, don't they? Yeah, yeah, but they don't like it too close. No. So like the sea was coming close to them, they'd run towards me. Yeah. So as the sea came in to, to them, I was chucking sand the other way, and it was like, ooh. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know where to go. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. How long did that keep you occupied for? <laughs> the last three days, was that? <laughs> Have you ever seen, uh, I don't know if I've described this before, do you remember a classic Paul Daniels episode where uh, Paul is having tea with some baboons, I think, chips, yeah. full circle, and um, yeah. he's got a little box, and inside the box is a mirror, and he gives it to the chimp, and it looks in the box, and it's confused by its own reflection, it can't figure it out, so it's looking behind the box trying to figure out, is there another monkey behind it? Yeah. yeah. It goes on like that, it's dazed and confused, it was there for, for weeks, just staring into it. I imagine you're a bit like that on the beach. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I think that's my analogy. I, <laughs> yeah. Paul Daniels chimps. <laughs> yeah. I kept a crab once for a week. When we went to Bognor, um, it was me and my mum and my nan in an Oh, up party time. <laughs> 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 oh, man alive. You, look, you haven't, the, you the, haven't the lived. Never you haven't lived until you've woken up to the sound at three o'clock in the morning of your nan um, having a wee in a tin bucket and echoing round a caravan. Man alive. Yeah. I was about nine. You'd brought a chick back. <laughs> I was about nine, right? And I just kept a crab in a first half. In bundle. the bucket? In a... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it came from. Uh, no, I found it on the beach and I brought it back and I kept it in a little bowl in the sink. And then the last day, it started to smell of it. And then the last day, my mum said, go and put it back. And I went and put it back. <laughs> So I had a pet crab for a week. And did it did it die? What happened to no, it? No, no, it was it just got bored. Sure. It just it didn't do a lot. Did it start throwing sand at you? <laughs> 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 oh. oh Listen, God. I think we better play some music because we've got yeah. a few so songs to squeeze in. Uh, I just wanted to play a track. Um I was watching MTV the other day and sure. I was a bit confused. Yeah, so was I I like that. Because um I saw a video for the Electric Soft Parade's Silent to the Dark. Yeah. But it was called Silent to the Dark Two. But it was the same song. It sounds like they've redone it. The video is different to the old video. I was very confused. Hopefully someone will phone in and solve it for me. Anyway, this is the original Silent to the Dark. Still a good track. Let's hear it, Carl. Silent to the Dark, the debut single by the Electric Soft Parade. I like that. Yeah. Very good. Very good choice there. Apparently discovered by XFM. Is that right, Carl? Yeah, sent a tape into Claire Sturgis. You see? Big time now. What Lovely. did she do with it? And sold it? <laughs> yeah. Got a little five pound starter bag of skag. Exactly. Oh, and the rest you. is history. Well, I've enjoyed myself. I have. But can I just say, we don't just like, you know, muck around and do stupid things and play great music. <laughs> We're also informative. And we I'm going to leave London with this tip that Carl, for no reason, just told me. Um, do you want to do it, Carl, or shall I tell him what you just said? Rick, we haven't got much time. You better explain yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Uh, if you got, he said, you've been on the Millennium Wheel. I went, no. He went, well, if you do, here's a tip. Go when there's lots of disabled people on there. And I, I was up for it. I went, why? He went, you get more for your money, because I have to keep stopping and letting them off. <laughs> you get an extra six minutes. <laughs> All right. Good, solid advice if you're so maybe you can get there today or tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks. Song for the ladies, Rick. I'll leave you with Lamb Chop. A lot of people aren't a fan of Lamb Chop for some reason. They don't like the way he sings, but this is a beautiful song. That's the reason. Up with people. See ya. Bye. Track one, side one, the first Talking Heads album, uh, Uh Oh Love Comes to Town. On XFM 104.9. Yeah. Well, I think it's Rockbuster's result, isn't Ooh. it? Okay. Alright. Um. <laughs> Brilliant. Do you want the prizes, by the way? Not really. Not bothered? No. Right, some videos and DVDs yeah, and that, yeah, some yeah. good stuff. VHS there. hype. Mm -hmm. Couple. 4.99. Is that one TV about weather? titles. What? There's the weather one. That's gonna be on telly. Donald McIntyre. Oh, yeah. That's, that's in there, if you want that. Yeah. Um. He reckons Donald McIntyre ripped him off, because he did a thing about how much it costs to, to have a chimp, cheap as chimps. What was the only thing you think someone ripped you off? Uh, Rockbusters. Ken, Some... Ken Bruce on Radio 2 is doing Songs of Phrase. He was doing that over Christmas. Was I said one week off, he's in there. <laughs> and when he heard that Donald McIntyre was doing a programme about wind, he thought he was moving on Auntie, Auntie Nora. <laughs> right. Snow Patrol. And run oh. on XFM 104.9. Yeah, not bad at all, not bad at all. So everyone had a good Christmas though, yeah? Really, Carl, even though it was like a little bit lands it was a nice Christmas. Yeah. Did what, you... what was the book you read, by the way? Someone just uh, emailed and wanted to know. What was the book it you was, read? It was the governor. The governor? Yeah. Right, okay. Did you buy Susanna a gift in the end? Which she, you surprised yeah, her with yeah, on Christmas Yeah, I did, day? yeah. After that, 
show that we did before Christmas. Yeah. I was walking home thinking, oh, might as well treat her then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> went and got her a, a necklace. Nice. Actually, uh, she said she wanted a necklace, but I didn't know which one, but went and got one. Yeah. And she was happy with that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> that shut her up. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And did, did she, she get, did you, she get you a gift back? She did get me something, yeah. See, I knew, we knew she would. she would. Yeah, but the thing is, right, she got me a little Game Boy Advance to take on holiday, because she knows I get bored. Love, right? So that, that was good, but I, I was like, like, hang on a minute, I know how much I spent. Oh, f- And I know how much these are, right? But I was clever, though. When I got to the airport, I bought her to get me an extra, sort of, get her to bought me an extra game, game. for it. Yeah. Got the value. Of course. Are you, would, when you were growing up, did you wait to ask your mum for sweets right at the counter so the woman sort of would sort of embarrass her into getting you it? Uh, what, you mean just slip it in the basket? Well, no, just go, just wait, wait till there's some, uh, you know, a stranger watching before you ask for sweets. Mum, can I have a Kinder Egg? Did you see it in front of Suzanne when it got to the... Suzanne, can you get me something else? Because remember I bought, spent more on that necklace than you did like Game Boy Advance. And the woman in Dixon's goes, oh, you better get him something else. And she goes, oh, bloody hell, all right then. <laughs> nah. She, she did well, though. <laughs> you know I mean? She's done well to keep you, hasn't she? Because well. you're such a find. You're quite a catch. Yeah, you're, you're, she must wake yeah. up every morning and go, ooh, I am the luckiest girl in the world. Well, she told you that the other night. What? She said the other night how good it is living with me. <laughs> yeah! I what? said to Suzanne, it must be great, because I only see him two hours a week and I like to squeeze his little head. You can do that all day, every day. Does she ever squeeze your head? No. No? No. It's like that thing though, isn't it? It's like when you work in a chocolate factory. You get sick of it, don't you? If it's there all the time. <laughs> yeah, she must yeah. think, well, I could squeeze that head any time yeah. I wanted. It's not worth it. I just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What yeah. about your Christmas? My thing? dad, uh, I'm wondering if you're turning into my dad. Because, uh, he, um, he bought my mum a bracelet. He won't mind me talking about this because he said you'll probably talk about this on the radio and you're right, Dad. I am talking about it. He bought my, my mum a, uh, little gold bracelet. Lovely, lovely gift. You know, it was a lovely thing. And I, she opened it, she loved it. And everyone thought, what a great gift. Lovely gift. He wouldn't stop talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't stop talking about the gift he bought. He kept on grabbing my mum's arm and showing it to people. Look at that. Look at the gleam on that. <laughs> See, see, look at the shine on that, look at the gleam there. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> and he, do you know what he said? He went, he said the great thing about that's pure gold. He went, it's an investment. <laughs> that's, that's an investment there. Eh? Oh, you know, it's always worth oh, something gold. I love that when people give you a gift and it goes, an investment. But, I love it. But what, not only is it, does it take away any of the romanticism of it, but it was the way he constantly was talking about how great a gift it was I'll that he'd what, I haven't, I haven't heard the word gleam for it's 30 funny. years. Look at the gleam on that. The gleam. Look at that, look at the sparkle on that. And look at that, and it looks like rope. That's what he kept saying, it looks like rope. <laughs> it's like gold rope. <laughs> and, uh, he just ca- and I know, I, I heard, he disappeared, we, we were opening gifts, he went disappear, I could hear him in the kitchen going, think about that, that's, that's pure gold, that, Elaine, that's pure gold. <laughs> might melt, I might melt that down. Yeah. John, next door, <laughs> next door neighbour, John, look at that, look at the shine on that. That's great, that's brilliant though. But it's just, it doesn't, it has sort of undermine the gift a bit if you keep on droning well, no, on about people, it. People, it if people enjoy giving, that's nice, isn't it, and you got to, you know, what did your mum say? She well, she can get a word in each way. That's a step up from a jar of coffee, though, isn't it? It is a step up, yeah. That's good. Oh. <laughs> what about yours? Uh, I didn't get my mum and dad anything this, this, this what? time. What? No, because I'm always treating them anyway. Whenever they, you know, if they need a few quid. Uh, yeah. if I can help well, you are do. the gift that keeps on giving, Carl. No, but don't just go giving anything just for the sake of it. You know what I mean? Wait for the t- time that's right sort of thing. Just because yeah. it's Christmas. Because... <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, I yeah, there, there's no better time, is there, really? I no, I just was gonna say my mum and dad didn't give me anything, but they did. What they get? But, uh, just some money. Mm. But, um, I'll, I'll get them something when the time's right, do you know what I mean? They always mm. need bits and pieces through the year, so... Yeah. I'll look after them. Sure. But, um, it was weird being away Has anyone got a caught on to the fact that, you know, they leave groceries in the, in the telephone box near your dad yet? No, that's still going on. Is it? Going on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic, isn't mm. it? That is just fantastic. So when he needs a loaf of bread, a pint of milk, just goes down. Does he ever, does he ever give that as gifts? <laughs> <laughs> oh, now listen, are we doing, uh, the film thing in a bit? Oh. Got more prizes. Yeah. Is it better than Rockbusters? Uh, it's alright. I did it in a bit of a rush because I was only in yesterday, wasn't I? Sure. Well, yeah, if, if you take like... three holidays a year, then so, there's not enough time for the work. Me and Steve like to, you know, put our priorities into, you know, 
doing the work, coming up with a good product, yeah. and getting a holiday when we can. You know, we haven't, I haven't, I haven't well, really. Well, we love holiday, Rick, you know. I love holiday. But yeah. I don't do the holidays for me, it's for Suzanne, isn't it? She's the one who likes going away. <laughs> with so you? I'll just go, yeah. So I'll go with her, do me bit. When you were playing Game Boy, right, and you looked in the hole, and, uh, you were reading your book, what is, what is she doing? She'll sort of, she'll make things seem more interesting to me. Do you know what I mean? So like, when we're at the hole, and the bus driver said, you've got an hour here. I thought, I said, why have you got an hour here? I go to a funeral with someone who I loved in the ground and don't spend an hour around it. <laughs> why do I wanna, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Why do I wanna spend an hour looking in this? Wasn't that terrible when, when you're you just shot up in all this magma? Yeah. That was terrible, wasn't it? That was the worst funeral you'd ever been to, wasn't it? But she'll, she'll say of... that would make funerals more interesting. If they just, it, it was a cremation and a burial. Yeah. You just put them in a volcano they and they go, two, three, here they go, wee! Up to heaven! I was having a conversation with my flatmate about songs that would be inappropriate to have at your wedding, at your funeral. And horny, just, surely, is one. It, yeah, was, was we it horny, really? Yeah, that was the first one we came up with. I'm horny, horny, uh, horny, uh, horny. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, that was God. the first one we came up with. Isn't Robbie Williams' Angels one of the, um, Yes. Biggest And ones. I think Wind Beneath Your Wings. Yeah. I think he's apparently quite popular. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, we'll play that on Artie Nora's. <laughs> yeah. Aren't you? <laughs> that of Boston? Yeah. A bit of who? Busted? Boston. Boston. More Boston. than a feeling. Right. Much more than a feeling. Boston. More than a feeling. XFM 104.9. Well, another big moment here. We've had Rockbusters. Now we're going to have uh, Carl's film quiz thing, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> film quiz thing. Um, I've done Planet of the Apes, right? Okay. Because one of the, uh, things we did in Lanzarote went on this tour with, uh, sort of three northern blokes and they didn't really know what they were talking about. Joking. What You're joking. Mean? What? <laughs> Northerners not knowing what they're talking about? You're having a laugh. No, they, they'd obviously sort of not had much luck here, right? And thought, let's go over to Lanzarote, buy some vans, right? Get people in it, we'll do a tour of the island mm. and whenever Someone asked the question like, what, when, what year did the volcano happen? They go, oh, we'll take you to the visitor centres, you can, you can read about it there. So they never actually answered anything, <coughs> right? So they were useless. But one of the things that they <coughs> told us was that Planet of the Apes was filmed in Lanzarote. Mm. Right. Okay. Right. That makes sense. A bit of it. Well, does it? Does well, it make sense? Well, what do you right, mean, well, maybe does it? it was, maybe it wasn't. Okay, <laughs> anyway. No! No, I mean, if they wanted to show sort of an hour and sort of barren, sort of post-apocalyptic sort of subject, choose where you went on holiday. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, but when, when we were there, well, he took us to this sort of beach and I said, is this, is this where they did it? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> I said, what, right, right there, yeah. And I watched it and I couldn't see where I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know that if you watch a film from 1968 and you've been no, in the same no, place, no, you're not going to feature, you're they're not going to see you in the back walking along the beach. It's a new one, new, new Planet of the Apes. Oh, the recent right? Planet of the Apes. Yeah, yeah, that's what they said, yeah. Right. Harry from Canterbury wants to know whether any of us have ever had any cruel nicknames. Um, he claims that he's uh, quite tall and rather hirsute, and he says he's often called Lurch or Wolfie. Um, he's always thought that Carl looks a bit like Mr. Potato Head. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, there's no potato that round, but um, I suppose you could fashion a potato to be that round. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we could, if anyone can uh, carve a potato into the roundest head ever, <laughs> yeah. pop a couple of eyes on it. Make um, it look as much like Carl as possible. Exactly. But yeah, did any nicknames? Did you ever have a nickname, uh, Rick? No, mine was boring. I didn't have any. It was just around the name, like Jerv or something like that. No, I didn't have nicknames. I always wanted a nickname. Um, I just thought it was quite cool for some reason. Particularly because gangsters always seem to have nicknames. Lefty. You know, fingers. Yeah. Lefty, yeah. Uh, Scarface. Yeah. And so I, I decided that I thought, because no one was giving me a nickname at school, it was kind of annoying, or certainly not to my face, yeah. that I decided to just come up with one. Yeah. And so I went, I remember I was at lunch once, and I just said to my mate Phil... How old were you? Uh, 12, 13. Brilliant. I just said to him, uh, Phil, um, don't know if you know, mate, but, um, people aren't calling me Steve anymore. Everyone's, everyone's calling me Spud now. Now, I don't know why I thought Spud, it's weird we should talk about Mr. Potato, I don't know why I thought Spud was a... Was a cool nickname. I just sort of, I think it's, it's a grown-up it, name, though, isn't it? And it's also because I think it sounded like uh, it, it was probably either something that you'd find in one of those kids' books, like the Famous Five or like the Bash Street Kids. They'd be Spud, and I always imagine with Spud, he's not the leader of the gang, but he's a reliable member. I think you know Spud <laughs> is the biggest lorry driver in one yeah. particular sort of uh, car park. Yeah, here comes Spud. 
Yeah. And he gets out, all right, boys. And he's big and massive, and it, a spud can eat two breakfasts. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But I just, in my mind, it was, yeah, that I would be one day part of a gang, and it's, I'm Pinky, this is Joe Joe, and the tall guy's spud. <laughs> and you know, not catch on, never did really it? caught. And he just went, oh, yeah, right. And no one started, and I was hoping he'd go, you know, everyone's calling him Steve Spud. Yeah, but of course. Hey, Spud, the first time I said Spud, you go, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'd be really proud, wouldn't you? No. <laughs> Did you have a nickname? Um, not, not really. I mean, there was a lot of people on the estate that I grew up on. You know, nicknames are, are big things on estates and that. Yeah. Um, a lot of my dad's mates, right? What, what their nicknames did was tell you about them. Do you know how I said about the Elephant Man's a good name? Yeah. Because, like, you know what you're going to get. If someone said, Elephant Man's popping around in a bit, it wouldn't <laughs> be a shock when he walked in. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so so it, was, it worked in that sort of, uh, sort of thing, you know. So there was, uh, there was John the Screw, right? John the Screw? Yeah. Well, he had sex a lot or he worked in a prison? No, he had a DIY you know, shop. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you had him, right? right? There, was, uh, <laughs> there was Fred the Veg. Yeah. Which is yeah. I assume it's because he was at the same IQ as you. Yeah. Or, or or he was in a coma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. There was there was uh there was my uncle, Tattoo Stan. Oh right. right. Yeah. He had he had like loads of tattoos that he'd just done himself. Oh my right. god. The the problem <laughs> was because he did his tattoos himself, <sighs> the ones on his left arm were really good. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was right handed. On his right arm, rubbish. Right? <laughs> um <laughs> So, so there was him. Ah, oh, great. And there was, um, Jimmy the Hat. Jimmy who, the Hat? Yeah. Did and he that, always wear a hat? No, he didn't. That, that's, that was the point there. That he, he never wore a hat. That's amazing. Brilliant. How can you pick up on someone never wearing a hat? How would you ever notice? I'll tell you what, I've noticed something about Jimmy. What? Go on. He doesn't wear a hat. <laughs> why, why was he not called Jimmy the Parrot? Because he, he never carries a parrot. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> that's just the way, I mean, that's how they work, innit? I mean, it, that, it, that here is... comes Jimmy Three Legs. Why'd you call him that? He hasn't got three legs. I didn't really have one apart from, um, like, I had a CB. You know, like, when you'd go on a CB radio and have a chat to people. Oh, like this that. was a craze in the, uh, was it late 70s, early 80s? Sort of early 80s. And, uh... It was just short band radio, wasn't it? Everyone had these little handsets and they'd speak to each other in the sort of local area. Yeah, it was mainly, I think it started off with like. Lorry drivers, isn't it? Yeah, truckers, yeah, because there was a, that thing from like about 1970. Convoy. It was Convoy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so I had one of them and the handle. I had, I had two handle different names. Handle is your nickname. Your yeah, name. there's loads of code, code stuff. Yeah. Um, I, had, I had a couple. I had, um, there was Pilkey 01, because right. like I said, there's a lot of Pilkingtons and that. In Manchester, so if someone wants Pilkey O2, it's open. Do you know what I mean? They can have it. And then, um. <laughs> that, is, that is people scrabbling for, oh, I want yeah, a Pilkey, yeah. Pilkey O1. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, because I did boxing and that. Well, you did it once. <laughs> yeah. I'd, uh, I'd box a boy. Because I thought that that's quite a good image as well. That's kind of like people going, oh, don't mess with him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If he asks what your handle is, tell him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's boxer boy and that. Yeah. So. Just had them too, and I used to just go on there and. Pointless. What is the point of this? Well, you just you just meet people, don't you? And you so don't meet people. You say, "What's your handle?" You're a box boy. What's yours? Uh, uh, rubber duck. All right. Cheers. No, it's but ridiculous. then but then you'll say like, then you go, "Oh, uh, what's your twenty? What's that mean? That's where are you? Well, why don't you say where are you? Because just in case there's someone who's listening in who who you know you hear about this all the time, don't you? People listening, jotting stuff down. Oh, right, so just in case someone in the world doesn't know what handle means, they're, they're out of the loop. They're yeah. out of the loop. It's hardly the, it's not a difficult code to crack, is it, yeah. if you're trying to track someone? It's hardly the head of the mafia talking to each other because the FBI are on the wire. It's ridiculous. Like, I go, oh, you keep saying that, wash your handle, and they come back with something else. I, don't, <laughs> I can't work out what's going on. No, it's like, it's like anything, isn't it? That's what codes, that's what, you know, that's what codes are all about, isn't it? You, Set them up and that. Go on and tell me, tell me the code then. Reveal it long last to the world what yeah. these codes are. Right, so yeah. what's your 20? Where oh, are you? This is better than the Enigma. Yeah. Right, now here we go. Right. How many candles are you burning? Uh, does that mean how big is your car or something like that? Horsepower or something? See? No, that's, that's how oh, old Oh, what you? time is it? No, how old are you? What, how old are you? Okay. Right. right. Uh, how many candles are you burning, of course? Yeah. So what the, what's the answer come back? You go, uh... I'm 15. 14. Brilliant. That code, <laughs> that code, it, there's no one gonna work that out. I wish you'd have kept a diary of this, cos this has been fascinating. Now and again, someone will come in and go, uh, side on. 
right? What's that mean? And that means like there's someone sat there listening into this Ooh. chat and going, "This sounds interesting." Yeah, no, it does. Unlikely. Yeah. And they they want to join in, so they sort of go side on. You go side on, bring it in, right? And they go, "All right." How many candles are you burning? <laughs> yeah. Round What's your twenty? Round again. Yeah. See you later. What's your twenty? How many candles are you burning? Oh. And, I mean, it seems to me that what you should have done is make made a note the first time, so that when you then speak to them again, you don't need to ask them those questions. <laughs> Can I just confirm that you're burning fifteen? <laughs> it's that time again. Do the jingle. Okay. Uh, I was gonna, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna do a really good one. Okay, go. Okay. Oh, chimpanzee! That monkey news, yeah. Right, do you know it's it's nearly time for the Winter Olympics again. Okay. Is it? Okay. They sort of come round every four years. Is it this year? Is it? Yeah. And uh, the 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 last one that happened four years ago. Yeah. There was a there was a bit of an incident. Oh no. Do you remember any winners that were monkeys? So anyway, it's not going to be that because it wouldn't be true. Oh, on. Yeah. So anyway, one one of the uh, popular events, um, bobsleigh. <laughs> okay, right. Um, yeah. You know, it, you know, it works. Well, you it's need like four men. Is it four men or five? Four men. men. It's four. Yeah. So it's definitely four men that you need. need on four men. Team. Is it and two? And there's two team bobsleigh. But well. they're always men. Is that right, Rich? Don't <laughs> just clarify. With the Winter Olympics, you can't have any animals taking part. No, and they and they also well, no, because they, they wouldn't be allowed. And two, there's no way they could disguise it because not only would they see it straight away, right? But they have blood tests, <laughs> right? Okay, so, which would show up. So they definitely know if it was well, a, blood any tests. Kind of it's impossible. It would be literally impossible to have anything other than a human. <laughs> Taking involved part. in a bobsleigh team. Fine, OK, so carry on. So yeah. anyway, the, the, the country was doing really well in the qualifying stages. Oh, yeah. But the problem was there was, there was like, two members mm. who were getting all, like, the press and stuff. Oh, right, yeah. Anyway, so this one member was getting fed up because the, the other two were getting all the press and what have you. So he said, I, I'm not happy with this. Yeah. I'm jacking it in. Oh. So they were like, you're joking, we've, we've qualified, we're getting into, like, the main race and everything. Mm. You can't leave us now. And he said, well, you could do it all... On your own before, you know, you, the way you were acting, like, you didn't yeah. need me, so I'm going. Yeah. So the clock's ticking, it's getting close to the big race and everything. Of course it is, yeah. They're like, what, what are we going to do here? The substitute what? they took with them. What are they going to well, do? Have, yeah. yeah, they would take the substitute, so get no, in No, they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't have any of them and that, it's, you know, a lot of injuries just, and stuff. Well, just get a mate to do it, just get a mate or a friend yeah, or, or the coach to do it, yeah. But, you know, there's a lot of responsibility on these people and, mm. you know, you won't want to let your country down and that, and they're like, what are we going to do? Get a waiter or anyone anyway, in the Anyway, the time comes to the race. Seems to be three people on it. There appears to be three, okay. Yeah. Um, they start <laughs> off, they're whizzing around the track faster than normal. They, they're beating their old record. <laughs> right, amazing. Because the new fella they've got a little bit smaller. Ah. Oh. Right, is he in? So is he in the bobsleigh? Or is he pushing? He's he's in it. Oh, right. okay. Right. He's wearing a uniform and a helmet though. We can't see what he looks on, like. He's got the kit face. on. Um, nobody knows who he is, but the country's do. loving it. They're they like, well, it looks like we're going to break all our records. You know, good. It's good that they found someone new. Yeah. Bet the other fella who left is is sort of kicking himself, thinking, "Oh, I could have been part of this." Anyway, this wasn't a bloke that had very short legs and long arms, was it? Anyway, what happened is they're whizzing round the track and what have you. Faster than ever, yeah. Faster than ever, and the press are like going, beating all records here. They mm. started taking photographs. <gasps> a lot of flashes from the cameras and stuff. Right, of course. Suddenly, the bobsleigh goes a bit sort of mental and whizzes off <laughs> off the track. Ambulance comes rushing over and stuff. The other two members are looking pretty nervous for some reason. Mm. Oh, what are they doing? They're saying, look, um, don't take the helmet off because, you know, you can do more damage to the, the well, neck. Well, don't tell the paramedics how to do it. Uh, I mean, <laughs> they know their job. Yeah, they yeah, know yeah, their yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. So Please, they were like, yeah. just, just, you know, and plus, you know, he doesn't, he, he came in at last minute to help us out. He doesn't want everyone to know who he is. He's, yeah. he's not after the limelight. Yeah. Like some of the members we used to have. But he just, yeah. he just was helping his country out. Yeah. Leave the helmet on. Anyway, they get him in the ambulance and stuff. The other two are looking a bit worried and what have you. They're oh. gutted, they lost the race. The little bloke, is the bloke not saying anything? Is he not? He's, he's in the ambulance now. Is he not saying anything, though? Anyway, it's we reported it. that one of the ambulance drivers said that, that on that on that sort of dreadful night when, you know, the country lost out on a medal in the bobsleigh, he sort of reported that there was a monkey in the back of the ambulance. 
people were like going, ah, oh, you're joking. I don't remember this. I don't remember this you, at all. Not, you, well, this is it, you see, because they sort of swept it under the carpet oh, a little bit. Right. They were like, this bullshit. is crazy talk. This, this all is shit crazy again. talk. Once to talk. Absolute shit. Where this did you get this, this from? This is crazy talk, right? It is but, crazy talk, and it's from the mouth of Carl Pilkington. And, and, but, the, but the weird thing is that backed it up. Well, following week, um, there was a story of some people who visited the zoo saw a chimp in a neck brace. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that's this week's monkey news. <laughs> that's the only thing I think that would be or more pathetic. A pogo stick? Yeah, it's yeah. so embarrassing. Or on roller skates. Yeah. But not like roller blades. Roller yeah. skates, those really old roller skates. Have you seen that you those... Tie, that you tie on your socks. Yeah, have you seen those little bikes that look like clown bikes that the couriers use now? They're about a foot high. They're little I saw one the other day on it. I, my head turned, yeah. But They're really just, bizarre. Just think yeah, they that... They're the ones that they, they fold up. Yeah. But think of policemen chasing <laughs> yeah. you on that. Well, I always remember that even in America when I started seeing policemen riding bikes. It didn't seem to me. It seems. Oh, they're quite cool. They're the ones that go through mm. Central Park on the yeah. mountain bikes. Know, yeah, but they're that's it. really cool, isn't it? They, you know, they. they it looks like they should be delivering newspapers. They whiz along at about thirty <laughs> miles an hour, and they can just <laughs> deliver <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because like on motorbikes, on a Harley Davidson or whatever, I'm not messing with a cop. A chips. I mean chips. Now that's cool. Yeah. Coppers. Yeah. Yeah. But people in a smart car or a, you know, know. that's it is a bit embarrassing. But I suppose it is that, or it's better than. Walking, you see. Next, we'll like see them in those. Um, if you really want to be uh, kind of worried about the environment, the, you know those uh, little taxis you see that people pedal. <laughs> they pedal around Soho. In yeah, and when it's a, like a, a, a riot squad, there's four in the back. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. But that's the thing, right? If if they need to arrest someone, yeah. Here we go. Go on. No, well, what do they do? Because they do only sit two, so do they have to flag a cab down or something for the it's for the point. criminal? We'll give what you the money. Do? Get a receipt. <laughs> take you back definitely will go there. Yeah. yeah. You definitely will, because we've been caught this way before. <laughs> exactly. The no, last bloke, he just ran off. <laughs> no, I won't run off. Okay. okay. Well, I'll tell you what, um, uh, uh, Mr. Policeman, I'll take your car. Then I'll. Okay, go on then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you definitely yeah. bring it back, though. I will. I will. <laughs> well, you, there, uh, isn't there something in America where when they arrest someone in America, they don't take them back to the station and fill out all the forms? They just take them back to the station and then they go and fill the forms out in a. Like a cafe or something, so they're still looking out. Yeah. Yeah, Carl told me that. They're what? So yeah. they're still on patrol, is it? Yeah, so they said they're doing all their paperwork, but they're in the, f you know, a, a cafe window and they're looking out. Do you know, like how they say in this country, so much police time's wasted by having to go back to the office and filling out loads of forms? That sounds like some policeman going, yeah, I could get a lot more work done <laughs> yeah, if, if I was, I was in, the in the pub. Starbucks. Yeah, yeah, no, there's a lot of criminals in the pub and, uh, <laughs> if I would, yeah, you know, yeah. and I'll get to keep the receipts. Yeah, I mean, what's safest is if I didn't wear my uniform and yeah. probably got drunk. Yeah, yeah, with, yeah. With some mates. Or a lot, a lot happens in, you know, looking out my bedroom window, so if I was just, like, <laughs> snoozing, <laughs> yeah, I was exactly. snoozing and when I heard a noise, I just pop, oh, look out, <laughs> oi, yeah. come here, come here. Yeah, apparently there's a lot of crime, uh, in Marbella over the next two weeks. <laughs> Yeah. Pay me so, to if listening who has to drive one of those cars, were you annoyed when your sergeant It is went... the most embarrassing. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. No, I think the pogo stick. Pogo stick, well, not. Oh, yeah, the, the, the pogo the, the, the triple tandem. The That's triple great. Tandem. We should get that. <laughs> we should when, get one of the When three we do our road, road show. <laughs> Carl does all the pedalling. Yeah. I'm in the basket in the front. Hello, like Western is. Superman! <laughs> Play a record, Carl. What have you got? <laughs> what do you want? But, um, Mark the Hoople? Oh, Mark the Hoople, yeah. Dug it out of the library. Yeah. It had one, it had one, it had greatest hits, which was enough, wasn't it? What yeah. What's got for us, Rick? Roll away the sonar, I think. <laughs> Coldplay, The Scientist. Have you seen the video for that? No, but Absolutely magnificent. Is it? It's brilliant. I was always walking backwards yeah. in the woods. Oh, yes, I have, yeah. Absolutely yeah. extraordinary. Well, I, I like all well their videos. Coldplay. I think they're great. Yeah. I still haven't worked out how they do that one with the, whether it's a filter, they just turn up the light, cause it gets light. Through oh, the duration of the video. Along, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. And it's slow as well, so he must have. No, I'd like fun to win an now. award. I'd like him to win awards. I like yeah. Coldplay. Yeah, no, good um, answer. Rick, uh, can I just. Sorry, I don't mean to abuse our position again, but Bruce Springsteen's performing in London tomorrow night, yeah. and you remember I made an appeal to try and get a free ticket. Yeah. Well, I don't even mind paying. I, don't, I, I tried to pay, but. That's um, good of you. <laughs> no, I'm oh, not. I'm a generous kind no, of guy. No, and I thought you were mean. No, go on. What are you going to say? But you were going to pay this ticket. Well, face value. I mean, you don't want to give me. Ripped off, do you? No, don't be crazy. You know, yeah. ideally half price. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I just, I, I, I'm, I'm, I've been chasing kind of my tail, really. I just, I'm, I'm not going at the moment. I'm not going, and I'm desperate to see him. Man, I mean, he's, you know, he's going to do a great concert. It's mm. his only one in, in London. I can't believe that being on the radio, being on XFM, you know, the, the listenership's going up. Apparently, mm. I can't believe I can't get a ticket. I, I've asked Carl. He's done nothing. He's done nothing. Oh, no, 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 Carl. Had a very good point. Nothing. Carl, say what you said when he was whinging in no, the but break. No, first of all, whilst you're moaning, you also asked in the week for a badly drawn boy album. Yeah. You got in today. Yeah. 
there's one there for you. Well, yeah, yeah. but it's yin and yang. And it's Carl. like, yeah, but I don't, you know. Carl, what's Steve ever done for you? That's what you got to ask yourself. What has Steve ever done for you? Well, he took me to the BAFTAs. Yeah, but only because no one else would probably want to go with you. <gasps> <gasps> I can't believe that. What is I this? I do not believe that. Oh, Steve, I'm gonna stitch you up now, Carl, and it's in a nice way, and don't worry, it won't be too bad, he won't take it too bad. Carl sent me a little text message today. Right. Um, no, no, oh, don't. Oh, what is this? Um, I, right, okay. Okay. Nice. You know I'm in a very frail mood at the moment. No, no, you're like this, Bruce. This is funny, cos me and Steve, uh, me and him have been, like, sending, uh, trivia back and forth to each other, which is another point, right? I sent him... Oh, well, I'll get to that in a minute. I, I thought he'd really be amazed with, um... Right, well, while I'm you're right. fiddling, if you can make my dream come true, uh, to go and see Bruce Springsteen tomorrow, then give us a call on the usual yeah, number. but like I said, Steve... What? Right, it's, it's n wouldn't be... Right, you just said when the song was on, can't believe it, right, we work at XFM and I can't get tickets for Springsteen, right? Yeah. Mm. But we work in radio, we should get tickets. Mm. Right, now think Which of Which I'm willing to pay for. Yeah, mm. but think of the... Yeah, but if it's sold out, it's sold out. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but that's just something they say. Right, that's just what they say, is it? Right, so everybody on local radio stations say, do you know, I, I like that Bruce Springsteen, I, I want a free ticket, right? So another say... I tried to phone, I phoned for an hour and a half, I couldn't get through. Not long enough. I put the enough. hours in. Not long enough. Not long enough. What are you talking about? I put the hours in. Right. right? So another 400 people turn up at the gig, they cram them all in, there's people being crushed, you know, they've paid the money early, they were up early that day when, when the phone lines were open, whilst you were probably sleeping and that. So they're dedicated and they're the ones at the front getting crushed. What? Would you Why mind that be crushed? happy if you were there getting crushed? I don't mind, I'll sit at the side of the stage and watch him. Yeah, but- I the, don't mind. But everyone will say that then. And then what? before you know it, yeah. no one can see anything because no, you're Carl's on the right stage. On this one. Leave right, it. Yeah, Leave read, it. right, I'm gonna give you this here. I'm, I'll hand it over my mobile phone to Steve to read the- you can see it's from Carl at the top, but just read it out as you scroll down. Just read it out loud. Is this a text message from- Yeah, this is a text message to me from Carl. Read it out. To see at night as well as an owl, you would need eyes the size of grapefruits. If only Stephen could turn his head right round as well. <laughs> I- Carl, I can't believe it. <laughs> What- what upsets me most, Carl, right, is not the fact that you've been slagging me off behind my back, <laughs> it's the fact that you've got the cheek to come on here and moralise because you've failed to get me tickets and make a dream come true. You've come on here trying to pass the buck and say that it's a health and safety problem, when mm. in actual fact it's a Carl it's Pilkington problem. Look at that, do that, I've got it in a I bit. can't- I'm devastated, I'm devastated, you I know, know, I- didn't- and then- I didn't- tell, let's buy a record. I just- I'm upset. I should've eaten this banana. Off air. What's the number? It's, uh, 08700 800 1234, but if it's sold out, Steve, it's sold out. Oh. A bit of a classic, eh? R.E.M. I bet if Ricky wanted to go, it'd be fine. I'm sure someone could sort it out then. Who? Oh, if Ricky Gervais wants to go, then I'm you can going. come. Are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> you want some tickets, though? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you two. Electrical Storm. That's great. That's great, I love that. I'm XFM, 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl, I want you to tell Steve what you told me in the week. <sighs> about right. the snake, about the anaconda, how to... Right, this is Carl's method. He's not scared of the anaconda, the 30 foot long, biggest, scariest snake. No, you were talking the about stuff, weren't you, about in jungles and that, and animals. <laughs> That's and what we do. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I remember reading hmm. about Say if you're in the jungle and uh, and you get tired and you go to sleep, right? And you w and you sort of wake up and you feel something on your leg and you look down and it's an anaconda, right? Yes. And it's uh, it's swallowing your feet because they apparently they always go f from the feet up. Uh -huh. They never they never eat you from the head. So um, okay. Um, I, 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 should I should I save these points to the end? Cause make that's a, make wrong. a list of the points. Because they, they always eat head first. Because the way the fur goes, where they, they have to take a capybara or even a rat, they, they take it from the head but, but first. But make, make, it, make, it, make, sure. okay, make, make it make some notes. Okay, so that's wrong. We'll come back okay to next, later. go on. So they always eat from the feet. Go on. So, so they swallow in your feet, and <laughs> it's said on on the on the website, if you wake up and you see this anaconda doing that sort of eating away at your feet, don't panic. Um, don't and panic. I'm don't just writing this down. Don't okay. panic. Well done. Okay, go on. Don't, uh, don't try and kick it off. Okay. Just let it sort of swallow you. Mm -hmm. But only up to your knees. <laughs> okay. okay. Why, right. why not kick it off straight away? Because it, uh... I think it sort of gets a bit angry and it starts thrashing about and it, oh. it can swallow faster, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm so guessing that bit. 
Okay. Uh, uh, just put a question mark by that. Okay, there, pop a question mark next so, uh, to uh, yeah. eat so knees. Yeah, so it's up eat it, knees. So eat it up to your knees. It's, yeah. it's up to your knees. Yeah, and then yeah, what yeah. you do is you yeah. get a knife. Yeah. Okay. And you cut. Oh, and how do you get a knife? Do you, do you, do you walk over to the kitchen? I was going to pop over, get knife, where's <laughs> that come from? Get well, you, knife. You always have a knife. Okay. Always have a knife, of course you do. <laughs> Otherwise you're a fool. Always have a knife, okay? okay. Well, Eat, uh, come on. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to go into a jungle- Always have a knife, okay. Always have a knife, yeah. Simple. Um, could I just say something? You know, suppose you've got your wearing combat trousers, and the knife is actually in the, the you know, those- the trousers by the knee, the sort of pocket by the knee. What happens then? You could- I suppose you could still reach in- <laughs> into the mouth, couldn't you? So anyway, you've got a knife. Let's well, say you've got a knife. Let's say you've fallen asleep, the anacondas, you're chewing your feet, you let it eat up to the knees, you've got a knife, what do you do then, Carl? Right. So it's up to your knees, and what you do, you get your knife that you got out of your pocket earlier, um, and you cut it at the mouth, right? Do you know, like, either side of the lips? Right. So you're sort of cutting it in half. Right, like a Chelsea smile. And it can't- yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. You can't do anything. Uh, it wasn't ready for that. It can't move about because it's got, like, your legs in its mouth. Uh-huh. Um, and peel it off and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, my- my main point, really, is this, Carl. Never will an anaconda or any constrictor, python, boa constrictor, uh, just start eating a sleeping man. <laughs> he will crush you to death first. <laughs> That's why they're called constrictors. They're not called gobblers, are they? <laughs> or holy swallowers. They're called constrictors. Why would he start eating something? Is that how they t take down antelope? Just start ch chewing their leg? Oh, it's gone off. I'll tell you what, lads. They get together, this next one, they said, I'll tell you what, we're losing a lot of prey by just living at their ankles. They're running away. Let's crush them to death first so they can't move. Then we can swallow them. You're a fool. So anyway, right, so uh, I was telling him this bit of information because we started a feature last week. Mm -hmm. Well, week before. So Sorry, Carl, first. can we just go back to the crushing you to death first? Yeah, but, well, I read it. He's won, he's won there. He's beating <laughs> you there, Rick. Okay. Did I'm it say what to do if it starts with you that's first? No, 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 no. Did it say what to do if, so supposing it, it, uh, it had this meeting, it had this meeting, and it, it started crushing you and you woke up and it was actually round your chest. And every time you <gasps> try to take a breath and breathe that a little bit, it just tightened his grip because it can feel that. What 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 do you do then? You uh, you sort of tighten yourself up anyway because oh. I've read about that. Yeah. If well. one does start wrapping around you, you sort of make yourself into a ball first of all, and it'll wrap around you. But it's all right because you're pre protecting your lungs so it can't crush you. And then you just sort of shout for help and right. you and you, oh, you, you shout shout help with this thirty foot snake. Got <laughs> do, do, do you know how it works? It gets as tight as it can. It can feel as tight- actually as tight as it can, right? With these huge, huge muscles, yeah. right? Yep. Right? When you <gasps> leave a bit of breath yeah, out, it tightens do again. Don't- you won't be that out of breath. You haven't been running anywhere. So you can just go- What, and- and-, and when do you get the, the new mouthful of oxygen? Just- just breathe very slowly like you do- How? Do you know what breathing is? Do you know what breathing is? <laughs> it's extending your rib cage, right? Intercostal muscles between the ribs. Contract like that. Okay, making the rib cage expand, which pulls air in through. It's like a bellow. That you can't just breathe by via the mind. It's a physical process. It's your rib cage. <gasps> well, maybe, maybe I'm special, but I can do little breaths without my rib cage. Play a record, Steve. <laughs> You're special. Play a record. No, 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 no. You you can't take little breaths well, without moving your rib cage. Can I just give you the titles because we're running out of time? We've got a competition to do. Okay, all right. Let's just leave the anaconda so discussion. That, Why don't you agree to disagree, and we'll <laughs> see who survives if, if you crash <laughs> land in the jungle? Right. So, right. Uh, what is this? What are you doing now? This is educating Ricky. Right? Oh, good. I'm going to look forward to this. Yeah, Three Ricky. topics that I teach you every week. Yeah. yeah. Now, obviously, um, I should just remind people. You normally summarise each of these in a kind of bullet point heading, which you tease us with. So, yeah. what have you uh, reduced them to this week? Right. We've got um, stocking Aitken and Waterman. Stocking <laughs> Aitken and Waterman. Good. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? <laughs> We've also got. Uh, what else is it? It's not his his vault. Yeah. It's not what. It's not his. Vault. Okay. Yeah. And we've also got get a lobe of this. Get a lobe of this. Yeah. Carl, they're genius. <laughs> Rick, are we choosing one of these after new order? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Foo Fighters and All My Life on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Jamaica with me, Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, just before we do educating, uh, Ricky, this is where Carl thinks he can give me something of interest and teach me something to take away. Last week I found out that, uh, somewhere in a strange land people thought tomatoes were poisonous because they ate them with lead. Um, things like that. Um, what was the other one you told me? Uh, was it last week? Uh, bit so, of worms. Cut yeah. me off. Yeah. Oh, I, I, uh, sent him a text message. I was on the train, a bit bored, and, uh, I read in, I think it was Metro, scientists have found out that, um, uh, worms get stressed, and they found out that, uh, the fat ones, um, didn't live as long, and when they checked the thin ones that lived longer, they found out they had a gene for de-stressing them. Right? Carl, what, did you remember what you said? No. He went, well, that's stupid, isn't it? He said, did these other ones die of natural causes? <laughs> I went, yeah, he went, all right. Because it could be that the fat ones couldn't get off the pavement quick enough and got squashed. <laughs> so maybe the scientists go, yeah, we didn't- <laughs> Yeah, they come to think of it, they were flat as well as fat. I yeah, think the reason that the, uh, worms are getting stressed is because, uh, people like Carl are cutting them in half to try and make two snakes. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two worms. Well, yeah. Well. That's the concern. <laughs> he huh? said, he said they can't even commit suicide if they're stressed by cutting <laughs> their throat. <laughs> I also sent, um, what I thought was quite interesting that the science have found that, um, the elephant hasn't got the best memory. The sea lion has, uh, right. based on, uh, they've, they've got a sea lion and they, uh, got it back into the old, uh, laboratory. Ten years after it, it taught it a simple trick and it could still do the trick. What did you say to that, Carl? I'd say they don't go up to much anyway, <laughs> so if you do teach it something, it is gonna remember it. Sure. Cause it's got nothing else to do. Yeah. yeah. And then it also, I mean, I like sea lions, they look nice and everything, but what do they do? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> sea lions? <laughs> yeah, what, what are they here for? It's another jellyfish, so, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> it's like, it's there and people know about them, but what do they do? Mm. Yeah. What, does what do we do? do? What do we do, Carl? Well, what do we do? A cat, a cat, first, Steve said, is good for your heart, so you-, you Why is it all geared to what's good for us? Well. <laughs> anyway. Educating Educa Ricky. Ricky. Uh, Good, we settled that then. Go on. <laughs> the titles that are, yeah. uh, meant to sort of pull you in. Yeah. We've got, if, uh, what, what, what was it? It's, uh, Stocking, Aitken and Waterman. Yeah. You've got, it's not his vault. <laughs> and, uh, get a load of this. <laughs> get a load of this. So, uh, which pun do I pick first? Um, I think I'll go for, uh, get a load of this. Get a lobe of this. Yeah, get yeah. a lobe of this, yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's a story about a girl who, uh, <laughs> she was deaf, right, for, for four years. And, um, it happened quite a bit back this. What year? Or about, was it? About, what, what, I think it was in, ages ago, was about, it? About, yeah, quite a bit back. Uh, she was deaf for about four years. Having an argument with her mum, it said, which I didn't quite understand, because mm. I don't know how they do that. Yeah. But she was having an argument, well, and a man pushed her against the wall, yeah. and she banged her head, and her hearing came back. Okay. Uh, was she wearing a Walkman, and it fell out, and she'd realised, oh, that's There's what? no explanation. There's no explanation? Well, why is that teaching me something right, then? so I knew you'd say this, <laughs> right? So I thought, right, I'll stick something on it. Do you know that bees are deaf? <laughs> no! No, you can't just, no! <laughs> If no. you ask someone something they don't the answer to, they don't tell you something else, just I'll tell you something else then. I can't answer that, I'll tell you something else. Imagine that, if you asked a teacher. Look, how do birds fly? Wow, if you're gonna do that, tallest building is, <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> well, that's that was the equivalent, Carl, of running away. <laughs> <when we asked laughs> yeah, you a question. yeah, the intellectual equivalent of going, look over there, there's a monster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen. What do you mean? What she? Okay, so oh. so she her hearing. There's no came explanation. Back. There's no explanation. <laughs> or you don't know. Well, there isn't one, is there? Really? It's a bit what, weird. Did, but the doctors, only did thing the doctors that... not look into it. No, I think they just said, "Oh, that's good." <laughs> but, <laughs> so again, I don't. Where did this information? Is that if you read this on is the that net? It? Is that all they put? There on was the once no. a deaf woman who hit her head. And she and could her hear. hearing came back. It was bizarre things about being deaf. Was there three? Oh, like, yeah. was there I've three got that book. Yeah, it's a good book. That was there three yeah. more pages. You just couldn't be bothered to read off. Yeah. No, no, it was just a little bit. And it was said, there a little picture, a cartoon picture? No pictures. I just read going, it. Ow! Look, ow! If you I don't want to know, if you don't want to learn, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, uh, uh, um, it's not his vault. Let me have it's not his vault. You've got to save this. This has got to teach me something. It'll be an interesting story. Right, it's not his vault. This fella, yeah. um, What year? Ages old, ago? Old times? In, I'd say in the 70s. Okay. Would you? 
Any evidence for that? I'll, uh... Does he wear flares in the, uh, <laughs> in the story? Right. Is that it's your reason? No, it's, it's a bit like Yori Geller, this fella, right? Where oh, yeah. he's electric. He's electric. And, um, <sighs> if he walks past the telly, the telly would fizz. Uh-huh. If he walked past the radio, it all goes like that. Ooh. His hair stuck up all the time. Ugh. And he'd be having a bath and everything would be all right and then the power would sort of switch on in his body and the electric in his body made him jump out of the bath. <laughs> So. <laughs> so what do you mean so what is that so what does that so mean you've given us nothing you've given us nothing you'd have to at least give us the scientific explanation yeah electric eels have 400 volts in them oh is this the running away again <laughs> what was that one called yeah but they, they, they but it's not a, it's not his vault but there's a reason <laughs> they they that that it's not his vault <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was gonna be something about keeping I think it we should, safe. I think we should do these the other way round. <laughs> I think we should tell fault. us the story and then we'll hear the pun. <laughs> it's not his fault. It's not his fault. Right, let's leave it. Play a tune. <laughs> Educating Ricky. Uh, We're not doing it. No, we are! Oh. Right. Right. Why? What do you mean? What? Because can they have your eyes after you die? It was, it was, I think it was fourth on the list. Why do you care about uh, uh, giving your eyes away just, when you're just, dead? Just because of that thing of, you know, we don't know for sure yet. I know that you poo-poo it, but the afterlife thing. So why in an afterlife do, do you, would you want your eyes more than your liver and your kidneys and your lungs and your heart? Because ghosts don't eat, do they? So you don't need all your liver and your kidneys and stuff, because they're only there to sort your food out. But your eyes, if you're a ghost, I don't want to be a blind ghost. <laughs> Because you're around forever then, aren't you? Once you're a ghost, that's it. So the idea of being blind when you're alive, you go, well, all right, then maybe in the afterlife I might be treated to a pair of eyes. But the fact of wandering about, dead for years, bumping into stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Oh, it's amazing! So, oh, that's an amazing image! So I didn't tick that box. <laughs> but, but, but why, I don't understand, in your theory of the afterlife, why is it that you, you ghost, you, this ghostly car, why can he survive without a heart? But he can't survive without eyes. What? Why? Do you see what I mean? Surely, if you're this ghostly apparition, you can just see everything and you can do everything. You don't need no because the, the body. No, because I you're a ghost. Think, yeah, I know, but I think it, when you're a ghost, say like how they've seen ghosts in. Um... Right. Could I just say now for any listeners, um, this is not the thoughts and beliefs of the management. There is no such thing as ghosts. I do not believe in ghosts. I do not believe in ESP or any mumbo jumbo. Carry on, Carl. So when there's a ghost, yeah. When, when I, you know, when they see ghosts in like old castles and stuff. Mm. Yeah. They've had their head cut off because they've been up to no good, right, years ago. But they're carrying it around normally under their arm. That's what I'm saying. It hasn't reattached itself. So if you take the eyes out. But Carl, how is this ghostly creature able to function? It's, it doesn't have its head on anyway. It's carrying it under its arm. So the suspicion is it doesn't need its head. No, it, it does. It just happens it, to be carrying it around because it, no, it you know, wants to keep it with it. The ghost it? is always in the last condition that it was in when it was in... Oh, what, who I makes these rules? The way you are in your last bit of life is how you are as a ghost forever. Even in the fashion. Like I say, the ghosts that you see never wear modern clothes, so they, it's always the Victorian stuff. <laughs> Now, God. if they could change it, they would, but they can't because they stuck with it. So that's why did you see cavemen eyes. ghosts? When did ghosts start? They didn't kick in till about 1830, did they? What if you die when you're having a rectal examination? Are you always bent forward with your trousers around your ankles and someone's finger up your ass? But why would you die when you're having that done? That's why I'm not having it done. If that's you no, 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 no. But you, uh, uh, you might have both been suddenly um, killed in a in a terrible disaster. Yeah. A meteorite hit you. That's when you get the moaning ghosts, isn't it? That's the other ones who aren't happy. So you're going round, bent forward, going, you've got oh. a doctor's finger up your ass, yeah. and what are you doing? You're sort of going, oh... And that's when you have to get the vicar round. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> they, they have to put you to, to rest and what have you, don't they? And what does a vicar do when he's going... Are you go so, I, so I get the vicar round, it's years later, it's a hundred years later, you're, 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 you're around this doctor's surgery and there's people coming, and the doctor there, the new doctor there, and it's, it's 2073, and they, they go... Vicar, vicar. They go, vicar. There's a, there's a, a strange ghostly apparition. It's, it looks like an old doctor, right? And he's got his fingers up. This sort of like little. It's like a chimpanzee, but with a shaved head. No, no. But the doctor wouldn't be. Are you saying the doctor dies as yeah, well? Yeah, they you both, both, yeah. You both yeah, die. You die at the same time with his finger up your ass, and so you're forever, you're forever having a little rectal examination with your little trousers around your ankles. Well, that's when it'd be best not to have your eyes. <laughs> Ha <laughs>
Rick, I know this is something you always get excited about. It's Carl's Diary. Can we have a jingle? I don't believe it! He's got a really gun! <laughs> Thank you very much. Woke up to the news about an elephant in India that had sore feet, so the locals have made it a big pair of slippers. Tried to look online for a picture, but I couldn't find anything. Surely they've made it two pairs of slippers. Uh, well, I'm only going by the facts in the diary, Rick, and I would have thought that they were absolutely bona fide and fact-checked. They're completely <laughs> yeah. accurate. I'd be yeah, very surprised yeah. if there's any mistakes in here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure they've done this for an elephant before. Uh, I thought elephants have bad memories. No, well, they no, have. But fair enough. I thought elephants have bad memories. If they have, I'm guessing it's going to keep forgetting where it's left them. I mean... Just to get the, if it's a myth, the myth completely wrong. Yeah. Elephants well, never forget, that's the saying. Not they always forget, so you can buy them slippers every year. Carl says, I haven't had a pair of slippers for years. He thinks they're dying out. No, I love slippers. I love a pair of slippers, I love mate. a pair of slippers, mate. Just wear socks. Oh, slidey on a car. No. Slidey on a, on a piece of lino. I know. And what about if you, you know, maybe opening a, a, a brand new box of thumbtacks? <laughs> you drop them all over the floor, you're trying to pick them up. Rick, I've got to pop across the road to get some milk. But well, it's, it's right opposite. I'm surely not going to go in my socks, though. I? I don't want to put on the shoes, it's mad. No, no, no. no. Pop some slippers on. Oh, perfect, yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't go out in your slippers. Why not? Just across the street, mate, to get some milk. Because they're inside shoes. You don't go roaming about on tarmac in slippers. That's basic. But you don't have any slippers, so no, you're just tiptoeing across the street, you know. I put my shoes on. But you can, you can, you can, well, you can pop out and get the, uh, the, the paper and, you know, the, the bottle of milk, can't you, in the slippers without, without any harm done? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> That'll make it into the diary. <laughs> Tried to have a shower, but there was no water. <laughs> When he calls me and things go yeah. wrong with a flat. But I like the fact that he tried to have a, he tried to have a shower but there's no water. How long did it take you before you realised <laughs> he was there for 20 minutes? After 20 minutes, it's Suzanne, should I be dry? Oh, yeah, I'm freezing cold. Yeah, no, no, you should, you should be sort of wet and warm. <laughs> right, there's no water then. <laughs> Brilliant. I called the service charge people but no one was about. Looked outside but couldn't see any work going on. Great, innit? In India, they can sort out elephants with shoes. In London, we have no water. <laughs> <laughs> I hung about for a bit, but still no sign of any water. Brush my teeth just using the paste and use the little bit that was in the kettle to have a wash. I was pretty chuffed that I thought of using that. Suzanne was a bit annoyed because she wanted a cup of tea. Uh, she said, go across the road and buy a big bottle of water. Not in your socks. Pop some slippers on. Go across the road and buy a big bottle of water, she said. I never thought of that. <laughs> Oh. You had a wash using the water that's in the in bottom the of the kettle. Yeah, well, that's clean, isn't it? But how much is any little drop in there? No, it's a big kettle. So why did you just wash your face? Yeah. So you didn't you didn't wash your body or anything? Your genitals well, were You couldn't, could you? You've got to look at what, what you can do with the water available. People in Africa and that short of water aren't wasting it, so I know the feet are a bit dirty. They drink it. What do you mean? Add a look online to see what's been going on. Scientists say that Everest, brackets, the mountain, just in case you've confused that with any other Everests. Maybe the uh, double glazing people. Yeah. You say that, pe scientists say that Everest has grown a bit. The way they were talking about it, you'd have thought it's grown loads. It's only inches. No, isn't that... They found out that it's actually a couple of inches taller than they first thought because their methods of measuring are more accurate than they were 20 years ago. So it's bigger than they thought it was. It hasn't grown. No, I just think what's happened is at the bottom... Because of like people, keep, people are always climbing up it, aren't they? Right. Yeah. So they're sort of wearing away the Don't soil at the bottom. Talk rubbish. So, so they always push it. Down. It's, it's just also just measured push... against sea level. It's not measured about when you get. Otherwise, they'd just dig a big hole, wouldn't they? And go right. It's down to here. If the, the, the no, peak does, is at, measured at, against at the end of the day, sea though, level, does it matter at the end of the day? No, but it's just nice to know, isn't it? Yeah, but that's what, I, what I'm saying is we don't need to know that. It's not going to put anyone off. Like Brian Blessed, who's always climbing up there for fun, he's not going to go. Oh, I could handle it last year, but oh, two more inches. Forget that. Gonna be shattered. <laughs> so you don't, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter how big it is. Something else, though, that's happened since, right? Um, they were climbing up there, and someone got near the top, and uh, they were sort of climbing up like that, holding the cliff edge and that. And they'd forgotten the flag, had to go back. No, the, their hand hit the bit of rock, and it went like, ding. Like, what's that? Ding, ding. Put another hand up, ding, ding piano under there. They don't know how it's got there. Right, you're talking shit again. Someone's been tipping. 
Well, all right. <laughs> what up average? Okay. The council won't even take away your washing machine unless you pay them. They're I'm not, not going to sneak up Everest. No, this is the problem, isn't it? Because the council won't take anything. People are going, what can we do with this? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll just, just, I'll tell you where. Just sneak up Everest. It'll take you nine days. <laughs> and it may, you may die. But just pop it up on Everest. Well, I know for a fact that you've confused you've confused a few things there because I think the the piano being found was actually somewhere in Scotland, some kind of moor in Scotland, and they found a piano up there, yeah. and everyone said, "I don't understand how's the piano doing up here." And it turned out that some guy, one of these people who like tries to break world records, Hoax, a dragged a oh, dragged right. a piano up there as some kind of feat of endurance. Yeah, but thought I'll be damned if I'm going to take it back again, and just left it up there. It wasn't, you know, bloody tipping or aliens or anything. Some scientists have come up with a cure for bird flu. It's somewhat to do with some stuff in horses. They gave the flu to a mouse and then injected it and it's well again. I think we should stop coming up with cures for things as the germs are just getting stronger and stronger. I reckon by 2020, germs will be so big that we will be able to see them in the air. They will no longer be little particles. You wouldn't swallow one. If you did, it won't be the germ that will kill you. You'll just choke to death. I think that's, that's how we'll die in the future. Choking on enormous giant on germs. germs. And then what, they'll be like rampaging around the cities where they you like. Did, I'll tell you just, what though, right? That I'm getting worried now because the stuff he believes and thinks of, uh, it, 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 I mean, it could be mental. Do you know what I mean though? Like a proper paranoid sort of. It, one of those people that's soon going to live in a loft covered in tin foil. Yeah. Right? Um, and uh, uh, pages of the Bible all the way around the. Yeah, and yeah. Suzanne's <laughs> having to put on a, some sort of spacesuit to come in and give him his beans on toast. <laughs> yeah. And he's going to have to polish each bean. That's, what, that's yeah. what scientists do, isn't it? They just sort of think, of think ahead of everyone else. That's what I'm doing. And the weird thing is, right, Steve, um, sometime last week, um, there was a science piece which was close to what I'd already said. Yeah. That they've got some germs sure. that like eating sugar, right? They stick them in a the lunchbox with a chocolate bar. Within an hour, it was gone. Right? And they say now these germs love chocolate and Did stuff. this scientist leave it near this fat scientist that works in the same laboratory? And he went, it's unbelievable. Uh, he said, Ted, he went, what? <laughs> right, I put the chocolate bar in here with the germ, I came and it's gone, that's amazing. <laughs> wow, that's brilliant, that. Do it again. What? Do it again. Leave another one, see if it happens again. So in the future, you're running around and germs are... Eating chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> That's not science, that's Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! So, so we're, now, we're now examining the thought processes that we all have. Oh, before no. we get to them. Let's just hear a song. Okay, right, it's half past one, and that film sounds good. Ooh, that film sounds feature, good. Feature, feature, feature. This is where I choose a song from a film that, oh, that film sounds good, see? Uh, this is um, a, a, a film that me and Steve both love, and he actually he saw it first and got me onto it, and so I love it, and I did. It was Rushmore. It was a great film, and from it, it features one of my favourite artists of all time, um, The Wind by Cat Stevens, and this is off the first album I ever bought from Teaser and the Firecut. This is The Wind from Rushmore. That film sounds good. <laughs> feature, feature, feature. Cat Stevens, The Wind. Elegant. A beautiful song. The album is... Is a, a superb album. It's it, it's seminal. It's just has some great songs on there. I feel like playing another one, maybe a song for the lovers. Maybe do it later. Maybe, yeah. maybe I can do that. that. Yeah, it's beautiful. I have to say, I've uh, seen the uh, the follow up to Rushmore. If oh, you yeah. enjoy Rushmore, it's this new film, The Royal Tenenbaums, with amazing cast: Ben Stiller's in it, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Gene Hackman in his Golden Globe winning performance. Oh, yeah. Same sort of thing as Rushmore, same kind of style, but a uh, lovely sort of uh, kind of family comedy. Absolute dynamite, and again a brilliant soundtrack. Nico is on there, Nick yeah. Drake, all kinds of treats. Forthcoming in the cinemas, Rick. Is you say the follow-up, is it the it's same not a director? Sequel. It's the same director, same writer, right. some of the same cast. Bill Murray makes another appearance. Isn't same style. Haven't um, um, the Swingers lot done another one? They have. Their new film's Made, with the right. same John Favreau and uh, Vince Vaughn. Again, dynamite, really good fun. Not as kind of perceptive as Swingers, but certainly as much fun. Have you seen Swingers, Carl? I think so. Is it the one where, um, they've got a line in it, they've got a catchphrase in it, haven't they? You're the money. You're money. No, you're so money. That's it. Yeah, 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 I've seen it. Yeah. yeah, I love the fact that I said you're the money. You went no. You went you're so the money. You went yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yours is from uh, what's his name? Yeah, Jerry Maguire. No, yeah. that's show me the money. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen it. Anyway. See, that was really articulate. We had, uh, uh, we did a feature, it linked into film, uh, Steve Love Films, he did a little, um, you know, uh, uh, off the cuff review, then it went into gobbledygook again. Yeah. That, <laughs> I can't even say <laughs> it. Yeah, you couldn't even say the word gobbledygook. It's, yeah. Anyway, listen, you had an interesting fact you were going to give us, Carl. I don't think we can leave people waiting for this any longer. No. 
Right. <laughs> um, how much does it cost <laughs> to run one escalator? <laughs> That's just one. Yeah. On a London Underground. It's running 20 hours a day because it shuts for four hours in the night when they're cleaning up and that. Yep. Yeah. How much does it cost to run it for a year? Twelve pounds. <laughs> Sixty thousand pounds. The trouble with these facts is I, I've got nothing to compare it against. It well, well, think about like <coughs> your yearly electric bill. <laughs> oh. Well, when you put it like that, when you. <laughs> it's a lot, isn't it? When you think they could just use stairs. <laughs> Carl, play a song. <laughs> Politics on XFM <laughs> 104.9. Yeah. Please, people, just use the stairs, <laughs> brothers. Star guitar. I'm gonna be honest, Steve. I like the video more than the song. Agreed. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Um, I I just wish we could maybe tape the bits we're not on air, just because that's when Carl comes into his own. Yeah. He just said to me, I was I don't know what I was doing. I was sort of like pottering around, dancing around, doing something annoying probably. And he just looked at me. I looked around. He was looking at me, and I looked back, and he went, "Have you ever used a Y front properly?" Genius. It's a great question because the answer is definitely no. Definitely Has no. Ed, does anyone use their Y front properly? And by that I mean get your winky out of the little sort of um, slot provided, as yeah. opposed to like put it to one side or pull them down or yeah. whatever. Has anyone used a Y front properly? I don't think I've ever done it. I don't think I've ever done it. I've never seen anyone in a toilet doing it, Rick. You should be looking. <laughs> I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> yeah, I caught you. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> actually how you prove people are gay. <laughs> yeah. You get them into this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a trap. Uh, yeah, it's a trap. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was the trap. Yeah. I'm not gay, by the way. Yeah. yeah. You didn't prove <laughs> I was gay. I double bluffed you. Because <laughs> I knew the old gay trick. I thought it was the old gay lord say no thing. That is another method. Oh, yeah, there's, a, a, there's innumerable methods of doing it. That's how Oscar Wilde was caught. Yeah. Yeah. What happened there? Well, the judge went to him. Uh, did you see that film last night? Gay lord say no, and he went no, and they went take him away. Yeah. <laughs> take him down to the cells. Yeah, take him to Reading. It is true. Um, is well. True. It originated in America. Yeah. So many of these things do. It's yeah. a brilliant point, Carl. I'd like to hear from anyone, anyone listening who's, and I mean, uh, well, they'll just lie when they ask for Yeah. I don't even use uh, sort of flies. No. Usually. I sort of just sort of, sort of pull my wi front, uh, my sort of tracksuit. So yeah. That's why I wear sort of like elasticated <laughs> waist pants all the time. Exactly. Just sort Speed. of like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You've got to get in there with the minimum of effort. Yeah. We and out. Sure. Sure. Often I won't shake. No, well, no. To my detriment, because it <laughs> often leaks out a little bit later, oh. doesn't it? Ever been out on a date with a girl where it's just trickled down your leg and you wish it hadn't, and you're thinking, <laughs> what if she gets my trousers off later? She's like, smell or see it. What? <laughs> like what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I said there. <laughs> right. Uh, Rick, I had for Christmas something which I think might excite you and interest yeah. you, because I know you're obsessed and interested by facts. Yeah. Don't fiddle with the microphone. Well, I was just looking at what it was underneath it. Stop, listen to what I'm saying. I know, no, listen, let me explain. People could hear you moving the microphone. Could they? Yeah, I can hear it in my headphones. You know, it's the little pop shield that goes over the mic. Yeah. I was going to see where the, what the, what way the mic was facing, so I just had a look. Who cares? No one's interested. Leave it. Carl, I'll tell you if there's a problem. Alright. Why am I talking like that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a book, uh, it's just facts and trivia. It's edited by Sir Isaac Asimov, who oh, I think's yeah. dead. So I don't know when my parents bought this book. I assume it's sort of from a second-hand shop or something. Right. It's quite long, but I got it for Christmas. So I keep meaning to bring it in because there are generally the facts are quite sensible in here, and I like to think if Isaac's been involved, they're probably substantiated. It's not like kind of just this nonsense on the web. Or, I think or that this is probably or crucial. up in Greg's the Baker's that Carl <laughs> exactly. gets most of his facts from. Uh, the ancient Egyptians trained baboons to wait on tables. <laughs> Carl, fascinated. Brilliant. That's fantastic. But what, what, what my point about that is, why did they stop? Yeah. It's genius. a genius idea. Did, Would you not want to go to a restaurant where they had baboons serving? No, I'll tell you what happened. happened. It might have been like the Planet of the Apes and they sort of rebelled. <laughs> one of them could talk, one of them could take his order, and one day went, it went um, uh, do you want fries with that? And the bloke got really annoyed and said they're answering back, and then there was a, some sort of rebellion. Right, 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 yeah. right. The Planet of the Apes isn't true, is it? It's not, no, it's not, it's, it's not a documentary. Right, okay. I wonder, because what I like the idea of having baboons is the fact that I reckon they're like, I have tr difficulty, and I'm sure you do, Carl, like, working out that sort of 10%, you know, on a bill. Yeah. I reckon baboons would find that particularly hard. I reckon you could get away with under-tipping them all the time. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just not leaving enough and this leg in it. Exactly. They go away and you go, sucker. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I'd love to see yeah. some baboon restaurants. If there's yeah. any restaurateurs out there, so Terrence Conrad or someone. Could I, could I if you do go, go to a restaurant and you've been waiting on those, please don't order the banana daiquiri, because it comes half-eaten. They can't help their little selves. They really can't. 
they're okay with like you know beef and steak and chips and all that. But you, you know, there's a little bit. I go, do you work? Can and you imagine that? The baboons serving at waiting tables. It's genius. Just stop to think about that. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. It's absolutely dynamite. Yeah. That's See, a good zoos fact. would be a lot more popular if there was like the canteen. You could go. If and they were sit. serving tickets to two. Uh, yeah, exactly. one child row. Okay, go through there. Okay. I think they should do other things, like in, you know, in the Flintstones, they used to mix cement in that bird's kind of... Beam. Pelican, yeah, yeah. Just, we should start doing that again. <laughs> because that's, that also happened in ancient times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, according to the Flintstones. Be yeah, before they had proper cement mixers, that's that what was, they did. That was how they it, did it. Definitely, yeah. Just, just uh, animal facts. I remembered one in a week. Um, Go on. There was, do you know them two gay American men who have, have tigers? Well, they're not necessarily gay, they're not No one actually knows if they are gay. No, they are. All right. Okay, well, yeah. Okay. Gilbert and George, is it? No, that's those <laughs> artists. Okay. Well, yeah. They're called Siegfried and Roy. But, yeah. but anyway. Who, are, but who may or may not be gay. Yeah. yeah. And if they are, so what? And if they are, so what? But yeah. if they're not, uh, and they no, don't. I look. just said that so you knew, knew what I was talking about. Cause sure. Okay, the two gay ones, yeah. Go two on. possibly gay ones. Yeah, let, let's not worry about libel law um, anymore, then. Yeah, if you on. shave a tiger's head. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Right, okay. You've got to treat that sentence with a lot more reverence than you did. <laughs> Think what you're saying. If you shave a tiger's head, not just his head, its whole body. If oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, yeah. Sorry, I thought you, I thought you were getting weird. Go on, then, yeah. If you shave a tiger, yeah, go on. It's still stripy underneath. The yeah. Skin, the skin. Is it like rock? <laughs> it goes all, it the, way like all the way through. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's amazing. Where did you hear that one? That's. I remembered that. Like, I was. Was that a drunk just shouting it in the street? <laughs> 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 I shaved a tiger and it's still stripy. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I must yeah. make a note of that thing's calm. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting fact. Well, you know a polar bear? A polar bear's um, skin is actually um, black, and its fur is transparent, not white, and it gives the illusion. So it, uh, it gets all the radiation possible from the sun, but it's still camouflaged. I didn't understand that, Rick. Sorry, you lost me. If a, its skin's black, a polar and, bear's and, its skin's skin, black, and its fur is translucent. And its fur is translucent. So why is it white when we see Well, it? it's just because the, the light hits it and the sun reflects on yeah it. and it makes it look white yeah so if you look at each individual hair it's actually translucent so at there, night it would be black <laughs> well everything is is it yeah oh not bright stuff rick <laughs> <laughs> you've embarrassed yourself play a record oh i know all about animals and stuff do you rick oh my corazon by tim burgess i can't get enough of that i love that chorus mm -hmm. on xfm 104.9 ricky gervais steve merchant and little carl pilkington but it was a nice holiday. Yeah, it's all right. It's just, uh, you know, I went there to relax and that. Exactly. Did a little bit of that. Uh, trying to think of some new, you know, features and stuff. Sure, always working, always working. Um, Three holidays a year, Jesus. Oh, well, I don't really feel oh, much. It's all but, uh, holidays, one, really. one big sort of like work it's thing to me and Steve. Yeah. Holidays, isn't it? Yeah. Work hard, you need the holidays. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, the things that annoyed me was like, you, you get bored sat around the pool after a couple of days. I'd read my book. Yeah. Uh, you know, there wasn't much going on on the- No, even any crabs to throw sand that, was no there? No crabs or anything. They wouldn't mm. bother with Lanzarote, right? <laughs> so, uh, decided to go on a little, little trip. That's when I saw the, the volcanoes and that, 36 of them. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> we go on the trip, and the thing that annoys me, it does happen every holiday that you go on, if you go on a sort of package thing, mm -hmm. you have these trips, right? And you pay about forty odd quid, and they give you some wine, so it make it feel like you you're getting your money's worth. But uh, how many of these trips have you been on then? Uh, Loads. Ooh, probably about twelve. Four more holidays than I've had. Go on. Uh, well, uh, yeah. So go anyway, on. so you're on the on the coach, right? And they take you for the volcanoes. They took us in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Right. There's nothing else around there. Sure. It's it like like I say, it's like Mars, <laughs> but with holes in the ground. Yeah. Right. And uh. They sort of drop you off, and they go, right, everybody, uh, see you back here in an hour. Uh, there's loads of volcanoes for you to look at, uh, and a coffee shop over there. And you know, for a fact, right, you don't need an hour there. You could just say, well, just keep the engine running, because <laughs> I'll have a look in this hole, we'll get back on, give us five yeah. minutes. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. Don't need an hour. Absolutely. Yeah. But you know that they've got something going on. It's with a backhand, the... definitely. What, with the coffee shop? Definitely, definitely, definitely yeah. They, 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 yeah, they, they go there. And they, they get everyone to have an ice cream and a coffee, and yeah. they, they, you know, they sit down and have a fag talking to the bloke. Yeah, yeah and it's like, yeah, cousin. Yeah. So, How much was the coffee? Was it probably about probably about three, uh, each euro. So I think it was three fifty. Sure. 
Yeah, which yeah. is, I don't know what, that's about two and a half quid in yeah, it. Yeah, up. Well, I remember we were on a, a family trip to France once we went to Paris. We got a coach coming back from Paris to one of the ferries, one of the ports, Calais or wherever it was. Coach trip, that's quite a long coach trip. And at one point we were thinking, this is all, we're on the motorway, this is fine, we're making good progress. Suddenly we came off the motorway. We must have gone like 40 minutes out of our way, ended up in this street, this street, completely empty, little French town. And uh, it's piped outside this, what appears to be a restaurant, and a guy jumps on, dressed like a butlin's red coat. He's French, but he's putting on a kind of English accent. He goes, hello, oh, thank you very much, top of the morning, good morning, hello. Um, uh, come in, we've got food, drink, eh, go upstairs, we've got rooms if you want to have a rest, eh, or play around. No, it's up to you. And uh, we all had to funnel off this thing into this restaurant, and this one family went, well, we don't want to go in the restaurant. We brought sandwiches, we just want to get to the port, we're not interested. And they said, well, you've got to come in the restaurant. They went, we don't <laughs> want to come in the restaurant. So the guy said, well, I'll have to lock you in the coach. <laughs> so this family were locked in the coach while we all traipsed off in, and I could just look, but I looked back and just saw this little kid with his, fi with his face pressed up against the glass. <laughs> <laughs> me, I want to go in the restaurant. They were just stuck in there, Look, I mean, absolutely livid, as you would be. But and, um, that, that's definitely a backhander. But we went inside, and it was extraordinary, because initially you had to pass through a souvenir shop yeah. to get into the <laughs> restaurant, <laughs> and he just, he obviously, it was catered entirely to English tourists, so there was like pictures of the Queen and Prince Charles on the wall, it was done out in a kind of mock Tudor style, it's absolutely extraordinary, I mean, I, I, it's just, it was almost, it was so bizarre, because it was so out of the way, did it come, did that come before the coach, uh, sort of scam, or did the coach guy, he knows it, is he a brother of his? I don't know how those things come about. But, um, but, yeah, that is, 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 yeah, do we do, is that going on in this country yeah, with French sure and German tourists? Yeah, I'm sure it is. Is it? Yeah, they say, I, I, yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure people say, look, look, if you bring 30 people to this restaurant, I'll see you all right. But it would, wouldn't it? If, you know, you've got your favourites. Because you don't have to, the, the coach driver's pretty much God on those things. Because those people don't know where they're going anyway. Yeah, but at least here. There's other stuff around. You don't really get that in the middle of nowhere situation in this country. Well, not really. Not if you're going from uh, 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 London to Manchester. You could stop off anywhere. They don't know where they are. It, you, you know, there's, oh, there's places yeah. with nothing to do or see. It's that well, those those attractions. They're all there's loads of them in America, but there's a there's a few here like you know Sheep World, <laughs> and uh, you know you go out to Gloucester and there's a town. It's got the biggest cotton reel in the world, and there's that's it. It's a tourist <laughs> yeah, shop, a big cotton yeah. reel, and some bloke at the gate going it's a quid to see it. There it is. All right. I went to um. Mm. I know it's quite a big. I went to a Shire Horse Centre once. Yeah. But I, when did Shire Horses become so? So popular that they got their own theme parks. Well, there's, I think I there's, mean, I think there's a museum for everything. Yeah, possibly. So. I, I, I mean, I don't think you, you could, you could think of something that didn't have a museum somewhere in Britain because obviously museums start off sometimes by fans. Mm. But this so, is, do people keep coming around going, "I hear you got a shire horse. I'd love to see it." Yeah. Well, I can't, people come all the time to see my shire horse. You should horses. get another one because I'd probably pay double. <laughs> I'd pay good money to see your shire horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> shire <laughs> horses. <laughs> I know. Have you seen them? They don't do anything. They're not like monkeys. <laughs> no, they're they're just not like monkeys. No. Creatures, but you look yeah. at them in a picture or look at them in real life, pretty much the same thing. They're if not they, playing anything. If they could train a, a, a shire horse to swing on a rope and masturbate, <laughs> exactly. I'd pay double. You pay good money. I'd pay double for that. Yeah. There's a museum in Italy when, when we went there a couple of years back. Suzanne had a, like one of those little guide things. Museum there just for spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, they open a restaurant. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. I mean? interesting spaghetti, spaghetti in different don't shapes. Know. Don't know, didn't go, I went to see a big hole in the ground. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> <yet>. <laughs> Can't get enough of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, but out of ten then, um, what, what would you give it out of ten? Well, all in all, food, fine. food, location, right. relaxation, you know, enjoyment. Yeah, that's, that's, six. Okay, brilliant. Six, yeah. Next week, where are you going next week? <laughs> <laughs> You're not on holiday next week. Uh, cool. Going away with Suzanne's mum and dad again. Five holidays. Play a record. You've got to put some work in. You're in your thirties now. You've got to knuckle down. Cheering breaks. Mind over money. XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Stephen Merchant. Little Carl Pilkington. Yeah, yeah. A couple of emails. Different people have, um, have visited various uh, tourist attractions. Oh yeah. Uh, let me see who's this from. Uh, I'm not quite sure. But uh, thanks very much indeed for it. Uh, so, uh, there's a link here. It's apparently in Devon. Barometer World. Brilliant. Um, it's the world of barometers. It was established in 1979. And, By uh, one bloke who yeah. had a lot and it, thought, I can, I can <laughs> exactly, charge a quid yeah. for this, definitely. Here's the, Out uh, of his own house, probably. Converted back scuttle. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's, yeah. Not, that's not a euphemism for a sexual <laughs> act. 
Um, but look at the uh, the web page here, Rick. Uh, there's a picture of a beautiful barometer being held by a beautiful lady. Lovely. Who's definitely his daughter. Yes. Absolutely. Definitely. Come on, Kathy. Hold <laughs> up. Dad, no. Come on. Get, undo your top a little bit. Dad, <laughs> definitely made to do that. Yeah. Oh. oh. That slight look of I hope no one I know sees yeah. just <laughs> yeah. check out Barometer World. Yeah. <laughs> Barometer World. Yeah, that's available. If you want to check that out, www.barometerworld.com. Now, the, uh... barometers, now, do, well, one, do they work? They have to do Two. with checking, is it the, the, the air pressure? Well, it, well everything, air. but I, I think that's what it's based on, isn't it? Sort of low and high pressure, so it's gonna rain, it's not gonna rain. Yeah. Or gonna be windy or, but, I wonder how accurate they are. I think in the days before, um, satellite sort of, uh, weather surveillance systems, probably essential. Yeah. Nowadays. As essential as hanging some seaweed out by the back door? <laughs> probably. I think yeah. it's probably similar. I think it's the same one as holding a needle and thread over a pregnant woman. <laughs> if it goes clockwise, it'd be a boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about a barometer is how... Um, how far into the future can it predict? Exactly. How do you know? If it's a case of you may as well stick your head out the window to see if it's raining. Exactly. This barometer goes, uh, it goes, oh, it's gonna it'll be windy and rainy. When? The barometer goes, soonish. <laughs> yeah. So I can't say, but so it will, it will, well, within the seven days. Well, I don't want to be specific because you'll have me. Yeah. Yeah, you'll, you'll yeah I don't want well, I mean, you know, I'm just a barometer. I'm not really, I'm not really <laughs> a weather really person. The information. Yeah, brilliant. What, how, what's in there that's, uh, what's what happening? in there? What's, what chemicals are being affected? How does it work? I, I no don't idea. know. I, I assume it's probably something Wait a minute, let me email Barometer World. No, what could it be? <laughs> it, could be quite it, interesting. it could be mercury that's based on a sort of temperature that goes up with- oh no, it's not temperature, is it, Barometer? It's pressure. Mm. So, uh, it, it's, it's probably just very fine, it's like a fine, very, very fine needle, isn't it? This is almost oh. as embarrassing as last time we were on, we couldn't figure out what the name of the leader of China was. Was it the King of China? <laughs> the Prince of China? Oh, uh, this is where we, uh, were trying to imagine what it would be like if all the Chinese people at once jumped up and down yeah. and made a big tidal wave. Enormous tidal wave. But if you do know what the name of the leader of China is, we don't mean the name of the particular person in charge, but if it's a King of China, the Emperor of China, the, the Chancellor wait, of China, the Prime Minister of China. it used to be an Emperor, didn't it? No, that was Japan. Yeah, this is it. I don't know what's the big guy in charge. Is he still the chairman? I know Chairman Mao was important. I think he was just yeah. the chairman. I think he just governed all the big meetings. Yeah. I don't know. He just kept the minutes. Head Chinaman? Head Chinaman. The major Chinaman. Top, top, the top Chinaman. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, what is an analogy? Uh, It's sort of like a little story told quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? It's it a is, little story it? told quickly. To uh, what end? Well, it depends what the story is. You see, I, I just prefer sort of, you know, what you say is what you mean. So, people in, who live in a glass house have to answer the door. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I mean, because, you, you, you may be a genius, because I don't get that. People who live in glass houses have to answer the door. Okay, because, let him, let's hear his explanation. Because the people knocking at the door will be able to see you, because it's a glass house. But you have to add a number of other things, uh, another other caveats. Surely, if you live in a glass house, don't walk around naked. Yeah. If you live in a... <laughs> Th these are literals. But I just the idea that, in your head, there should be sayings for people who live in glass houses. Who is it that's living in a glass no. house? Well, it, I, I'm not talking about them, it's just that if everyone else is bringing up about these people who are living in glass houses, let's, let's get to the real problems they've got. <laughs> he, still he still hasn't got to grips with the idea of the no, metaphor or the simile. Well, here's another saying, right, that I, that I learnt recently from a mate, right? Um, well, there's an elephant in the room. <laughs> okay, I, don't, I haven't heard that one, but explain it to me. It's like how, you know, you, whenever we go out for something to eat or a drink or something, mm. It's normally after about five minutes, the sort of topic gets onto the shape of my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah! But what I'm saying is, it's interesting how, like, I'm the elephant in the room, right? Nobody's talking about it. You mention it once, suddenly it's the talk of the town. <laughs> it's, it's what I mean, everybody starts joining in, going, well, yeah, it's round, but it does suit you. And these are people who I don't even know sometimes, <laughs> and they're all dipping in. And that is an elephant in the room. <laughs> Oh. So you you don't want people to discuss the shape of your head or the or the lack of hair. Um, you would feel better. You would feel happier that they didn't mention that. Sometimes I think it's better that it's out there. It's made me a stronger person, though. It's the same way you know we're talking about religion and that. 
Samson Delilah, yeah. he got weaker without hair. Whereas with me, I think it's it's made me stronger. But would you ever wear a wig? Um, not really. What I was mean, a long wig like Samson? Well, the only time I wanted a wig was when I did jury duty once, wasn't it? And it was annoying that I was sat on the jury right in front of, like, these criminals, right? Everybody else has got disguises. The judges have them wigs on, right? <laughs> that's not disguises! It is a disguise. That's a disguise. That's why judges wear them, right? So no! Well, then why did they print their name in the paper and have a picture of it? What do you mean it's a disguise? It's a disguise, isn't no, it? No! If it was a disguise, they'd go in with one of those um, glasses with a nose and the beard attached if it was a disguise. All judges would look like Groucho Marx if it was a disguise. Well, I'm just saying that's that's what annoyed me when I was sat there on the front row, right? I couldn't have been any closer to the criminals, right? <laughs> right? I was sat there and I thought, why didn't I just pop a little wig on or a pair of glasses? <laughs> In the front row at Crown Court. No, because I'd love to see it because uh, in this country you're not allowed to show pictures of jurors. Uh, you can't take photos <laughs> in a courtroom, so there's always these sketch artists that draw drawings, and it's on the news. The idea that we'd have seen eleven people and a sort of crusty the clown figure would have been amazing. Yeah, uh, oh, I would love to see the, uh, the artist do an interview because it would be like complicated people. Oh, hey, he looks like a characterful, and then just a little round. Head. Charlie Brown. <laughs> Charlie Brown sitting on the end. <laughs> Carl, you said that your New Year's resolution was that you were going to learn something every day. Yeah. Have you learned anything today? If I, if I can. Uh, today, like, I don't know the full facts of it, but... Could I just say that when someone says they learn something new every day, that doesn't count if they forget it the next day. <laughs> no, Because yeah, that would be Groundhog Day learning. Well, the thing I learned today was about an octopus. Oh, Go yeah. on. What they can do... Is um, you know they've got eight legs and that. Yeah. They can they they can use they can <laughs> use six of them legs to cover their head so they look like a little stone. And use the other two to run off. <laughs> right. Well, that's... He's, think, he's thinking of Squidly, did he? Yeah, it's a Disney image in his head. Isn't it? <laughs> he's thinking They're pink. But, uh, but anyway, uh, uh. But, but anyway, that's that's you know. So that's it's not pink the main singing thing. a song in your mind <laughs> and running off. Yeah. No, but anyway, but something else I learned, right? Um. It's, it's mainly about animals and that, because that's yeah. normally quite interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a chicken somewhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Specific. The, and the owner of it was getting <laughs> fed up because, you know, he had to feed it and that. Mm. But it Embellishment. Wasn't, Embellishment. It wasn't, it Guesswork. Wasn't, no, come on, let's hear it. It yeah. wasn't giving anything back. No eggs. No eggs, right? So he was like, oh, I'm sick of this. Anyway, someone told him, pop a little axe next to its little house, right? So when it comes out in the morning thinking, oh, I'll have another lazy day doing nothing, right? <laughs> He saw this axe, and suddenly it was like, oh, right. I'm Next for the day, chocolate thought, yeah. it laid about six eggs. It's rubbish. Through it's rubbish. It's rubbish. A chicken wouldn't recognise an axe as a threat. It wouldn't. It wouldn't be able to reason that. Oh, um, I better start working, or I'll be. I'll be meat. I better. Start. It's absolute rubbish. Once again, it's this ridiculous thing you got that that one personifying animals uh, to, to 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 reasoning powers better than yours. I mean, I think, you know, you, you, you make chickens and monkeys cleverer than you in your stories, which is weird. It didn't happen and wouldn't work. Next. What, <laughs> what else haven't you learnt today? Do you think, then, that it's worth looking after animals, then, if, if there isn't any memory? If they don't know what's happening anyway, you're always going on about don't be cruel to things. Why would you ever want to be cruel to an animal, whether it can reason or not? No, no, no. I mean, I don't mean really cruel, but I mean, like, like there's an advert on that's, that's on in, the, you know, in Britain advertising some supermarket, right? And it's saying, you know, we look at, before, you know, we kill our chickens and what have you, they have a great life. This is yeah. like the voiceover and you see Happy Chicken. Yeah. And it's going, uh, we give it a good little house to live in. It's got straw. Yeah. It eats good. Yeah. And then we kill it. Right? Yes, well that's better, isn't it? Well, no, I don't think it is though, is it? Because at the end of the day, if I was that chicken, right? <laughs> I'm that chicken, loving my life. I can't believe me luck. Right? It's got its nice little field that it's working on. Yeah. It's got its nice food and everything. But it's gonna die. Yeah, we're all gonna die. But then, if you were like a rubbish chicken, <laughs> that would like a rubbish life, you'd be going, oh, kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, they're not thinking what's gonna happen tomorrow. They don't know that they're gonna get, they're gonna get for the chop, are they? A chicken's not going, I'm fed up with this, I can't wait for that axe to be used on my neck. Yeah. Well, that, that's another th uh, Now you've mentioned the cutting off of an head, right? Yeah. On the chicken. 
That's something else I've learned, right? It's like a pinball is mine. Amazing. Isn't it? Ding dong bong dang ding ding dong dong. Oh, Ed, ding ding, chick it, ding ding ding, head off. Bing dong. No, right, but, um, this was in a proper science magazine as well. Yeah. So you can't have a go. This wasn't something on the internet. This was printed in a magazine. You read it. Okay, and what was it? And here, and here comes the filter. It's gonna come out nonsense. Right, well... You could have Professor Stephen Hawking sitting there whispering stuff in your ear, and it could all be true, but when you said it, gobbledygook. <laughs> well, let's see then, let's see, right? This, what they've done, they've done another experiment, right? Yeah. They've cut somebody's head off, right? And they've worked out that once, when, when the head comes off the body, yeah. it stays alive and that... No. ...for 30 seconds. Well, no, they, they don't know that, they can never know that. No, they did it. They did this no. experiment. What's alive? The What's head. alive? But the what? Yeah, no. It, 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 uh, w there's loads of issues here. One, no one's experimenting with human beings cutting their head off, Carl. Well, two, mm. no, 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 no. So you read no. this in what? Executioner's Monthly. This is yeah. in no a two, proper... Carl. It's what your definition of, of alive is, because you can be alive and have no conscience. No, no. But this is this is where it gets weird, right? Yeah, I it's where, told you that. this is where it gets weird. <laughs> you talking about it? So the head's off. Right, yeah. and what they did was they chucked a load of questions at it. <laughs> <laughs> all sanctioned by the government. Yeah, this is yeah. all fine. So the head, the head lands perfectly on the neck and goes, <coughs> what do you want to know? And <laughs> it, said, it said... So they're asking questions and it's going, do you know what, to be quite honest, I don't answer, answer your question, I'm a little bit annoyed about the execution still. Well, that, that was the interesting thing, they said it's about... No, it's not, it didn't happen, Carl! Let me hear it. Oh, don't talk Let shit. Let me hear it. What are you talking about? Who, uh, these people around in white coats going, quick, ask it a question, it's bleeding. Right, so they said, for about 25 to 30 seconds. The last five seconds, it is sort of like, can't be bothered answering them. <laughs> <laughs> right, but prior to that, but, prior but to that. Apart oh from, but apart from that, they, oh. were, they were chucking stuff. I don't think it spoke. I don't think it was like, yeah, two and two, four and stuff. It was more, um, it was to do with blinking. So blink once if you say oh, yes, yeah. blink twice. So, so I told it, I said, listen, when you die, you're probably not going to be able to talk because your jaw's going to be on the ground. You're not going to be able to open your mouth. If you do, you'll fall over backwards and hit your head. Now listen, blink one for yes and two for well, no. Yeah, right, yeah, not too bad. Yeah, well, the axe nice and sharp. Yeah, promise, you're you talking promise? shit again. <laughs> you promise to do it? Yes. All yeah, right. well, yeah, yeah. The thing is, they wouldn't be able to do it with you, because if they cut your head off, it would just roll. It would roll away, because it's perfectly spherical. They would go, oh no, there's Plus, no car. It takes about 20 seconds whenever you ask Carl anything for the <laughs> yeah. question to process and for him to start to formulate an answer. Carl, it's what we've all been waiting for. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. All right, well, this one, sent in from, uh, from Sam in New York. Right, and it's about a fire that happened, right, in a really, do you know like in New York, they have loads of big buildings, don't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, really, really tall Sky ones and scrapers. stuff. Skyscrapers. Yeah. yeah. And, um, there was a fire in one of them, right? So, they did as expected, they called up, you know, fire brigade and that. They turned up, right, uh, fire engine parked up, it's like, right, where's the fire? And they said, oh, it's on like, uh, floor 100 or whatever. And they said, oh no, we've brought the fire engine with the short ladders. <laughs> Stupid mistake, but go on. Right, so anyway, so they said, well, how are we going to get up there? Yeah, yeah. Right. we can't. But if they've only brought the short ladders. No, we can't, let's go home. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we that was uh, monkey news. So, uh, they, so they said, well, there's a lot of, like, grippage. Because <laughs> <laughs> they, they made up words, the uh, firemen, yeah, the NYPD firemen. <laughs> there's a lot of grippage! On the yeah. side of the building <laughs> and stuff. So anyway, they said, why don't we just go and get a monkey, right? So they got, oh. they got a monkey. Whoa, Whoa, yeah. That's is a bit that, of a jump. Is they that just... policy now in, uh, in, in the New York Fire Department? Well, the, the, you know, you've got to think quick, haven't you, at the end of the day. If people are up there, you don't, yeah. you don't start querying if it works or not. You try everything that, that you can to, yeah. to help someone out, right? That's the first thing I thought of, was it a monkey? So it was quicker for them to go and get a monkey than to go back and get the long ladders? Why don't they get Spider-Man? <laughs> <Okay, laughs> fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> Why don't they get Spider-Man? <laughs> yeah, cool Spider-Man. Yeah, cool Spider-Man. So anyway, so they got, they got a monkey down there and they said, right, well, Where'd we, they get it from? We don't know, from the local zoo or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they said, look, let's, uh, you know, we've got to remember, there's, there could be someone up there, um, right. and it'll shock them a bit if, <laughs> if, if, a monkey, looking, if a monkey comes in, right? Yeah. So they said... Yeah, I don't think they'd care. Get it their, their building's on fire, they're not going to yeah. go, that's weird, there's a monkey in the window. <laughs> they'll be screaming, <laughs> save me! Oh, there's, there's a monkey. Oh, so, anyway, from them. so they said, right, we'll just get it a little small uniform and that, the smallest <laughs> you've got. <laughs> but, whoa, well, hold on, though. Actually, where are you going to get that? I'm going back to the, um going back to the uh, station. We'll get the long ladders while you're there. No time. No time. No, I, I no. bought the small uniform, I just didn't bring the long <laughs> <Yeah>. ladders. <laughs> you're an idiot!
So anyway, it goes up there. It's got all the kit on and what. It's yeah. got its little adder on and all that. It grabs. Uh, there was there was like a little person up there. Manages to grab that. No, a little. Who was up there then? It was just someone just a, that was just the right size for a monkey to be able to rescue, which is handy. Because <laughs> if it had been anyone else, like a larger person or a family, we'd all be screwed. Yeah. No, I don't know about the size of it, but it's just the story saying how, like, uh, it was quite a big, big monkey and that it was good at breaking down doors. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was good at climbing into small spaces and oh, stuff yeah. like that. Anyway, but it managed it's big, to... So it's big enough to carry a, a, a fully grown man, but small enough to climb through a, a, a cat flap. Yeah. Sure. So, uh, which is handy. So anyway, it managed to... You know, get have the person. boots on as well. It got got the person and everything, and uh, now it says it. You know, it's sort of uh, it's on call if if they ever need it again. <laughs> so. Sure, and if they ever get anywhere again and they've forgotten the long letters, but there's plenty of grippage, they just call for Coco. <laughs> <laughs> so that's this week's monkey news. Bollocks! Don't, what? Don't look at me like that. Oh, Carl, what? are you in a bad mood? The oh, Carl, I'm all dreaming right. of you. Right, do the last one. Do the last one. Carl's saying we're never doing this again because we don't appreciate it. Yeah, Carl, you don't know how good this feature is, mate. Right, last one. Yeah. Stocking Aitken and Waterman. Go on then, tell me about that one. What's that? What am I going to learn from this? Right, well, do you know the saying, put a sock in it? <laughs> <laughs> I like it already. Do you know the saying? Yeah. Right, well, do you know where it comes from? I assume it's shut up, so I'll stuff your mouth with a sock to well, shut you up. Years ago. Yeah. Sorry, am I right? No, not really. Ages ago. 1970s? Uh, 50s, okay. I'd say. Do you know the old, uh, I'd say! Do you know the old gramophone? Yeah. With the, with the big horn on it? Yep. Yeah. Right, well, those stereos didn't have a volume control on them. Right? So they'd be listening oh, so to you'd the put a sock in the And you'd put, mute. you'd put something like a sock. That's on. a real one, you see. That's taught me something. That's, that's good. That's yeah. excellent, Carl. That is the, that is the only one that counts, like chewing the fat. If they're true, I'm assuming they are. It works. It's of interest. I haven't got it verified yet, but that is educating Ricky. That's brilliant. I will say the other two were more entertaining. So you know, I do don't. You see, do you understand the distinction though between that one and Electrical Man? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, or <laughs> I've hit me head. I can hear you, Mum. Yeah. <laughs> can you see the difference though? Or uh, are not, all, all not three? Because I, when I read all three, I took something away. From all of them. What, what did you take, take away, away from the, the electrical two? man? I just thought, oh, imagine that. Imagine how annoying <laughs> that would be. <laughs> <laughs> but that's yeah. not education, is and it? And it's really? not taking anything no, but, away. Well, think about it, right? We take our lives for granted all the time, don't you? You get up in the morning, it's like, oh, I'll, I'll get up and walk for a shower. Some people can't walk, right? Yeah, yeah. This guy, he can't even have a bath. You know I mean? It's nice to have a bath, isn't it, when you've got time on your hands and yeah. you can relax. This guy can't even do that. He might be all right for a bit, but he's not really enjoying it because at any moment it could strike. Yeah. So, he can't even do that. He can't comb his hair because it keeps going to mess. Yeah. He can't watch <laughs> his hair. Talking you. No, he can't. <laughs> does, he, does he fight crime? What does he do with his powers? <laughs> yeah. I think he just has to sit around because no one, he can't work with machinery. Right. Because he'll probably blow a fuse. Yeah, so he just sits around. Think about it. What can he do? Mm. What normal things can he do? Skateboarding. Going for long walks. Yeah. Put a wetsuit on. Well, he can't do that. Why? Ooh, water and electric. No, no, wetsuits aren't actually wet. <laughs> They're dry right, initially. You just put a whole wetsuit on and walk round with flippers and A wetsuit's not like a dinner jacket that's like <laughs> really wet. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. all, all I'm saying is think, do you know what I mean? Oh, okay. And, right. and what was the and other the, girl, the girl, the girl death, four <laughs> years hits her head. Yeah. That's just, What uh, have you learned from that? What is that? Well, imagine, imagine how happy you'd be. Remember that time when I, uh, <laughs> I nearly died when I choked on a Mr. Freeze pop? <laughs> Right. No, what, tell what? us that one again. No, I told you, didn't I? Tell us it, again. Yeah, but the people will remember it and then it's- They annoying. weren't, they weren't listening. Go on. What happened? It was ages ago when my mum and dad used to go out shopping on a Friday. 1970s? Get, all, get, all, get the food in. <laughs> get, get a week's load of food in the cupboard and that. And we'd, uh, you know, they'd come in with all the food <laughs> and we'd all be like, oh god, you know, there's no food left on a Thursday really, so we'd all be hungry on the Friday by the time the food got in. Mm. I love that, but they like, wouldn't either. It's a, it's a, I imagine him like jackal puppies. Yeah. Just like, like, uh, 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 licking your parents' mouth for food as so, they come through the door. So they come in from the supermarket, they're emptying the box. Our kid had got some biscuits and what have you. <laughs> I, I, it's frenzy, uh, just a feeding frenzy, like pigeons. I grabbed the Mr. Freeze pop <laughs> and knocked it back really quick, but it hasn't, it wasn't frozen, so I knocked it back so it was like a liquid and it went down the wrong way, right, yeah. and I was choking, right, and I nearly died. It, it must have been about, how long can you go before you die? A couple of minutes a day. Right, I reckon about a minute fifty. <laughs> right, I was, uh, <laughs> I was really close to dying. 
How do you know you were close to dying? <laughs> me, uh, me. Did your life flash before you? No, but I just was like. <laughs> There's loads of instances of him eating pops. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, just, just 40 of those. Whatever, what, right? Anyway. What do you think you'd see <laughs> if your life flashed past you? What do you think <laughs> elements would stand out for you, do you think? <laughs> what, what? Uh, Start now. Go back. Zoom. What do you remember? What's the first thing you remember? As a kid. Yeah, yeah. just doing it right. now. Being in a hall and having our dog licking my face. <laughs> 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 That's your earliest memory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, zoom, what's the next one? Oh, yeah. Right, next one's oh, probably what? being at being at primary school with yeah. uh, Lindsay. Yeah, was little, that your girlfriend? Well, a little friend who was a girl. Sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and we used to have like tins with with letters in, and you'd have to write stuff. But anyway, what are we doing? <laughs> Right, so anyway. I'm intrigued by the right. dog that was licking your face. Well, been that. Can <laughs> <laughs> no, we work with that? Rock no, it's busters. a great feature. I just think you need to be a little bit more careful about what, what you consider oh, to be education. Oh, I'm going funny. I'm fed right. over. All right, well, right. I'll. We'll work on it next week. Play right. a tune and. What have you oh. got for us? Because we've got a big competition. We've, we've come got on! Do the competition. We've, we've only got 20 Yeah, well, come on, don't worry about it, Carl. Play a tune. We'll come back with Rockbusters. What are we playing? Let's play a bit of, uh, Tupac. Oh, that's what I'm coming out to, isn't it? Yeah, fight. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine it. Whack it up. Whack it up. Record or something. Well, we're on to another feature. Oh, what is this? This one is. Rick, were you not at the planning meeting? What is this? Go on. This is, uh, that song's got a good story in it. Oh, is this that- oh, God. So tell us the rules. Yeah. Right, the rule is that it's songs that we play on the show every week, and there's a lot of music out that they just keep saying the same I'll thing I'll just tell- what is it? What's the song, the song with the story this with week? A good story. What's the song with the story this week? Just say it. It's Gene Pitney, 24 Hours from Tulsa. Oh, I'm really sorry about this. If you're an XFM listener, we gotta listen to this. Go on. Well, do you know what it's about? Yeah, isn't he getting- trying to get back to his girlfriend? Yeah, he's been working away. Um. Yeah. Lives in Tulsa. He's been, he works quite far away. Right. And he's Would this back. save us having to listen to the song? Well, it's, it's always good to sort of hear the, hear the story it. before you hear the story. It's like it's like you <laughs> sure. know. You, you I like this before a film. Yeah. No, go on, go you, on. you might you might read the book before you see the film type thing. Yeah. So never in my case. <laughs> he's, he's working. He's working miles away. His missus is in, in Tulsa. He's driving back. Yeah. And he can't wait. He's to only about twenty four hours away, and he's, he's, he's about twenty four hours away, yeah. and he uh, he's a little bit tired on the way home. He's thinking, oh, I don't want to look a mess for when me and Mrs. See, sees me. Mm. So he says, uh, right, I'll uh, stay at a motel, get some energy and that, you know, for mm. when I uh, see you, have a Mutual shave. Bar. So he yeah. pulls over at a motel, yeah. and he's locking his car up, getting his suitcase out the back. There's a woman in the car park. He's like, <sighs> oh, she's all right. She looks at him, he thinks- Sex FM 104.1. I don't think the suitcase in the boot is mentioned in the song. I think that's maybe a 12 inch mix or something. I've not heard that. <laughs> well, basically, right? Oh, I don't remember- I'll play the record, for Christ's sake! Let them listen to it! I don't remember him saying, cool, she looks all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well done. Yeah. 24 Hours from Tulsa, Gene Pitney, Song with a Story. Hmm. You yeah. are quite upset by the, the lyrics of that song, aren't you? I just think it's a bit annoying that, um, <laughs> right, he, he loved this woman. Yeah. Um, everything's going fine. He's only 24 hours away from home. I don't know how, what sort of distance he's done. <laughs> but, but he can't wait to get home. <laughs> and all it took was some woman in the car park to sort of <laughs> give him the eye. <laughs> give her the eye. And every, all the, all the, all the, like, the good times he's had with his missus go out the window. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know. That's the dangers of falling in love with a prostitute. <laughs> Oh, God. What I like about it I though is the fact that he's writing this to his ex girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. It's like talking about rubbing it in. <laughs> yeah. I was kissing her and getting off with her. We were having a wild time. It didn't time. take as long as Carl did explain it though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but did, did you hear the very end? Because yeah. he's the loser. Because he said, and he can never go home again. Yeah. yeah. So even though he's got this new girlfriend and that. Yeah. And can't see his old mate. He has falling in love with can't it. Can't see his old mates anymore, <laughs> he said. Can't see his old mates anymore. Yeah. It's I a sober I, in lesson. I'll tell you a song. <laughs> next time you stop at the Granada services <laughs> <laughs> on the way back from, you know, Swansea, I'll be tell careful. You, there was a song that was a bit like that by Jim Reeves, um, probably at about the same time a little bit before, right? It was just called, um, just a hundred miles from Mary Ann, right? Mm. And, um, it was him and his horse going through the snow, and he right. was just under He stopped at a little chef. <laughs> no, yeah, he's faster than another donkey. <laughs> yeah. No, but, um, it's really sad. It just made me cry when I was little, cos he got there, right, and he, he wouldn't leave old Ben, the horse, mm. and then they, and he dies in the snow, and then so he dies in the snow. <laughs> he's gone again, he's gone again. <laughs> right, I get the same way teary-eyed with, uh, two little boys. Yeah. No, I don't like that. Why not? It's just... You think I'd leave you dying when there's room on this horse for two? Climb up here, Jack, we'll soon be flying back to the rank so blue. It was just like when they were playing with a little horse's head, uh, when they were little, 
and he was a soldier and he helped him and he returned the favour in a war, which to me is a bigger favour <laughs> than just letting him have a go on a hobby horse, but, uh, yeah. a lot, lot, lot braver, if you, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, last number one of the sixties as well. Christmas yeah. 1969. And it's, of course, based on truth. That it's actually, that's a history lesson right there. It is based it on is. fact. It's yeah. a famous, it famous is. person. I think it was Cromwell. Winston Churchill and Cromwell. Yeah, yeah it's Winston Churchill and Cromwell. Cromwell. Cromwell and Winston Churchill. <laughs> yeah, they were both lived ages ago, so they <laughs> lived at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Literally ages ago, so they lived at the same time. Yeah. Well, that's it then. Is it? Yeah. Were you listening to anything we were saying then, Carl? Did Did you understand any of that that me and Steve were just chatting you just about? Just saying then? that Rolf Harris uh, did a good song about right. someone who's got to carry on a horse. Right. And what what, what was about the stuff about Cromwell and Winston? Oh. Which, what do you think that was about? I, I missed that. We're doing humour. We're doing a little bit of humour. It was a satire on you saying ages, not being specific. Do you did did do you like that stuff we do? Yeah. <laughs> that's it then. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of sleeping. Uh, uh, oh, man alive, I went to see the last part of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Why? Well, it's like a family thing now. Every every Christmas, we, my family and I have been going to see the Lord of the Rings, the next instalment. It's like a family thing. What will you do if they keep making them? Oh, I tell you, I've wasted now about ten hours of my life with that tripe. You can never get that back. You can back. never get that back. That's what Peter Jackson owes me. Ten hours now he owes me of my life. It is absolute drivel. Why well, I know. I, we've said this before, I don't want to harp on again about it, but I cannot fathom why everyone is so excited and loves these films so much. Like you say, people review saying it's the best film ever. ever. I think this is the greatest movie I'll ever see. And I don't... It's like they go, but look at all the fight sequences. But Tolkien being up there in literature, like, you know what I mean? It's sort of like Shakespeare. Tolkien. No! No, 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 But what is it that he's writing about exactly? I don't know. Little midget fellas who can't get shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder, I mean, I've got big feet. I've got size 14. I can get shoes. Oh, God. So but not know, from male but order. I know, it, it is like, it's like, um, uh, 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 Harry Potter taken seriously. Yeah. But I know who's watching it. It's like these people who are watching it are obviously nerds. People who live in Forbidden Planet. They love it. They can't believe their luck. It's but that's like, the core audience, but it's obviously bigger than that. But then, but then it's also people who can think they have a go, like menopausal women thinking, well, I'll write a book then. <laughs> the, the, gl Globlin came into the cave. <laughs> exactly. Right? And, and they're, and they're sort of like 13 year old sons who've never shown an interest in anything except glue now <laughs> yeah. writes orc <laughs> yeah, exactly. on his exercise book and so they're loving it it's like <laughs> yeah it oh it's God. uniting bringing people together but at the end right i mean it's taken them now like nine hours to get from one part of middle earth to the end to the other end so they can get destroy the ring the evil ring there. did they do a line was it i don't know what they, what they little Chinese feathers. and um it's taken them nine hours of their time and my life as yeah. well to get there and, uh, at the end, they, they all say goodbye. They're doing real them. time. Why didn't oh. they edit it? <laughs> oh. I mean, that's what it felt like. It really, <laughs> yeah. it can't have, it must have taken them less time, you know, within the sort of logic of the book to get there <laughs> than it did to me to watch it. <laughs> and, um, at the end, they, they sort of say goodbye to each other and they all hug. So there's like, you know, there's little midget one, you know, Frido, Fr Frodo, Frida. Saying goodbye to you know Bjorn. What are and they Benny. called in the thing? Because uh, are they PC in it? Are they called like midgets and dwarves? No, they're called uh, hobbits. Oh, are they? Yeah. So we should call small people hobbits from now yes. on. That's what they are, just to make it kind of topical, and they'll like that as well. Give them sort of you know. So if you see a little on the way home, if you saw a little midget fella, four foot <laughs> midget fella, just call, say, "Excuse me, hobbit." Yeah. Okay, that's call fine. Call him then. Frodo. <laughs> <laughs> Good, Frodo. <laughs> He'd like it. He'd love it because everyone loves the Lord of the Rings. They love it. No, everyone loves the Lord of the Rings. In, the, the, end, the, in yeah. the end, if you ever get to the end, they uh, they all hug each other. They say, well, basically Frodo has to say goodbye to all his other little fellas, and so he's <laughs> hugging them. I don't know how many of them there are, and he's hugging them, right? And it is the most interminable thing I've ever seen. It's like the music's playing. They look into each other's eyes. He hugs them. He hugs. They pull back. They look at each other again. They're like, oh, we'll never see each other again. Then he hugs the next one, and the, I was just screaming. I was thinking, hug, just one big group hug. Yeah. Then we can get out of like it. Like an American football team. Exactly. Just go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, knock Not heads. each individual one. Oh. I mean, it's dragging on God. and on and on. And apparently on the DVD, there's like an extra sort of 20 minutes of extra footage of scenes he's cut out. Who's what? watching this tripe? Uh, Who cares? I don't know. I genuinely, have I we, couldn't. Have we lost some of our popularity by slagging off Lord of the Rings? I don't care. Screw them. If you love it, if you, if you can't live without Lord of the Rings, screw you. I don't want you as a listener. I can't. <laughs> Fathom it. Really, really, it's not like being, I'm trying to be wayward or controversial. I can't get my head around the popularity. But doesn't Harry Potter annoy you as well, though? Yeah, but it's, at least it's kind of over in an hour and a half. Is it? I haven't seen it. I went to the toilet three times during the course of the film. Really? It's unbelievable. The woman sat next Sexy to me. Sexy stuff in it, was it? <laughs> 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 Some of those little pixies with the pointed ears. <laughs> it just took me back to all, you know, Mr. Spock. Oh. <laughs> 
All those glorious days. But, um, <laughs> oh, oh, it really is just... I mean, have you seen any of them? You've not bothered. I've seen one, <sighs> and it was long, and I thought it was nicely filmed, and I thought, well, okay, I'll just get through it. I think, I even think, it, you know, uh, it was just a list of, oh, and here come the orcs. <laughs> exactly. Right, okay, we see the orcs now. Yeah. But it's like people go, look at the amazing <sighs> fight sequences, the amazing immense battles. And it's true, he's got thousands of actors and stuff on horses, brilliant, but I'm not impressed by good time management. No. Well done, he's got all those people together, he's orchestrated it, well done. But yeah. he's got, it's got to be more interesting. My friend summed it up, he said that the Lord of the Ring films, they're like the film equivalent of an Enya song. Yeah. And that to me is exactly yeah, right. Lots exactly. of billowing dresses, <laughs> slow yeah, mo yeah. musical moments. <laughs> that's good. People that's riding that's majestically good. on horses. <laughs> Enya. Constantly oh. riding majestically everywhere. Dido's taken over from Enya in that well, so. I've got a confession to make. Go on. I like that latest Dido song. Oh, play a song. Let me I, I know, I know, I know, I know. I thought I'd never. I don't Rick, know what to say. On? Let me explain something to you about Dido. Oh God! Biting bottles. Richard Ashcroft on XFM. We've had an email which I think I suppose puts my hatred of Lord of the Rings into perspective. It says, "Yeah, you may have spent ten hours of your life wasting uh, your time with uh, Lord of the Rings, but imagine how many hours of people's lives we, this show, have uh, wasted." For our <laughs> yeah, instance. that's true. Yeah, I suppose it does. You know, balance. <laughs> Two out. hours uh, a week <laughs> for, for a couple of years. <laughs> we can never give that back. To it's, 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 I know. It says it mounts up, doesn't it? Yeah. We should be doing some kind of community service for people, you know, maybe pop around. Well, this is community it. service, isn't it? Because Carl, it makes his brain work a little bit, True. and it, you know, it keeps him, keeps him, uh, you know, from going on holiday, <laughs> sort of for two hours a week, which yeah. is good. Uh, we um, spent New Year's Eve together, me and Carl. Oh yeah. It's me and Jane, Carl and Suzanne. Her hair doesn't really look like Dave Hill. I, I must, <laughs> must you, confess. You didn't see it when it was done, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she had the coat on that you bought her to say sorry though, didn't she? Yeah. And uh, Martin Freeman and his girlfriend Amanda mm -hmm. uh, and uh, 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 Glyn and um, we all went for a meal mm -hmm. and then we all went back to ours and uh, sort of uh, saw in the new year and all that and saw the fireworks and then in the wee hours when just the drinking seriously starts, we started playing parlour games mm -hmm. and do you know that game when you go around Started off like with um, pop bands or rock bands. You have to uh, say a, a, a band, and then they have to come up with a band immediately that starts with the letter that your, that your band ended with. Right. So suede, e, erasure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Go around. Yeah. We did that, right? And then we had to change that because people were sort of using this, the, the same ones crop up. So I said we'll just do animals. We we're doing animals. And uh, I gave Carl one. I think Carl panicked. He had to go, do, do it quite quick. I want to just test it on you. Okay. Um, is this bands? What, what is it? Uh, I said. Now what did I say? Uh, so, oh, so, yeah, so it, basically, I said an animal, and it ended with e. Okay. So I go. I go skate. Eagle. There you go. Yeah, but hang on. I think I was the third person. Right. So think of another one. Uh, eel. Yeah, I had that. Yeah, I did that one. Alright. Right. Yeah, a lot of E's coming up. Elephant. Yeah. Do you know what Carl said? Go on. Ready? Yep. Egg. <laughs> 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 oh, in a sense, I, I suppose. Went, Egg? He went, yeah. I went, no, wrong. He went, well, it, what? And then Martin came to his rescue and went, well, what is an egg? Animal, vegetable, miserable. I said, well, it's animal, but it's a we can't have egg. But would you have a tadpole? Well, uh, yes. Is yeah, because it's a large stage. Yeah, no, but egg, you might as well have leg. <laughs> or eye. Uterus. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't count. <laughs> egg, you panicked. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, I still think I'm right. Well, you're not right. Mm. We, were, we were naming, you know. It's a bit of fun though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You mean, why obey the rules? It's exactly, yeah. No, that, that is true. Don't that bother is the true. rules. That is true. You had the fireworks in the year, did you? Yeah. What, we, you had them yourself? No, you no, no, no. You could stare across the river, we could see them. But, uh, actually, very impressive. And I'll tell you what, they got it right this year. Instead of two hours of letting off fireworks, people were going, oh, can we go now? It was three minutes, and they spent a million pounds on the three minutes. Yeah. And that's it. That's all you can stand, three minutes of fireworks. Oh. To me, fireworks are like watching Lord of the Rings. Exactly. Absolutely. I've never been impressed as a child. Never been impressed. I've never been impressed as an adult. But 
a big bang, a huge big explosion, that'll do me. I used to go to, they used to have little community uh, fireworks displays at Christmas, things like that, near our school, maybe in the school or at the local kind of community centre. And I used to go along to them with the family and everything, get the sparklers, and they would have the fireworks, <laughs> oh, and that would be, and I was just bored silly. And I always thought that if the guy organising it had wheeled out an enormous firework, yeah. climbed in, gone, last one to the moon's a bender, <laughs> and then shot off. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been, yeah, that'd have been, oh, good, yeah. But it's oh, just interminable. Do you reckon I could take out that church? Yeah, from exactly. Here? Yeah. yeah, money on it. Go yeah, on, yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be worth it, wouldn't it? But little, zoom, another one. Oh, Christ. So a friend of mine was telling me that they once had some indoor fireworks. Which apparently is just, I mean, imagine that. What? Who needs indoor fireworks? Well, I think that's just little, yeah. I think w one of the things, we got indoor fireworks once when I was little, and I remember one of the fireworks was that little celluloid fish that you put in the palm of your hand. Of course. And he goes, oh, future. you're sexy. <laughs> yeah. What, it curled up because the heat of your hand? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. You're dead. It didn't curl. He, actually, it's granddad. He's dead. <laughs> yes. His hands are cold. Oh, no. That's the only way that that would be. Oh, yeah. So well, that's the only test. How did you discover he was dead? We used one of those predictive fish. It came out dead. <laughs> yeah. Just flat. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a good time, though, Carl? What, at your place? Yeah. Yeah, it was a good night, wasn't it? We danced, didn't we? A bit of a dance. What, the two of you together? Yeah, Amanda had got one of those, uh, DVD films. Uh, no, straight to, you know, DV cameras. Camera. It goes right. straight to, um... DVD. Yeah, okay. amazing, right? And, uh, Carl was doing his moonwalking. I was sort of doing some sort of jazz step, wasn't I? Sort of like yeah. Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ended up jumping up on the couch with both feet and falling straight back on my back. Of course you did. I can't believe I was all right. Yeah. What's the chance of that? It's when you're drunk that it, you sort of like... You revert to childhood and you sort of bounce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, luckily. Is I that DVD gonna be available in the shops later this <laughs> week? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if you could have a superpower, like Superman, what would your superpower be? Can I suggest consciousness? <laughs> yeah. Can I have the power of thought? Remember, you've already got opposable thumbs. <laughs> Uh, that, cross that one off the list. <laughs> oh, go on, Carl. There are so many to choose from. Telepathy, X-ray vision. Flight. Invisibility. Choose it wisely. Strength. <laughs> intelligence. But, but why have I been picked? Oh, for, for God's <laughs> sake! No, no, but I'm just saying... It's say, Rob's question no, for no, you. But I'd just say, does anyone else want this? Or... Do you know what I mean? Oh, no. what because, do you wish you could no, do that's no, impossible because, is the question, no, because, or, uh, uh, out of, what? Because, what do you mean? Because with that comes a responsibility, <laughs> is what With I'm enormous saying. power does come great responsibility. So, would it, w well, would you like spidey senses, is that what you're saying? Uh, come on, Carl, you know what these superheroes, because they can, they can, I know, but it they always, freeze they, things, they're they never they... happy, are they? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Spider-Man that wanted to tell that girl that he had, he could climb walls and that, he's like, I can't. Superman didn't never told Lewis and that. Who's <laughs> Lewis? Who's Lewis? Lewis? Who's Lewis? Yeah. Ah. It's just a pen pal of Superman's. <laughs> Lewis! His little secret <laughs> chum! Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alright, Superman. Hello, Lewis. What are you doing? Uh, uh Superman. Uh, uh, who are you? I can't tell you, Lewis. <laughs> Brilliant. You know, Hulk. He wasn't happy. Hulk! <laughs> he wasn't happy! <laughs> It's true, he's got a theme. <laughs> he has got a theme. There's not many happy superheroes, are but there? leaving aside the superheroes you're already aware of, yeah. what superpowers do you want? You don't have to fight crime with it, Carl. Just, let me just remind you of some of the other things. Invisibility. All the time, though, or can I sort of turn that on and off? Let's say you could turn it on and off. Would that interest you? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Right. <laughs> okay, and what would you do with this power of invisibility? Just sort of... Wander about and not just not get seen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brilliant power! It's a brilliant and, and, why, it's, put, and it's put to such it's brilliant use. use. <laughs> it's really well done! And why <laughs> why would you want to walk around and not be seen in that? Uh what would you gain from that? Dunno, you could sort of <laughs> go in go in shops when they're shut. So you don't have to go. How would crowds. you get in? Just get in just before they lock up. Oh, yeah! And How would you get out? Wait till the morning. Brilliant. So, hang on. So, that's your use of invisibility. <laughs> yeah. They found the power of invisibility. <laughs> you want to sneak oh, into... Never no. mind. No, hang on, let's just... You want to sneak into HMV, right, wait for 12 hours, <laughs> and then buy something. <laughs> ah, I love it! Just so that you don't have to be in there with other people. Do you know what? I don't want it. 
I don't, I don't want a power. Why not? Because I, I just don't think it'll do me any good. <laughs> I think it's more of a hindrance. <laughs> It's like, just think of his presence. We've given you a go, a trip into space, and the chance to be invisible. Mm-hmm. Not happy with any of them. Yeah, he, what he wants is a voucher for HMV. Yeah, 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 he just wants some tokens for a record shop. Just going through a few more of these uh, emails. This one's from uh, Kent from Nova Scotia, Canada. He says, uh, Carl, um, he was, he's wondering if you've got any personal mantras that you could pass along. Uh, for instance, he, he uh, reminds us of Ben Franklin's famous uh, mantra, waste not, want not. Who, who said that? Ben Franklin. What was he, what did he do? <laughs> what was his job? Benjamin Franklin was a, a well-respected American politician from the 1800s. He was he, a, a he sort of thinker, ex- a philosopher, ex- a, a scientist, deeply yeah. respected. Um, he's also on a money. political figure. He features on he's the on a dollar bill, the dollar bill, or something. Yeah. So he's you no, know, he's one of the great um, sort of American Enlightenment thinkers, uh-huh. and he came up with the mantra "waste not, want not." You must know "waste not, want not." I mean, that's just. Do you I'll, understand I'll, the I'll, phrase "waste not, want not"? Uh, no, not really. No. What, what does it mean? I've never used it. It's yeah. like. Uh, don't throw stuff away because you might need it and therefore you you won't be wanting anything because you didn't throw it away. So he was a bit of a well, hoarder. if you don't waste food, for instance, then <laughs> you will... a bit of a hoarder! <laughs> <laughs> for God's sake. No, no, but I'm just saying, you know, he, he's a man in power. Is that the best thing he, he ever said? No, I'm sure he came up with many, many profane so things. He did experiments in electricity and conducting electricity, all sorts. But, but that's, that impresses me more. Invent electricity than someone. He didn't just... invent electricity. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute! Don't impress you more than what? Just, just, just saying. Well, it's not want not. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's that good. It's not even catchy. Uh, yeah. How would you word it? I'd just say, whoa, whoa, don't, don't be chucking that out. You might need that later. <laughs> <laughs> don't be chucking that out. You might need that later. Carl Pilkington. Whereas some would argue that waste not want not is, is perhaps a little bit more pithy, a little bit we more. We should uh, go through great say- sayings and phrases and, sa- and say if he could, Well, firstly, yeah. does he know what they mean? And then secondly, can he improve them? That would be brilliant. Well, we'll, we'll make another one we'll we'll do that next time. Right, uh, so, uh, um, oh, let's see. Okay, uh, Winston Churchill. Um, never have so few done so much for so many. What do you think of that? How would you. Do you know what that means? I'd just be annoyed if I was one of them who, who gave a lot. For a few or whatever, right? No, gave a lot for so many. You were, yeah, if you were one of those few yeah, that I, gave so much for so many, i.e., it means the, these these few good men, their actions freed the world. They freed the world. They have an impact on yeah. the, every person but, in the world, and they brilliant. they were few yeah. brave men. Yeah, and that's yeah. what he's saying. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if I was one of them men who who gave up his life, right? I'd want a name check. I don't, I don't want to be bungled in with everyone else who is saying a load of blokes gave it their lives. Well done on that. See you later. That's brilliant. Did you just say bungled in? <laughs> yeah, bungled in, yeah. You made up a word. You don't want to be bungled in. You made up a word. See, that's it, you see. We've been looking for it. That's original. That's Carl Pilkington. I don't want to be bungled in. Right, do you know we've, we've chatted about uh, charities before, haven't we? Sure, yeah. Done a lot of stuff on that, right? It's coming back from Manchester, right? Got off the train, Houston. Yeah. Right? Got the train, walking through the, the, the busy bit and stuff. So this fella stood there, right? Good charity worker. Yeah. Right? He, he, nice looking fella, he's got his suit on, a tie and everything, quite respectable and that, right? Looked down at his bucket, all the all money's been put in the bucket and that, yeah. right? On the front of the bucket, right? He says collecting for the homeless at Christmas. Now, why can't they do that? <laughs> what, the homeless? The, the homeless people. Why is some fella taking his time out, right, his own time where he could be at home? Why? why <laughs> <laughs> some of us have got homes to go to. Yeah. Why, why, do you know what I mean? What, what do you think, just give them the buckets? Well, what are the homeless people doing whilst he's doing that, <laughs> is what I'm saying. What, what have they got on the timetable? Cut out the middleman. <laughs> Cut out the middleman. What would prevent a homeless person, an, an entrepreneurial or homeless person, just getting a bucket and writing yeah. that on their themselves? Could I suggest something? Um, hunger. Uh, some drug addiction, uh, traumas, often mental illness, um, just possibly too too depressed to get up, put a suit on, and go to Houston Station with a nice bucket with some writing on it. And then, right, right I was thinking thinking about that, right, and I was walking down walking down the street in London with Suzanne, saw a little homeless. Oh, well, I didn't see the homeless bloke, right? I saw a leg, right, right sticking out of a doorway. <laughs> but here we go, right? Walk past it. Right. You're not going to believe this. Go on. Homeless 
Yeah. Chinese fella. I've never seen one of them. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not having a go, right? But have you ever seen... Uh, do you know what I mean? That, that was a shock I really to don't think I have. I think he's got me there. I, I, I hate to say it, but I must say, I can't remember ever seeing a homeless uh, Chinese person. Weird, what? isn't it? <laughs> what, I, what, that, I actually said, I was at walk, walk past and I said to Suzanne, did you see that? She went, what? I said, just look back there. She said, what? I said, that homeless fella, look back at him. She said, what? I said, he's Chinese. <laughs> and she said, yeah, good point. <laughs> good point! Of course she did! She, she said that to shut you up. She didn't yeah. want to get into a conversation with you! Rick, it's that time again. It's what the whole world is waiting for now. Is every it Monkey week. News? It is Monkey News. Please perform live the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey News, you there we go. Right then, well, uh, got an email from John. Um, you know, if you've got any monkey news going on in your area. Uh, <laughs> just let us know. God, just, amazing! Just, but there's a, there's a TV channel in, uh, in Moscow, mm. right? And I think they had a bit of bad luck or something, a lot of redundancies and that, right? And whoever was in charge of it got a bit mental and got rid of loads of people. Right? Yeah. And uh, they come in the next day and they were like, right, are we ready to go live and that? And someone comes running in with a clipboard saying, <laughs> we, we haven't got any people left, right, <laughs> to present. That's this such is nonsense. <laughs> right. Right, tell you what. Right, okay, carry on, carry on. So, so he goes, what? If just one employee <laughs> turns out to be Simeon and is doing a good job, I'm never doing this radio show again. So this TV channel, you know, he's, he's having a lot of problems and that. He, they've got to go live, right? He's like, oh, what am I going to do? Anyway, for some reason, right, <laughs> there's a chimp knocking about. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, that's the key piece of information, no, but, but we didn't get it. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Anyway. that was in a film. <laughs> and they're going, well, I, I can't see where this plot goes. Well, he's just there. He's so, just there. So anyway, so he sort of says, get, get it in a suit, right? Why? So, <laughs> because they're running out of ideas, the clock's ticking, they've got to go live with something. What do you mean? What, what he's is presenting? It a news program? Well, he's listen, presenting. Listen, it's a chat show. <laughs> I am not. They can't again, talk. Don't have a go at me. Have a go at John, who sent this in. Right. And, and be this quiet. Is... Let's hear it. Let's hear it again. So anyway, so like I say, so going live. Five, four, three, two, one. Whatever. Chimp sat there on the chair. Um, he was like, "Look, let's just get through tonight's show and worry about this tomorrow." <laughs> right. Look, so they put a chimp in a suit. Where, what, was that handmade or were the sleeves a bit short on him? You idiot, think! So, so anyway, it's sat there, right? And they're going, right, here we go. Good luck, everyone, right? Yeah. Uh, chimp's there. What programme is this? It's a chat show. Oh, who's, whose chat show is it? Well, it's, it's the monkeys. I like the fact that it's the monkeys now, is it? <laughs> Look, I, like, say, hey. I like the fact that they put the chimp in a suit. It's like, no one's going to take this chat show seriously if he's not dressed <laughs> up. If he's not smart. <laughs> slovenly, look at that, <laughs> slovenly ape. So anyway, oh. let's, 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 you know, get to the point of it and that, right? So anyway, so they, they go on, right? It's all going, it's going Didn't brilliant. happen. There's no but, way this happened. Here's a so, fundamental so anyway. question. How was the chimp asking questions? Um, not that sure about that bit, but <laughs> all I've got is the stuff that was on the news site for this. Like I say, I, I've given But it's you, rubbish! Yeah, but I've given you some facts. No, I've told no, no. you, there's a TV channel in Moscow that's having problems, right? I've, I've explained that no, bit. No, it's this rubbish. They've got rid of the presenters, the monkey sat there, right? Don't worry about it anyway, I'm telling you, it goes alright. Right, right. 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 Oh, so it's anyway, okay, in case you were worried, Rick. He's sat there, right? <laughs> Absolutely. They get shit. to the first break, they're like, can't believe it, right? <laughs> you know, viewing figures and that, they're loving it, right? What, no, what, so how did they know the viewing figures? In the break, please and, do not interrupt and, the news. What, does it, what did the chimp do the in the it, first half? They, they, had a, they had a big guest on that, that week and what And what does he do, just talk to Who himself? They walked off. So Cher comes on. I'm not sure, but say if it is Cher, right? No, right. what? the main gaffer is like going, oh, Cher's going to go mental at us, right, for putting Say it is, no, it is Cher. It, no, in his mind, it's Cher sitting there talking to a chimp in a suit. So anyway, she And they're comes filming off. it for Moscow TV, and the ratings are going through the roof. <laughs> Presumably there's a translator, because Cher doesn't speak either Russian or chimp. <laughs> <laughs> so she comes off, right, and the bloke who's in charge is like, she's going to go mad. She's going to go mad here. She walks up, she goes, I love that. Right? <laughs> 
so that's one of the best interviews, right? So anyway, we decided, right? It went so well, kept him on. He's still there. I love the fact that Cher was an idea that Steve threw up, and now she's going. I love that. I love that. I love that, Jim. Get oh. me back there. I want to go to Moscow. Never mind. Don't, Unbelievable. Don't, don't have a go at me. Have a go at John. But you know, if you've got any monkey news, send it in. Doves caught by the river on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington, doing the button stuff. Actually, becoming a little bit of a producer. He's Carl, yeah. He's a bit of work, hasn't he? He's come up with a few games, and um, we made him. He's getting a bit stressed when we shout at him because the mics don't work or it's hanging off. It was too hot in here. He couldn't get the uh, thing working last week. I mean, I, I, I really would throw this studio away and get a real one. Yeah. Well, I'd get one of those ones you can buy for, uh, for like tenner from Argos. Argos, yeah, like Bon Tempe. You, my <laughs> first studio. My, yeah, my first studio. Uh, a little picture studio. of Carl on it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That'd be great, yeah. great pro product placement. What have you got this week for us, Carl? Because again, we've put very little. We, we, I, I said I would put. I'm not hungover, but I've put nothing in. Rick, have you then. done any work for this week's show? No, no. None whatsoever? No, 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 no. Okay, Carl, what have you got? What have you got? Quick. Keep them, they're, they're, it's five past, they're turning over already, they're finding other things. Oh, melon, there's right. Melon Sue, there's well, everything. Well, go on. We've got, um, after the success of last week, uh, Rock Busters. Okay. We're doing that again. <laughs> Sorry, uh, were you on the same show as that? <laughs> I thought it went all right last week. Yeah, yeah okay. Good. Right, so we'll be doing that. Got some nice prizes, which, uh, Oh, what prize, what well, arbitrary films have you got? Have you got, have well, you got don't, 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 oh, no, don't tell them yet, don't no, tell them. No, I'll tell you what, if it's Children of the Corn 2, then oh. can I, can I enter this competition? There you go. Come no, on, no, no, no. What is that? He's got oh. some, uh, different prizes. I, uh, maybe I should, uh, I should just tease the audience with those a bit later, Rick, because okay, there's yeah. some exciting stuff there. It's gonna be yeah. amazing. Yeah. Right, so I, I, don't give, I don't wanna give too much away, Rick, but one of them is a copy of The Office on DVD. <laughs> <laughs> is anything, uh, like, maybe Burt Reynolds' uh, straight-to-video film? <laughs> Are there any of those in Sadly, there? Sadly, nothing quite as classy. Fist. Yeah. Right? Oh, so go we've got, we've got that lot to give away. Yeah. We've yeah. got, um, go on. Educating, up, quick, quick. educating Ricky, where yeah, teach us stuff. Because you taught me that people used to eat tomatoes off lead plates in the land of Narnia last week, which was good. Yeah. No, it's only tomatoes they are for lead plates, by the way. Why why didn't they think other fruits and vegetables were poisonous? Bec no, it wasn't. It was because tomatoes had acid in them. That was the problem. You see, you don't, don't, don't listen. listen, right? Well, lots of fruits have acid in them. Yeah, but they didn't eat them back then. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't have bloody kiwi fruit and stuff. Don't to do say that bloody. Then. You're a producer. Come on, you'll start, I'll start saying uh, shit and cock and stuff, you start saying bloody. Tits. Play, uh, play the... Hang on, right, and- Go on, play the mock- Keep him hooked, right? Yeah. We've still got, a uh, Song with a Story in it. Yeah. You don't want to play Babushka, do you? He doesn't like the idea of Babushka, I told him that as a story. Yeah. And, uh, he doesn't like it. A uh, devil went down to Georgia, someone uh -huh. sent in. You know, he's looking for a soul to steal. Yeah. Doesn't like it, won't you like that? Do you know the song? Not particularly. Right, it's a- it's a song about a lad who goes into a pub <laughs> on a, a normal night. And <laughs> it's it. It's in, uh, sort of the deep south of America, yeah. New Orleans, something like that. It's, you know, it, it's not the old Kent Road. Right, okay. Okay, go on. He goes into a pub, there's yeah. a devil in there, oh. he's getting a bit cocky, he's had a bit to drink and he's saying, do you wanna, uh, sort of gamble your soul away with me and we'll see who's best at playing the violin. Yeah. And, uh, I think the lad wins in the end, but it, it's not real enough. Where's the one? Oh. What, what? Not like the shadow that got fed up and started pushing kids off bikes? Rick, I think you're in referring to, to stuff that no one made sense of yeah, last week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't think well, we should okay, refer to okay, last let's, week. Let's, let's play Mock Turtles, Can You Dig It? And then we'll come back and we'll talk about that. Uh, and <laughs> I've come to the conclusion, Rick, we should never refer to stuff Carl said in the past because it would just take too long to explain. <laughs> okay, alright, that's fair enough. Mock Turtles. Can you dig it? <laughs> Indeed. What I've done there is I've taken the title and I've done it like I'm talking to someone. Sure. Uh, sure. XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky with me, Steve Merchant Hello and there. Carl Pilkington. So, Carl, how excited are you about, uh, Ricky's celebrity boxing match? Are you <laughs> gonna be there? Are you gonna come along? Are you aware of this? You're aware of all this, aren't you? Yeah, I've heard about we can't, it. Yeah. We can't name the opponent, um, because that is. should be a surprise. Oh. Be, but anyway, it's, it's for, it's for charity, is it? It's a yeah, charity, uh, yeah. boxing match. Yeah. And, uh um, I always wanted to beat someone up for charity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a good cause. But, uh, yeah. the thing about Ricky is, I, I mean, I, I don't know if you're aware of this, Carl, but, Ricky's one of these men who, who, you know, he doesn't mind sort of, you know, making a fool of himself on the telly and being funny and stuff, but if people said to him, right, you can either be Britain's funniest man, universally agreed that you're the funniest man in Britain, or 
you could like beat some gangsters up in a pub, <laughs> he would go that. Oh, please, just let me beat people up in a pub, and like, and like, maybe like, maybe like an old man's being hassled, like by some street youths, <laughs> and, and you come in and like smash some yeah. bottles over their heads and sort of okay, sort it out against the odds, though. Against the odds, yeah. There's about five of them against you. Sure, sure, sure. Because he's got this kind of get to the point. Come on. Well, the point is, he quite likes the idea of being sort of macho, and you know what I mean, and kind of a tough guy, you know, because he grew up in a rut. like boxing. Yeah, I mean, you'd love the idea of people going, don't mess oh, with Ricky Gervais. If, if someone said, don't mess with Ricky Gervais, that would be exciting, wouldn't <laughs> it? Never mess with Ricky Gervais, he will destroy you. <laughs> That's what you'd love. <laughs> and, go on. Because you used to do karate, didn't you? You were a karate. Oh, I used to go, yeah, yeah. You, and yeah. you got, didn't you get all the way up to white belt? <laughs> <laughs> No, I was one away from black, and then I stopped because oh, that's right. what started working. Nights. Oh yeah, one, See? one step away from black. I was yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, I was chatting to him last night in the pub because uh, obviously the boxing match is in about five weeks' time, I think, isn't it? Yeah. And well, um, uh, anyway, <laughs> he uh, was sat there, Carl. I don't know if you know this about Ricky, but uh, he's taken to smoking cigars. No, I do. Are I'm you the, aware of this? I had the occasional one. He got a cigar. He got like a Monte Cristo out <laughs> of his pocket. It was ludicrous. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like George Papard. <laughs> for the A2 was it? It was <laughs> pathetic. And he was drinking Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> and I was saying to him, but aren't you doing a boxing match soon? Hmm. And um I haven't started training yet. I'm starting training next week. You're not concerned that it's gonna uh, gonna have an impact? Well, I, I mean, mean what I'm saying is you know like the, the boxers that you know they normally put in some effort and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like training. years of training. Yeah, I mean what you know. Getting I mean? up at five thirty. Yeah. Yeah. Because you as you reminded me of um of Frank Bruno when he was preparing for Panto. <laughs> <laughs> Not when he was- I don't think he even again. smoked then, did no. he, and drank? No. So I don't- uh, what's your thinking, Rick? I'm- cause I'm- cause you know you're gonna get your face pummeled. You know that- I mean, you're gonna- they're gonna destroy you. You haven't got a chance. That's why I left it this long, so I definitely lost my looks. But you haven't got a chance. You have gonna, a laugh. Have you ever been ta- have you ever you taken a punch to the face? Is this- is- sorry, sorry, listen, sorry. But I'm genuinely is, concerned. Is this- is this sort of psychological training, because- No, it's not psychological training, it's a warning. <laughs> I've spoken to your <laughs> friends and your loved ones and they all agree we've got a petition going. <laughs> We're sending it to the BBC. Please do not let this man box. <laughs> Anyone no. else, please. But you're no. just, they're gonna beat you. Uh, seriously, are you, I mean, have you ever had a punt, like a boxing glove in the face? No. I think you should let us punch you next week live on the show. You'd like that, wouldn't you? No, because I just, well, because you've got to get used to it. Because I think you're gonna either, um, cry, <laughs> just start crying inc uncontrollably, or just run away. You'll just run away. You'll just climb out the <laughs> ring and run off. Yeah, this is the same tactic that Ali used against yeah. Foreman in Rumble exactly. in the Jungle. But I just- Oh I mean, dear. I, Cause I think a boxing glove, cause I know you're wearing like huge, aren't you wearing like huge kind of foam boxing No, we're not, no, I thought, no we're not. We're using um, uh, not a normal, um, uh, amateur ones. Are you wearing, are you wearing boxing gloves like those ones they used to have on Gladiators? <laughs> when everyone bites the dust? <laughs> <laughs> Those big foam <laughs> yeah. gloves. You just slap each other in the face. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And a big sumo suit. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, yeah, I should be okay. Do you get to, uh, you get some kind of head protection, do you? Do you yeah, uh, yeah, 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 it's amateur. It's amateur. So it's, it's, it's amateur, you say? No, I mean- So it's, it's not, there's no, no title no, here. No, 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 I mean, um, I think that amateur is head guards, vest, and, um, 16 ounce gloves or something, as right. opposed to professional, which is no vest, bare chested. Oh, right. maybe I can ask to fight bare chested because I'd quite like to show off my yeah, body. Yeah, if I, if I could. I think wrestling is really good <laughs> for you. I think, but I don't mean like those kind of like The Rock and people like that. I'm talking about Big Daddy, Giant Hicks, yeah, that yeah. kind of. That would be good. Where you can just throw where, yourself where, on someone. Where they can sort of like be nearly dying, but then they can do a stomach butt. Yeah, exactly. well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stomach, stomach to butt. stomach. That's a good move, isn't it? In <laughs> British wrestling, I always like that one. <laughs> yeah, and oh, I think wrestling. Dear. Like, like two elephant seals fighting yeah. over a female. Is it true that you've spent, knowing you, you've spent more time deciding what tune you're gonna enter the ring to? I wanna come out to California by Tupac and Dr. Crow. I think that'd be really I good, wouldn't it? I think that's embarrassing. And I'm gonna come out with loads of, um, little midgets to make me look really big. Sure, sure. I mean, I don't know what the BBC think of that, but yeah. it might be a- I don't know, I, 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 maybe we should take some suggestions as to songs that would be perhaps more appropriate. Okay. Um, I get knocked down, but I get up again. A fatty <laughs> bum bum. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, play a record, Carl. It is gonna be- He's dissed me. It's gonna be He's pathetic. dissed me. Next yeah. week, take a f you take a punch of the jaw next week. <laughs> on air. <laughs> Cheering breaks. Long distance. On XFM. 104.9. Mm -hmm. On the way in, mm -hmm. right, you know those little cars? They look like a little bubble car. They're modern ones. They look like half a car. The is, ones that, that, is that like a smart car? Is that yeah. What called? They is look that like- uh, they just look like a- I, like, like a toy car and you can mm. park them sideways. There's only- is there only room for two people? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like the half of the, the front of a Volkswagen just cut in half, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And um, I saw one going on Oxford Street and it's a police car. <laughs> a real police car, right? Really? Yeah. And 
I mean, I thought, well, what happens if they have to chase someone? They couldn't, but I don't think that's the point. Because it was written on the side, it said something like, cleaner, something, uh, more efficient. So I think they're making the point that we're cruising round in this car like we're on the beat and yeah. it's using less energy and stuff. Yeah. But the first thing I thought of, right, was that those two policemen, they must have been going, oh, Dutch Sarge, don't let us have that one. Can't we have the Granada? Yeah. I mean- It's so uh, embarrassing. It's I know, embarrassing. About, you know, police, you know, they're doing, you know- yeah. But you've got to respect them. Yeah, you've of got course, yeah. Toughs have got but to re respect Exactly. Them. I just don't know if you have the, to- Well, the only thing more embarrassing- What if you're really tall and you have to climb out of one and you're a yeah. copper? Are, th are there any policemen out there who have been- Asked to drive one of these cars. If you're listening, do you think police listen to this? The only thing that would be more embarrassing is if you had to patrol on one of those bikes the goodies used to ride. In. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I thought I'd sort of. Now that, that sounds a little bit more far fetched. I just thought that was probably a lot in Hollywood. Yeah. Well, anyway, know. is this the current Planet of the Apes or the, the old one you've done? Current Planet of the Apes. This is the recent one. All right. There'll be a question at the end of it. So. Listen on that. Is this entertaining to anyone, this? I mean, just, just take the last four minutes of conversation. But seriously, Rick, who cares? I don't. Do you? No. I don't. DVD's selling well. Exactly, what do I care? All right, go on then. All right, so, uh, Planet of the Apes, question at the end of it, listen and win some stuff, all right? <clears throat> hey, where am I? What is this place? Hang on a minute, hang on According to the Lanzarote Guide, We've been dropped off at the, uh, at the volcano bit. Apparently there's 36 volcanoes here to be seen. I hope you don't mind my saying, but this is a waste of time. I know what you mean. Don't know why they need 36 volcanoes. Just keep one. Fill the rest in. Like a car park or something. Excuse me, guide. What's, uh, why is the, why is the bus drops us off here? What's, what's so special about this place? Well. According to our holy writings, that is where creation began. Where the Almighty breathed life in the time before time. Oh, it's amazing that, isn't it? All this, all this has been studied for years and years. What about the coffee shop there? Is that, is that old, is it? Well. Well, nothing. You're out to rip us off. I rate it's about four quid for a coffee there. Always ripping people off. That's, that's what annoys me with these trips. You get us in the middle of nowhere, we die in a thirst. I'm not able to do without. The reason I've come here, I believe this is where they did uh, Planet of the Apes, isn't it? Love monkeys. Especially the ones in Planet of the Apes, because they, they talk and that. How can monkeys can't exist? Joking, aren't you? Of course they can. Getting up to all sorts of stuff. I read about a monkey the other day who, who worked on the railway. Right? There was, uh, there was another one about a chimp that did a bank job and uh, went off to Spain to sort of. Shut up! What is that? <coughs> little monkey fella. <coughs> it's come from that little coffee shop. It's been serving coffee. Now that is worth paying four quid for. No, you're teasing him. I'm not teasing it. It's working, isn't it? It's serving the t <coughs> We want some coffee. Get us some coffee. I've heard about this. You can buy, uh, you can buy coffee that's been sort of hand-picked by monkeys. It's like coffee, mate. Except it's, it's more sort of coffee primate. Yeah? Hello, little fella. We want coffee. What do you mean, we? You're gonna have a coffee, aren't you? What else are you gonna do? Go and look at another 35 volcanoes. I'm staying here, I'm having a monkey coffee. It's brilliant. You find this amusing? Jesus, it's a talking monkey. All right, mate, have a couple of coffees. Don't start now. We're off duty. I'm starving. What do you mean you're off duty? Have you bananas later? Just get us a couple of... <laughs> <laughs> I understand that you're tired and you've probably been on your hands all day. Just forget the coffee. You go and get some lunch. After you've got some coach, you lazy ass. You damn human! Powerful. Uh, lovely. Oh. Excellent. So, uh, what's the question? Uh, if you've been listening to the whole show, <laughs> how many volcanoes do I think's on the island of Lanzarote? Okay. Yeah. I might, I might be, I might have it wrong, what so. I've been saying, but it's roughly around that. Yeah. yeah so right. what have you been saying? Yeah. Yeah. All Brilliant. Right. Uh, Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. Uh, you're more likely to win the prize if you leave um, your address on the email. Yeah. Because otherwise we can't really be bothered to phone people or email them back. So, Good point. Uh, 
put your address on there and you could win some crap. Carl's theme tune there, by placebo. Special needs. On XFM 104.9. Right. New Year's resolution, Carl? Um, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, I don't do it. Really. It's more about something like, I don't know, start smoking. Do you know what I mean? There must be something. Uh, no, it's a waste of time, isn't it? I don't, I don't, don't bother with that. Right. You see? Yeah. Me, no, I've never really made any New Year's resolutions. Just, I just be good to people. Just treat everyone as you want to be treated yourself. Mm. Give to charity. Um, hate. Crime, racism, famine, sexism. I, I, I know you're going to keep to all those, except the gift of charity. That's, we, me and Carl find that a little bit hard to believe. Never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've always got to break at least one of your news resolutions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, I, I think I'll be nice to Carl. What about learn more? I was thinking that. I want to learn more. I'm always teaching you stuff. I've, I've, I've got, I, I watched, uh, I'll tell you what, Christmas telly was dreadful this year. Yeah. I actually, I don't know if I've hit that age where I think, but I think consciously I thought this is worse than usual. Yeah. And I ended up watching that Discovery Channel and History Channel mm -hmm. again, and I watched four episodes in a row of, um, this fantastic documentary, 1418 War, um, narrated by Dame Judy, uh, Dame Judy Dench, and it's brilliant. I just can't get enough of it. I hated history at school, and now I want to know everything. Yeah. And uh, uh, I think that's mine. Learn, learn all the stuff about yeah, stuff. I, I like, like learning now. I yeah. always say that to you. I'm always looking up stuff. When I was on holiday, even though it was sunny outside and they had big holes to look at if I wanted to, <laughs> I stayed in and watched Discovery there and was watching stuff about scorpions and that. Yeah. What, what, what did you learn? Well, nothing. Cause it was all in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched it. What, what I found ah, out, right? What I found out. Scorpio, it's poison. You get it. Scorpion, it's poison. <laughs> what I don't understand is with scorpions, right? Um, they have like this, this sort of weapons, don't they? They have the poison and stuff, right? Yeah. Which can kill a man. Yeah. But there was a couple of little animals and that that were its sort of enemy. Yeah. And it stung them, and it didn't kill them. So what's the point? Well, firstly, not all scorpions kill a man. Some of them, they're- This one things, did, you said. Yeah, well, they, they, they range from, like, bee stings to so much venom it can take down a horse on- on things like spiders and snakes and scorpions. So it depends. But a scorpion that will kill a man would kill a rabbit. So I don't know what you're talking about. No, there was a snake that it stuck its thing into and some sort of beaver and they were just, like, <laughs> running about. There's nothing funny about that, so why are we laughing? <laughs> well, the snake wasn't running about, was it? Well, it was slithering about a bit. Yeah. What was the beaver doing when just, the snake- Just, did just sort of, I think it ate it in the end. What? Ate what? Ate the scorpion. And just wandered off. <laughs> well, so it wasn't a beaver! There you go, There's you've no that. way it was a beaver! Alright, an otter. It was <laughs> a... <laughs> this is what you pieced together from a show in Spanish. Well, oh. I'm just saying though, how come it can't kill something that small, yet there's someone on holiday that's no sort of danger to that scorpion. We're not gonna harm it. Right? And yet it can kill a man. <laughs> so you say, up, but Carl. I don't believe it. Shut up, mate. Seriously, this is gobbledygook. Taught you something again, though. That's what I'm no, saying. No, what have I'm you always... taught us, though? What is, what is that, what is the fact that's come out of that? A scorpion can kill a man, but the beaver was dancing with a snake, then it well, that, You do that That's not a fact. Though. That's not a fact. Down. New Year's Eve taught him something, right, about, uh, dead people. No. Do you know what, the things that taught me, I was saying you're talking shite. He says they found out your soul weighs an ounce. <laughs> your soul? Yeah. Your soul weighs an ounce. Right, who found this out? I read it. Your arsehole weighs an ounce. Yeah. There's no such thing as a soul weighs an ounce. You're talking to the devil. Alright. <laughs> Have you got any monkey news? Um, so what do they do? They, they, they measure, they, they weighed someone who was alive, and they were waiting for you to die, then weigh you again. There was oh, someone, there was someone who- you've lost an ounce, you know, so it must be your soul shooting off to heaven. It was someone who was really ill, and yeah. they said, we can't do anything for you here, but we've got a bit of a idea that we want to do. <laughs> Stuck him on some scales, he said, right, you weigh nine pounds and an ounce or whatever, cause yeah. he was wasting away. He died, nine pounds. <laughs> right? Fine, well that's proof if, proof we needed. Talking uh, shite. Monkey news, we might as well leave it. Now come on, no, come, come on, on, tell monkey news. No, there's, it, it's nothing, uh, that great, really. Is it worth playing the jingle? Quickly? Go on then. Oh, chimpanzee that, monkey news! Right, it's about a monkey. Four, 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 four. four, four, four. It's about this- this woman monkey who was born in 1834, right? <laughs> half monkey, half woman. No. Not true. It happened, apparently it was Impossible. in the- It was in the Daily Mail. Right? <laughs> okay. The Victorian ape woman was her name. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, uh, I christened uh, this uh, thing <laughs> Victorian Ape Woman. Well, we thought Sandra. No, I'm calling it Victorian Ape Woman. She was about four foot. No, didn't happen. She had lovely thick black hair on her head and on the back of her legs and on her <laughs> arms. Yeah, yeah. All right. So stockings. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, and she didn't need a bustle because of her huge ape-like ass sticking out the back of her dress. <laughs> she was good at reading and sewing. Um, well, they, well, it was good because they didn't have opposable thumbs. So uh, uh, she could speak three languages. Yes. She, uh, was human, monkey, and monkey human. Twenty offers of marriage. Does that annoy you, Steve? <laughs> Um <laughs> Ah absolute twaddle. All right, well, that's... more rubbish than your soul weighing an ounce. A Victorian there, monkey woman. There, See you next week with some more twaddle. I was worried we wouldn't have the old magic in two thousand and four, but we're still talking shit. <laughs> Merry New Year. <laughs> we do of course, Rick, every week get thousands of emails. I mean it's Fred Egan from Winchester says uh, of course it was recently Valentine's Day. What's the most romantic thing that you've done for Suzanne, Carl, that you can think of? Uh, I, I don't really do all that. Sure. Uh, the Valentine's Day stuff. It's just, the problem is, if you do it once, they expect it every year. Yeah, that's, sure. That's the problem with Christmas and stuff, innit? It's like, it's become, that's what you do now, every yeah. year. <laughs> every day, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. I prefer to just sort of wait, you know what I mean? And, and, you know, if I think of an idea or I know of something that she wants, I might get her something, but I might not do it on Valentine's Day. It's that thing. It's like how I've, I've said about Pancake Tuesday. <laughs> Make it Pancake Wednesday. Have it when you want. Why yeah. am I waiting? Why am I waiting for someone to tell me when I can have a pancake? I'll have it today if I want one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Whereas Pancake Tuesday, no, I won't bother. I'll have trifle. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's the same same with this. You know, with Suzanne. Um, luckily, right? I mean Valentine's Day and what have you. She was uh, she was ill. Luckily. So we didn't we didn't have to go out. So, I'd say, is he asking for advice? Well, I suppose, yeah, certainly you may as well give it. Treat them when they deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I remember, uh, once when Suzanne was ill, she had a fever, but there was no food in the house. What did you suggest to her? She was too ill Well, to it was, it was when we were still living in Manchester and that, and, uh, you know, uh, we needed to get some food in for tea and stuff. And, uh, I said, come on, come to the supermarket. She was like, no, I'm ill, you go. And I hate buying food. I just sort of get a bit blank when I'm looking at it. There's too much, isn't there? That's the problem. You go down all these aisles and there's just too much. <laughs> so anyway, I said, no, come on, come with me. She was like, oh, but I've got this fever, I'm hot and everything. So I said, well, come to the supermarket. You go on the frozen aisle, cool yourself down. <laughs> <laughs> and she did. And she said, you know, it made it worse. She was ill for another three days. How would you uh, go about chatting up a woman in a bar? What, what tips could you give? Um, I've, I've, never, I've never worked like that. It's always been like a friend of a friend and all that. And just happened to meet them, and then, you know, you have a chat, and then... How did you meet Suzanne? Uh, that was when, uh, I was working with her, and, uh, she gave me 20p for, uh, the hot chocolate machine. She never asked for it back. I thought, she's all right. <laughs> um, I've been there sort of 11 years, so it works. Has she ever given you that, uh, she ever, have you, have never you ever, you've never given that 20p never back? never asked for it back. And did you return the favour, perhaps on the next date? Uh... Did you buy her a Kit Kat or something? No, I don't think I did. I think I think word got out that um, she liked me and that. And um, what did I do? I think I did some work for her. I did some editing for her, to sort of show off my skills and that. <laughs> sure. And she was like, "Oh, you're good at this, aren't you?" I was like, "Yeah." And I think she got us another drink because I was I was doing that editing for her in my own time. So you're up. You're up on the deal, aren't you? Because I, I know now, I've heard for a fact that you've not spent any money on her in eleven years. So you are you're forty p up. <laughs> At least. Lawrence from New York says, I was wondering how Mr. K. Dilkington would interpret this famous saying of philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein. The quote is, if a lion could talk, we could not understand him. Even if he's English? Yeah, if he... <laughs> yeah, if a lion could speak English, so there's no language barrier, he's speaking English words and using all the correct uh, grammar and everything, but you wouldn't be able to understand what he was saying. Why? Because it is from a different world his frames of reference would be so bizarre that you wouldn't be able to get a grasp on what he was talking about because you'd have so little in common, even if he used real words. No, but he's talking English. Yeah, I know, but his reference points would be just so far removed. You know, they're removed slightly when, uh, uh, if you saw two people talking about Kierkegaard, you'd, un you'd, you'd 
I don't understand it. Exactly. So remove that a billion times to a different species with different input. No, but it depends. If I'm talking to a lion in London Zoo, yeah, he'll he'll be saying oh, I'm fed up with being stuck in here. I'll go, yeah. It's like that. It depends what his background <laughs> is. I mean, there's some people who might have lived down the road from me, but have a totally different life. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter that it's a lion, does it? Well, yeah, because they're just trying to remove it even more. So, so now it's not just a bloke who lived a few doors away. Now it's not even a bloke. Now it's not even. Yeah, but I'd I'd pick something smaller yeah, or right. or something you know a worm without a mouth. I'd go definitely not. What? Definitely, Definitely not, not what? what? I wouldn't be having a chat with it. I just, I just think that a worm that's, that's underground, yeah. what's it got to offer me? <laughs> it's, it's blind and it hasn't got a mouth. It's not going to be a good day out with it, is what I'm saying. It's not going to have that much to say to me, even if it's English. Right? <laughs> even if it's English! And how can you tell if a worm is English? Does it wear a very tiny bowler hat? <laughs> oh, Christ. But do you understand... What about a jellyfish? No, I, you see, I think that's where you, you can you can say you wouldn't be able to have a good chat with them because to me, the sea might as well be another world. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, in a way, I, I think the fish sort of have more rights than us. What do you mean? Just because when when whoever made the world, right, yeah. say you know we're just bigging up God, but if yeah. I was was to have a go at him, yeah, I'd say you added too much water. <laughs> Criticism one to God, right? right. So, <laughs> you, how would you have changed that? Just, just more land. Fair enough. Now, why, why, are the, why have fish got more rights than us? That because, was because, because there's loads of them, and when you look at the amount of sea on the world, right? There's, there's loads of that. You only have to like, like you know, I was in Malaga the other week, right? And you know, you look in the sea, there's loads of different fish, uh, and that's just in like eight foot water. If you go miles out. There's like all sorts of weird fish, isn't there, with like lights on them and everything. So, and they're just millions of different types. Yeah. Yeah. Now, but why does that mean they've got more rights than us? Just because I think, what, you know, rights come in in numbers, don't they? If you know what I mean. Like, if there's one of you shouting, people go, oh, he's an idiot, shut up, whatever. If there's loads of you shouting, they go, oh, best listen to him, see what they've got to say. Right. And, and that's what I mean about fish. <laughs> yeah. There's loads of fish. Right. So, but they're not really making their voices heard, though, are they, Carl? Yeah. I know because they're underwater. <laughs> but what? But what I mean is, I don't know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, right? What? What do you think it's like being a crab? If you if you could go now, your mind into a crab, what would you see? Where would you be? What would you be doing? What would you be thinking? What do you think of all the other things, the crabs you'd see, the, the, the squids you'd see? What, what, what's it like, do you think? I want you to... It's like creative writing. Just think. Just let yourself go. Come on. Uh, it's got to be a crab. What do you think of a slug? What do you think to be a slug? What would you do if you were... If you were transported now into a slug, what would you do? And, you, and Suzanne, you're suddenly in the kitchen, but you're a slug, and Suzanne's sort of like there, just making tea and that. How do you let her know I'd, it's you? It's impossible. I'd just chuck myself into the salt pot or something. <laughs> No, because what what do you do? I'd I'd hate that. I'd hate, that would be horrible. That. <laughs> oh God! Have you ever read uh, Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis, Not in which a man so. wakes up and he's turned into a giant beetle, and that's the yeah, that's the whole story. Uh, I think it might be of interest to you. So what happened to him with the beetle? Well, I don't want to ruin it for you in case you no, read it. I won't but be it's, reading it. Don't worry. He joined a pop group with three other people. He was brilliant. No, it's a really wonderful book. It's a kind of almost heartbreaking because, of course, he uh, he does like Ricky saying. He finds it very hard then to relate to other people, even though he still has the consciousness of a human. You know, his parents, his rest of his family, they don't know how to deal with him. You know, because he, he's a giant beetle, he becomes a freak. He becomes an outsider. It's a terrible. You but, know. but hang on, though, is he a giant beetle? Or yeah. Is it... Well, yeah. Well, that's not going to go down well, is it? <laughs> that's that. Course, people aren't going to like you. But if it's a normal-sized one, then you just get in with the other beetles, don't you? <laughs> Whereas if you're but a giant... How would you do that? How would you ingratiate yourself? Right, so you're suddenly a beetle. You're Carl Pilkington, right? There's other people. They're doing their business. They're scuttling around. And you go, you go in there and you go, and they, go, they look at you as a new beetle. What, what's your first... What do you do? How do you ingratiate yourself? Well, for a bit, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sort of barge in into their house and that. I'd, I'd wait until they're out and about. And I'd, I'd like, like in life, right? Um, Sort of help them out. I don't know what beetles do all day. I've never seen one doing anything. They just seem to be going from one place to another. Right. I've never seen them carrying anything. I don't know what they eat. 
I don't know what they do. <laughs> I don't know why we've got them, right? But what I mean is, I'd watch them and I'd sort of help them out. And, I mean, you know, it's like going on a date or meeting a woman, isn't it? But what if you... There is oh, a wait, there. What do you mean? What, how, how is it like going on a date with a woman? Well, it's like I said about Suzanne with her hot chocolate. She bought me that and I've gone, she's all right. Right. right? She gets me another one before I know it. She's living with me. P.O.D. Bit of pod there. Alive. That's grown on me. Yeah, it's not bad. It, you know, it rocks. I mean, we've got to give it that. <laughs> we'll certainly give it that, Rick. Yeah, XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. <laughs> <laughs> um, so more from the uh, facts and trivia book, edited as I say by Sir Isaac Asimov, so not sure. just overheard on the tube or yeah. uh, by a drunk. <clears throat> well, he might have overheard him on a tube by a drunk. drunk. And just put him in the book. <laughs> yeah. uh, listen to the whole fact here before you make any judgments. Okay. Sauerkraut was renamed Liberty Cabbage by Americans during World War One. Sure. In their denunciation of all things German, some Americans actually kicked Datsuns. Are they little dogs? Yes. Yeah. Little German dogs, just give them a kick in. Because they were German. Or they were derived from Germany. I don't know if they got to like a small sort of French village and just said, bring out your Dachshunds. <laughs> Why, what are you going to do to them? Nothing. Give them a little bit of food or something. You're not going to kick them, are you? Got no, some milk. I've heard about you Americans. No, no. Just bring out that little sausage dog. We used to say it aggressively. <laughs> you said that aggressively. Like well, no, no. Bring out the little sausage dog. Okay. Well, you're not going to hurt it though. Of course I'm not. not if you hurt it. it now, it's like it's against the Geneva Convention. I'm everything. not going to kick it. Well, you, I didn't even bring up kicking. Uh, I didn't even mention kicking, so why have you, <laughs> why have you done that? That's... I don't know. Just well, I, 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 I haven't got a Datsun. If, oh. Sacre bleu. Yeah. Sorry. That thing down my trousers is just a baguette. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that, Carl? Do you remember dynamite that? Fact, a dynamite Baguettes fact. Baguettes were invented by Napoleon so he could carry them down his leg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Which is fine. There's one more here that I thought might... Uh... I know that there's a lot of those kind of amusing... Laws and stuff, antiquated laws and that on the yeah. way and things. But again, it's Asimov. I'm thinking it's yeah. true. City Ordinance Number Three Five Two in Pacific Grove, California, makes it a misdemeanor to kill or threaten a butterfly. Threaten? Yeah, you can't even threaten a butterfly. So if it goes, don't even look at it aggressively. <laughs> yeah, butterfly comes down. I go, what are you looking at? I go, nothing. Yeah. He goes, judge. What? Yeah. Bloke looking at me with the net. I wasn't doing anything. I was doing anything. I'm fishing. But what, see, the thing about that is, a lot of the kind of, you know, sort of the wilder butterflies from the wrong side of the tracks, they're just going to take advantage of it. They're going to cruise around, they're going to be playing loud music, yeah. you know, abusing old people. You're yeah. un they're untouchable. And they're going to go, have you got a problem with that? <laughs> exactly. You're gonna, and no. you're going to go, no. No, it's fine. Go about your business. No. Butterflies there, Rick, in California, running amok. Yeah. Should repeat it. Yeah. Um, no, then, there's another one that I think you'll be a fan of. Uh... Oh, it might take me a while to find it. Maybe we should play a track. Oh, wow. That takes us nicely. That's a lovely link. <laughs> that thing about you said about playing a track. Keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> um, this is Song for the Lovers, and I've chosen a, a, a great track here um, uh, by Lloyd Cole, oft forgotten, but a great singer-songwriter. And this is one of his uh, best songs, I think. In fact, I think Sandy Shaw covered it in the mid-80s when she had a little bit of that resurgence. Um... It's uh, Are You Ready To Be Heartbroken? And it's uh, Song For The Lovers, lovely tune. Are You Ready To Be Heartbroken? Um, actually, uh, Lloyd Cole, with his commotions, that was uh, that was done with, and uh, uh, I love it. Beautiful. Cheers. Facts and trivia, the last one, Rick. Go on. Uh, this is a sobering lesson for us all. Go on. At the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo in 1901, yeah. President William McKinley received a line of citizens, shaking hands with each. In the line was a man with a handkerchief covering one hand. Mm. Neither of the two Secret Service men guarding the President was curious enough to take a look at what might be under the handkerchief in the hand of the man, Leon Golzgolz, an anarchist. Yeah. What he had was a loaded revolver, and when the President thrust his right hand out for the shake, Zolgozd fired twice. McKinley died a week later. So, what he did there, it was outwit the might of presumably the FBI or the yeah. Secret Service by... Covering the gun with a handkerchief. Clever. That's brilliant. It's absolute genius. J just think how they had to explain that. And they go, uh, wh wh how did they get? How did he get close enough and shoot the president? And they go, uh, we didn't see the gun. Why? Covered it with a hanky, did he? Oh, well, you're not to blame then. <laughs> exactly. We can't. We can't compete with that sort of. You know. Didn't you think to look under the hanky? No. Well, I just probably just thought it was a hand. Of course, because right. that's where the hand would be. Did you not think he was probably holding a gun or something? Didn't do that. We didn't train. We didn't do 
hiding it with a hanky, did we? Oh, well, if he didn't do it, then it's not your fault. <laughs> Don't worry about it. But he lived, did he, for a week? The president lived with it for that's, a week, yeah. That's it, because they had to go to him and they are probably shuffling around his bed going, sorry about that. Why don't you look? I had a hanky, did he? <laughs> oh, well, they're now in jail. Well, they were. Go on. Well, when we went into the jail to give him some bread and water, he had a hanky over his hand. Right, yeah. We, we thought nothing of it. Sure. And it was a gun, yeah. It was a gun and he got out. See, you sh do you remember the last, remember the gun, yeah. That's terrible, isn't it's it? It's pathetic. No one's used that method since. <laughs> I know. Because it was effective there, but you don't hear about that now. <laughs> no. People using all kinds of elaborate methods to yeah. assassinate people, poisoning their wine. Yeah. I, mean, I think that was Rasputin. <laughs> <laughs> As I recall, they put some poison into his wine. Well, they didn't, they I didn't, didn't study it in history class, that's my memory of but it. But if only they listened to Carl last week, chink the glasses. Always chink the glasses. That shows that they used to te test it, didn't they? Pour a little bit from yours into mine, that means I'm not poisoning you. Yeah. But if you're thinking of uh, murdering someone, you know, just, a, a dignitary. With a, with a gun. Yeah, but let's pop say- Pop a hanky you, over it. Just think about that. Hanky just pop a hanky over oh, it. I don't know, pop it inside an oven glove. <laughs> And just yeah. wear that as you go do it with their hands. <laughs> or yeah. sooty. Or, or one of those yeah. big gladiator style pointing <laughs> yeah. foam hands they used to have <laughs> yeah. on gladiators. Yeah. That was genius. Yeah. I'm just using this because I, I love the, the pressure. No gun in there, there, is there? No. no. It's just a big finger. Check if you want. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, we won't then if you said check. <laughs> right. That's, that's, oh. that's unlucky. Do you know, do you, have I ever told you my method, Carl, my genius method of um, assassinating someone? This is brilliant. This is the ultimate crime. Oh. Is this the ice cube one? Have I told it to you before? No, but I know that. <laughs> What's that the ice cube one? When you, um... Shoot an ice bullet. Shh! You get someone round. Rick, don't say it, don't reveal it, because it's my story to tell. Oh, Blabbing there's two, out. I know two of them. Well, listen, let me tell you it and see if this is the one, right? <laughs> this is genius. <laughs> right, you rent a room across the street from the person you want to kill, right? Yeah. And then when their window's open one day, right, what you do is, what you've done is you've made an arrow from ice. Okay, and then what you do is you uh, you you train like to become a, a brilliant marksman with a bow and arrow. It's an yeah. old one. It is brilliant, but it's, this is why it's classic. And then you shoot them with the arrow. Then it goes across the street into their heart, kills them instantly. But what's brilliant is the arrow, the murder weapon. It then melts, yeah. mm, dries out. There's yeah. no murder weapon. And yeah. then you can take apart An the bow. Another, and another one, Steve, is to stab them, then to stab them, then take it out and walk away. No, Same. Because no murder weapon. No, but there's no. No, but you've got to get into the building. This is the point. You're across the street. Right. The, you know, the only thing that could get what you is if someone saw you shooting an arrow. What, what about an arrow on a string? Arrow on a string? What are you talking about? <laughs> no, not an arrow on a string, because that's not going to work. What if the string broke as you were trying to loot? Good, good point. Good no, point. Good point. No, Rick. I, I no, the ice like, arrow is the I only way. The ice right. arrow it's is genius. the only perfect method it's, of assassination. It's an, that was on Colombo. Was it? But there's another one. Do you know, like I was saying about the, uh... The murder weapon's irrelevant, Steve. What? The fact that it's a murder weapon that is irrelevant. No, because there's no fingerprints on it and stuff. You're having a laugh, Rick. I defy you to win... There's to no win fingerprints on a bullet when it goes through your you head a, at 12,000 miles Yeah, but they can trace it to the right, the same gun, can't they? They can figure that Throw out. Throw the gun away! No, but they'll find the gun. They always find the gun. Burn I've it! Seen the... No, you can't burn the gun. Rick, my point is... Melt it. No, the point is his fingerprints and stuff. Well, no, wipe it. Rick, you never Wear gloves. kill someone. Wear gloves. They'll, they'll catch up with you. They'll always catch up Will with you. Will they? Oh, I won't then. The ice arrow is the only way. No, the ice isn't. arrow. I bet that was the one case that Columbo didn't solve. That that was that's one of them. The other one is. Do you know I was saying the other week <sighs> about the uh, the drinks and you chink your glasses and stuff. Yeah. I weigh around that. Put the poison in the ice cube. You quickly have a swig before it's melted. Before it's and they'll go, That's all right. I can drink that. It's not dangerous. Just say, oh, I'm going to want to show you some pictures or something. Let the ice cube melt, the poison goes in the drink, you say, oh, knock that back. Yeah. You look thirsty. They'll have it. They'll die. Genius. That is good. Carl, you and I, man, we're like criminal masterminds. Yeah. All what right? happens when they find the poison in the body and go, well, he was at Carl's house drinking, it might have been... You'd, have, have, you'd have legged it. Oh, yeah. He'd have been off with his missus and, like, 30,000 pounds or whatever it was. Yeah. Wouldn't mm. it? Yeah. So that's perfect as well, is that it? That is a perfect crime, So, 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 it's, hold on, are all perfect crimes to do with ice? Pretty much. Hmm. We were talking earlier about, um, people who use Americanisms, like yeah. they've used it all their life, and it, it's uh, our pet hate, isn't it, really? Oh. Like, just people who say, I was, uh, DJ, and, uh, I look, uh, you know, this could sound a little bit, you know, butt licky. Butt, butt licky? What's that? Never heard that. But Don't say butt. Yeah, but well, people. I, I heard someone say he was on my ass. Oh, he was on my ass. 
Yeah. I've never- what? <laughs> there was- I'll tell you what almost annoys me almost as much as that. There was a guy I used to know who'd pretend, and this guy was like, he'd never done anything wrong in his life. He had no street cred whatsoever. And I was driving along with him once, back from somewhere, and a police car just pulled out and was just following us along the road, because police cars sometimes do. Not following us, just happened to be driving in the yeah. same direction. And he went, hey, up the pigs, watch it. <laughs> like, like what, I was supposed to think, what, you've done some crime? Yeah. You're part of Grand Theft Auto 03, and I, we, I better be careful, because you've got some knocked out, off gear in the back. Yeah. You watch it, it's the bloody pigs. Or a dead, just play it cool, play a it cool. dead, a made man that you just exactly. killed in the boot. Nonsense, and it's, I just so annoyed with that, that, kind of pretending to have street cred. I know, just that, uh, one, I remember once, right, an American came to our school, we were all about 13 and 14, and he was just, uh, he was like, you had to be his friend. And it was like people vying for his attention because he was sort of this cool American bloke, right? And uh, he was like good, good at sports, straight. He's always, you know, it's just great. And uh, I remember someone saying like tube, a toothpaste, and he and he laughed, said tube, tube. And I go, well, what is it? They said it's tube, it's tube, right? And people go, no, it's tube, right? And they, it's tube, right? And I went, I say, I say tube. <laughs> he went, and they sort of looked at me, and they just thought, you liar. I said, no, I say, oh, let me think, oh, tu tu no, I say tube. 